All right, everyone, welcome on in. Uh, today, GDQ is going to be bringing you a special showcase. I've put a lot of work into this, and before I tell you, I just want to say uh, thank you all for uh, being here so far, and I hope that you'll enjoy this series of runs today. Uh, today is going to be an event that we call King of the Silent Hill. Uh, this is going to be an event with a bunch of races today, but before we get into that, uh, I am one of your hosts. I am going to be Ecdysis. Is this my cue? That's one of the We're cues. We're great at this. Hi, I'm Punchy. I'll be co-hosting this as well. I'll be around. Uh, we've got a great day planned for you here today. Runs yes, uh, almost all mainline silent hill games. About the, um, uh, the little event we have here and what's going to be happening. We have races of almost every mainline silent hill game planned for you here. We knocked one of the longer ones on the head. It's fine. Don't worry about it. With some of the best runners that the entire series has to offer spread across the entire franchise in a variety of categories. It'll be a whole day of excellent survival horror speedrunning from some of the very best. That is true. Uh, we're going to be diving into a big amount of races. As you can see, we have seven on our side here. And as well, we comprise our runners into two teams. We have Teams Robbie and Teams Pyramid Head. Um, hopefully, it's going to be mostly equal. We don't know. Hopefully, uh, we have some good performances today, and I think it should be fun. Uh, as well, before we go into our first one, I just want to say that I believe we should be able to have some fun with channel point betting here. So if you want to, I guess, earn some channel points, today's the day to do it. Ooh, excellent. Anyway. We've got betting. Yep. Uh, Punchy, if you'd like to introduce our first game, feel free to go for it. All right, so we're going in series order here. So we're starting with Silent Hill 1, the PlayStation 1 survival horror that started the phenomenon of the franchise. This game has a focus on tight movement and PlayStation 1 shenanigans, so dealing with a whole bunch of like awkward technical hitches. Should be good, should be exciting. This is a game that's very tightly optimized at the, tight le uh, at the top level. So uh, the runners here that are competing today have a mere nine second gap between them. So expect a very close performance. Uh, also on commentary for Silent Hill 1, we have... Hello. Hello, I'm Mr. McSqueezy, and uh, yeah, I'll be doing some commentary. Uh, very much looking forward to this this race, uh, all the races really. Uh, but yeah, as you say, there's a, a nine second gap between these two runners. So it'll be interesting to see how this pans out live on GDQ. Very good stuff here. McSqueezy, also a, an accomplished runner of the Silent Hill games and Silent Hill 1. I also ran Silent Hill 1, like, a lot. That's why, that's why we're doing the commentary. It's like, it's a very... People have ran this game for ages. It's a really optimized thing. Like a decade or something. But anyway, I think... I think we are ready. Do, are we ready? Are we ready, well, races? Let's, uh, yeah, uh, let's introduce yep. our runners before we begin. Oh, yes. I skipped a step. Excuse me. All good. <laughs> All right. Uh, hi, I'm Aaron. I've been running Silent Hill for like eight years now. I'm hoping not to die today. <laughs> Cheers. And I'm Borisel. I've been running it for some different amount of years. And I really hate this game. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> All right. So we're oh. going to be able to begin on uh, commentator's counts. Uh, we'll be diving right on into this. So, um, Squeezy, how about you give us the countdown for the race? Sure thing. So, I'll count down from five. Uh, runners, are you ready? Okay. okay. Five, four, three, two, one, go. And we are off. I noticed these two are actually playing different versions of the game, like right off the bat. I'll point that out. I think Barizzle is playing the Japanese version while Aaron is playing the North American version. Yeah, there this, you go. That's Japanese text there. <laughs> yep, that doesn't have any implications for the run. I just noted it. They have different title screens. That's so, fun. Uh, is it, what is it, should we talk about version differences now? Uh, there's not really much between these two versions, but um, th there's an uh, absence of Powell on the leaderboard uh, if people tend to look on there. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, the PAL version has like an entire skit patched uh, when it was released because it released after the other versions. So leaderboard runs only use either the American or specific Japanese versions, I think. There's like later print runs of the Japanese version have the glitch patched as well. Yeah, you've got to be very careful with the discs that you choose to use there. Um, this start is quite a, a nice start, though, in a race because it's, it's always going to be evenly matched. 
up until uh, the grab in the alleyway in about sort of, what, a minute and a half's time oh, from there? Yes, that will set things off to an interesting start. So the goal of the runners here at this point in the game is to die. They must die. So they must find enemies and then die as fast as possible. Because Salah Hill enemies behave quite randomly, how fast they will be able to accomplish this is mostly chance. So that'll set things off on an interesting note. And there's a few different types of movement you can do to uh, kind of try and attempt to get the, the fast death here. Um, some people, I think, prefer to strafe. Other people prefer just to kind of run into it. I think most top-level runs will will strafe from memory. I'm sure... Yeah, I, uh, I do the strafe, but let's see. What are they doing? This? Aaron has got there. And Aaron does the strafe. <gasps> no, oh, there's a, the second one grabbed him. Oh, Whereas I got grabbed nice. quickly. Barizzo got an ideal kind of situation. Yep. Barizzo dies very quickly. That was very nice. Very, very fast death there. For one moment really quick, I did notice in the very beginning, uh, there was the walking strat. I think Aaron went to immediately go into the game while Barizzo actually did the uh, minor IGT save. Yes, that opening cutscene moves you slightly forward. Like, when you skip it is when Harry actually, like, physically is... So if you wait a bit, you save more in-game time, because Silent Hill 1 runs are timed using the in-game timer, and cutscenes don't count for the in-game timer, only gameplay time, so if you wait a little bit on that cutscene, it's technically faster in-game time. That was a slightly confusing explanation. You can also phrase it as any time there's text on the screen that's scrolling, uh, IGT is normally stopped there as well, so yeah. this instance where the radio is being uh, <laughs> ambushed, you're fine there. How many shots will the enemy take? They both got four, actually. Very nice. It can vary. Sometimes you'll get three. Sometimes you'll get six shots. I know there's a few people that really like the six shots. Um, it's a bit slower, but three shots are ideal, but very, very rare. Uh, this race will be, will be determined using the in-game timer at the end. That is how we will determine the winner. So both runners are now going to try and collect three keys, uh, the keys to the Eclipse door. Um, and it's a, it's a very nice route, actually. Uh, you, you do kind of go back on yourself in a few parts. Uh, and there's a few instances where if you uh, maybe forget to let go of your run button or don't press your walk button, you can maybe overshoot a key. But both runners seem to have uh, done that ideally. Nice, very exact. few air screamers that are fluttering about in the uh, old town of Foggy Silent Hill. Uh, sometimes they'll try and run into you, uh, try and make you sort of smell their feet. Very odd phrase, but I'll go with it. They kick you uh, in the head, and they sort of randomly roam around as well. And they're taking two very different lines here as well. Uh, Boris is kind of sticking more to the path, Aaron's gone more out in the middle of the road. Slight optimizations yeah, there. Your angle of approach can sort of like dictate how you turn out as well, but they both went for a quick turn. All right, they did not get bothered by the air screamers on the way out. That is a point where you may have to dynamically adjust your movement based on how the enemy likes to behave. There's another air screamer that's sort of tucked away here off screen. Uh, sometimes it decides to aggro you, other times it just leaves you alone. But I think both runners here are safe and clear, no issues there. Oh yeah, since it's been brought up in chat, both runners are using uh, PlayStation 2s for the purposes of this race. And because Silent Hill being a PS1 game means it runs differently on various hardware configurations because PlayStation 1 speedrunning is a nightmare. So for the sake of, like, the race presentation, same hardware. So it syncs up. Uh, but Rizzo got smacked in the head on the way out he there. He did. I think Aaron's paid it off. He's a little bit further up the street now. Yeah, so that would... That, that, Loses a little bit of time for Barizzle, and he takes a bit of damage, and damage adds up. You know, like, there's only so much health that you have. There's only so much damage you can take before you die. And these runners are at the level where they don't take healing items at all, really. So if things go sufficiently wrong, there is a non-zero chance that a death could be eaten. Absolutely. There are points where health drinks can be picked up, but as I say, as Punchy says in a speed run, uh, especially at this level, you don't want to be having that extra menu time. Yeah, these are both players that go for, like, the super-optimal, like, hyper-risky type plays, and they don't heal at all. 
You'll also see a slight difference in one of the skips about halfway through the game with how the runners approach it. Boris has a very, uh, very cool way of doing ah, the skips. Yes. The Bo Rizzle tech. I, I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> He, was, well, he makes he it just so like, he's like, just, just strafe into it, Lamau. It's easy. And I'm just like, no, it isn't. <laughs> Not at all. I don't know how he does it. He makes it look... Anyway, we'll get there when we get there. They're picking up the house key. They're going in. They're pretty evenly matched right now. Do they take the line? Aaron gets the door to... Ooh. Hmm. Ooh. They turn in different directions to hit the door, but both of them get it without smashing into them. There's a mechanic in this game where if Harry runs, like, full speed directly into walls or doors, he can just sort of, like, bash into them. He bonks the wall, basically. And you need to turn in certain ways to avoid this behavior. Sometimes take a, like, slightly wider line, etc., etc. Doors in this game are a mystery, and they all behave differently. Uh, and that Didn't first door with the key is very easy to kind of bounce off of. I think there's something like it's eight running steps before Harry decides that he wants to bonk. Uh, but then there's also Ooh. some doors inversely where he'll just decide to stop running and just walk into them. Um, it, it's very strange. Harry is not a very consistent man. It's it's a bit much to learn. You have to like study every door individually when you're at like the high end of that. And these runners have indeed studied every door individually. <laughs> Uh, Boris has even gone as far as uh, going in, I think, wireframe for one of the later parts of the game to try and figure out a dodge. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's great. I love the level of deep research that has gone into this game's run over the years is, like, mind-bending. Hey, when you're looking to save seconds, you've got to really uh, dig into the game to, to it's a get frame it and extract battle. it. it it's really a frame is. battle at the top end. It's Nuts. All right, both in the school, the first major area of the game. I instinctively want to call them dungeons, but that makes it sound very Zelda-y. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it does kind of turn dungeon-like halfway through. A little bit. Right, here's a version difference. The enemies in the school look different on the Japanese version compared to the American version. They don't behave any differently, though, so this has no implication for the run. It's just a visual thing, and someone was going to ask. So there's your explanation. Okay, okay. Ooh, but Aaron had a bit of trouble. trouble. Yeah. yeah. Boris gets it smoothly. And no issues with actually using the chemical either by the looks of it. Yeah, very, very thick, like small activation radius for that, so it's very easy to be off and get, you can't use that here. The classic yeah. Silent Hill blunder. Harry will literally be one frame off, won't see it. You just nudge him to the right or the left, he's perfectly fine with it. Uh, and the They're also thing turning to... their light on and off at various intervals to manipulate enemy aggro, such as to, like, get smooth passageway through certain areas, because enemies do turn to look at your flashlight. So there's a bit of a safety strap there as well, where you can do a sort of walking step, but I think both runners are Ooh. going for the swag strats here, yeah. Aaron especially taking that very tight line yeah. on the inside. Aaron went for the very risky dodge there, which is, like, point seconds of save and has a random chance of just kind of not working, depending on where the enemy decides to walk. Grabless uh, school so far. And this old gem, the piano. I'm sure everybody casually has had trouble with this, but in a speedrun sense, uh, it's very, very fast. Do we get a ding? Aaron seems to be struggling to input it. Get a little bit behind there, but... IGT-wise, I don't think it has much of an effect. I think the uh, timer stops on dings, does it, if I remember correctly? I have no idea. I don't think it... Does it? <laughs> that's news to me, if that's true. I might be misremembering it somewhere along the way. It's uh, like, I, could Boris... I could believe that, but I've never heard anything <laughs> of the sort. I know right it's... now as well, I want to mention, this is going to be a long race. There's a lot of uh, hiccups that can happen throughout, so it's yep. going to be uh, so funny to go. Ah, not great luck there as well on the exit. Enemies in an unfortunate place for Aaron. Yeah, Boris has paid off the school janitors, so Boris is now leading uh, to switch on the generator. Aaron is not too far behind in the scheme of things. There is still time for him to catch up and equalize. It's all minor. There's plenty of opportunities for this to turn tail entirely. Yeah, really, the, uh, it's more so decided by the middle. Yes, if you the ask dreaded me. nurse grabs in hospital. <laughs> But I would say Boris is definitely skip. ahead at the moment. He's definitely gained a lead with a smoother start to the school. 
there is one corridor coming up which may just slow him down a little bit. Uh, it's very rare that it happens, but there's a, uh, I think there's a grey child, child or a mumbler which can grab him, even though he's got the light off. Probably won't happen now I've mentioned it, but if it does, I'm sorry, Boris. Aaron's now catching up into Otherworld School. Here's the very dark corridor where you can't really see what you're dodging, <laughs> but you also can't keep your light on, otherwise you won't be able to, like, you'll draw aggro and get grabbed. No, he got through pretty smoothly. And no issues with the yellow card pickup there from Aaron either. That's a pickup that even I sometimes like to mess up. I'll run past it or uh, we'll examine the cards on the table instead. <laughs> Boris is reaching the shotgun. This is the only other weapon that is picked up in this run. This is a strictly you shotgun kind of run, really. You'll notice there that Boris actually did a nice little strafe into the shotgun to pick it up, and he does that to position himself that a little bit better to run out of the door rather than strafe out of the door, which is just a little bit faster. Those tiny frame hunting things. Yeah, sort of things where you think strafe should be faster, but they aren't. It's it's so much work goes into it. Yeah, like the thing about strafing in this game is that strafing is not faster than running forward in terms of raw speed, but the positional advantage is like hard to measure concretely. It has to be felt. Another little thing that Boris has done there, he's done a little walking step on that staircase just to try and make his turn that bit tighter and give him that frame advantage. Uh, Aaron is now running up those same stairs, so again, he's not too far behind. Uh, he's going to catch up to Boris in a second. Uh, there's a nice long cutscene that Boris is now going to hit when he turns that valve to the side. Yeah, in the scheme of things, Aaron's catching up pretty nicely. Yeah, they're both on the rooftop. Gains have been made on the movement. Boris is going to have a nice little lead in a second again, though, because uh, his cutscene's about to finish. This is one of, like, the very few unskippable cutscenes in the video game. A great place for a tea break, uh, if you need one. Wouldn't go for anything other than a tea break, but... I gestured with break. my tea mug to the camera, even though I don't think anyone can see it right now. <laughs> but rest assured, I do indeed have a cup of tea. Boris now reaching the courtyard. Aaron is now leaving the rooftop. Uh, I think they both approach this key slightly differently as well. Uh, so Boris Ooh, opts for strafe. a strafe. Yeah, it's very, very nice there. Like steering it out as well. Stra moving while strafing in a way that is precise to sort of like cut a curved line is very difficult. Uh, it's not uncommon for people to overshoot those stairs <laughs> and uh, fall off. Yeah, Aaron, yeah, Aaron, for the Aaron quick goes turn, for the quick turn. Though. That's a lot more normal and hard and easier to control. Yeah, so Boris, he's snapping on some shotgun shells. He's going to the locker room where there's a nice uh, something knocking on the inside. Aaron now picking up the same shells. Yeah. So the shotgun tough. shells are worth double because they are. this run is being conducted on easy difficulty and easy difficulty inherently gives you twice the ammo of every single pickup. Right, you need to pick so up much nicer. Half as much ammo. Yeah. You need to pick up like two boxes of shotgun shells in the whole game to complete this run. As long as you place all of your shots well. And space them out well in some cases as well. There's a boss fight coming up where the spacing of the shots is very important. Maybe not very important, but it, it, it plays a part into uh, the ammo routing. Yeah. You can waste shots if you spend them too quickly. You have to kind of keep a beat in your head. It looks like Boris's school is going to end very smoothly. No bad luck on the mumblers in his version. Yeah, no anyway. grab. No grab, I think. A grabless school for Boris. Always nice to see a grabless school. Aaron is very, very much catching up. But Boris has to deal with some valves. Uh, now, there's a particular pattern to these. And the great thing with these is, while the turnstiles are turning, your IGT is stopped. So if you do make a mistake, it's not a bad IGT mistake. You still don't want it to happen, but it's not going to adversely affect you. 
This is actually, I think, the only practical version difference in the entire run, is that on the Japanese version of this game, for some reason, the options to use the valves has to scroll in because of the text at the bottom that says, which, which way do you want to turn it? That text box doesn't exist on the American version, so it just pops up all the options immediately. I never noticed that. Absolutely inconsequentially minor detail, but it is real. And this takes, boss... Takes one more input. Anyway, yes, Boris is on the boss. He runs up, fires five shots in, then it opens its mouth, fire two more shots in, and die. Very straightforward. <laughs> Boris! <laughs> uh... Uh, so Boris doing some very cool tech there. Uh, roller skates, Harry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Harry they both nailed the fastest locker. kill. He got pushed a bit, I think, which does minor damage, but isn't that big of a deal. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that was possible. It caught me way off guard. <laughs> that's like a... That's like a it's a specific input as well. That has like a very tight timing window to execute. It really <laughs> it does, does. it for fun. <laughs> I think you can Amazing. also shoot doing that as well. Potential 10 star <laughs> strat, who knows? <laughs> All right, Boris is out of the school. He got to grab the school. He even put some spice in there. What a player. <laughs> Aaron now leaving. I say not too far behind. Uh, still a lot of things that can equalize this run between the two runners. Uh, we've got yeah, the still, dreaded bridge control room coming up. Still plenty to go, and they're very evenly matched. Uh, this is another area where the air screen is made decide to... Uh, oh no, sorry, I'm, I'm thinking way too far ahead now, aren't I? Uh, that's the next alleyway, not this alleyway. Yeah, next the dog tree I'm just saying, I didn't know that that glitch could happen. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot it was a thing. It's just it's just uh, a thing that Boris likes doing. <laughs> Hasn't we no even be with it. Oh, the ice creamer tried to give Boris the business, but he gave him the slip. Boris Very well met. the trees here as well. Smooth line through the trees as well. See, this is audio plays a part in this dodge, right? You can hear the air streamer coming if you're listening, and occasionally even what direction they're coming from. So I assume Boris was able to hear that coming before he saw it, hence why he reacted so cleanly. Very close Absolutely. dodge at being chased he, by this guy. Is he gonna move? Ooh, nice. Just out of their range. That's the thing, when one of them starts chasing you like that, they only chase you so far, but you have to sort of, like, play a game of chicken with them, to it's like, are they going to go far enough if I just keep running forward? One of those things you've really got to commit to it if you're going to do it. Um, if you kind of take a half measure, you probably will end up getting uh, swiped. Aaron, meanwhile, not being chased at all, he just gets to run forward. So, for our commentators, I actually have a question for you. Uh, so I know San Juan does have a pretty difficult trick, and it will be coming up after the hospital. How do you think our runners are going to fare on the Out of Bounds? Personally, I think both get a first try. I think it's going to be clean. Well, it's partially random, so whether or not they both get it first try is kind of a coin flip. But when it comes to scenarios where the Out of Bounds is possible, they're both really consistent at it. Absolutely, Even though yeah, Boris's but... method is extremely weird. <laughs> <laughs> don't know how he does it. He makes it look easy. It's not, though. He's lying. <laughs> he tells untruths about the ease of his <laughs> <laughs> He just pouring all the spice on the run. Um, but yeah, both runners are very, very seasoned. I think, I think both will get it first try. I believe. But yeah, this is, it can this make is a large difference. <sighs> is that close enough? He knows it's not Ooh, close enough. Yeah. This is one of the... I want to say one of the worst rooms in the game. Uh, yeah, this, this room runs at like negative two frames. I think Aaron got it smoothly. Yeah, very smooth. Yeah. Clean on the corner. This is where Aaron's got a chance to catch up. Uh, it that isn't a massive blow for Boris's uh, lead, because uh, the, the opening the menu or closing the menu, one of them uh, doesn't cause IGT to tick. Um, but it's still enough where he's probably going to be feeling that. It's a minor thing, but it's all time that can be caught up on. Boris having some fun with the camera there. <laughs> Why is he like this? <laughs> <laughs> He's having fun with it. 
<laughs> Shaking it around. Alright, there they're entering the hospital. The second major area of the game, and randomness plays another big part in this one. Nurses can block your way, and then they grab you, and then it sort of ends up in a grab loop, so the, the pace can shift here quite dramatically depending on how this all turns out. And if you're here for swag, there is also a chance for some swag in a cutscene towards the end of the hospital as well. Um, it's, it's not really a massive trick. It's not going to save you any time, but it just looks cool. Uh, but we'll get to that when we get there. This is actually, this, this director's room uh, is also a very awkward room to, to deal with, I think, especially when you're first starting out. Because uh, you think it looks smooth, but actually... Probably quite similar to bridge control room, I'd say. The chairs jutting out makes it more awkward to navigate than you might think. The Both dreaded chair picking up, picking up the bottle and getting the red liquid. This is a technically optional activity, but having the bottle is useful for a glitch and also skipping a boss fight, so it's faster on multiple metrics. And both runners have some very, very tight rooms here to deal with as well. Uh, and with Harry at times feeling like an 18-wheeler to control, it's not the nicest of, of areas to be in, uh, especially if you're on a good pace as well. And it strafes out the generator room. Interesting. All right, so for this, they both have to go to the floors that are both locked, touch the door, tap them once, and then leave. And for they these elevators... Go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> for these doors, you've got to, like, run up and double-tap interact quickly, but not too many times you don't interact with them multiple times to get rid of the text box quickly. They seem to have, like, mastered the rhythm of that. Absolutely. And the elevators as well, you can either examine the doors to get back into them, or you can examine the panel to the side of them. It's much faster to get the panel on the side, but also much, much more precise. So it just kind of goes to show the, the skill level. It's a bit of tiny. And now both runners have to pick up four different plates, uh, four different colours. There's blue, red, yellow, and green, uh, all in obviously different rooms. Boris going for a strafe to pick up that blood pack, though. I've never kind of known moving. somebody to do that before. <laughs> oh, there's a grab. Oh, there's, there's the tax. Okay, only there's the okay. That has in I, fact mostly evened it up. Yep, yeah, both runners now equal footing. That can just happen. Sometimes the nurse is too far forward. It's uh, the wandering direction of enemies when you first enter a room is randomly determined. God bless Konami. Fantastic. Sure, it pleases them very much. <laughs> so just like that, things are now looking remarkably even. Slight differences in technique there as well. Boris going for the strafe, Aaron going for the run to that red plate. Uh, both seemingly hitting it at the same time. Boris really likes his strafing techniques. He does. <laughs> He's got a strafe agenda. It's helped to show the power of strafe movement. <laughs> <laughs> strafing produces mind-boggling effects in Silent Hill. <laughs> <laughs> wow, like dead on the same for using the blood pack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving right like wow. pitch perfect. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> I'm loving this. Oh my god. How long will they be able to maintain this sync? This is deeply entertaining to me. Something I'm so satisfying double. about it. <laughs> All right, going into the room with the nurse push. Let's see how this goes for both of them, because this is also a sort of randomly occurring thing. Aaron's position seems more favorable. Yep, he slips through easily. Boris yeah, is Boris blocked. getting stuck. Ah, that's a tough. That's a tough one. Yeah, we got stuck on the nurse by the key as well. That's gonna. That's gonna bring him back. I would like him to sync up again, though. That was nice. That was very. That was very satisfying. So after, after the unfortunate, like, grabs in the school, Aaron deserves some good luck in exchange, I think. Absolutely, yeah. Aaron paid his tax, now it's time for Boris. 
It is now collecting. It is due. Ooh, a strafe to the shelf for Aaron. Actually, just take it. that. Yeah, there we go. I don't do that. What is that? <laughs> what is this behavior? <laughs> what are they up to? Part of Boris's strafe percent. Oh, now, are we going to see the wag tech here? Yes, Aaron's done it. His he's, light's uh, off. <laughs> he's turned his light off. I didn't know I, you could do that. I think it's a very... I don't want to say it's frame perfect, but you've got to be very quick in uh, turning it off from the menu close. I love how all of like, the, the frame perfect tech in this game is like just to do really funny stuff during like, <laughs> gap time and not actually any run implications. Yeah, no time save, just for the swag. Right, picking up the key that they can use to leave the hospital and heading back up. Neva Rana examining the Alessa picture. Always a funny meme to see, uh, mid run. Yeah, there's a picture on the desk there that like overlaps the key hit box, so it's very easy to pick up and like look at it by accident. There's the second box of shotgun shells that we need to complete the run. That should give both of them all the ammo they need to finish. And we've got what is I oh I think it's normally referred to as the Great Equalizer coming up now. Uh we've yep. got a uh, <laughs> a very fun skip. Ooh. The dot way Oh Oh my. This hospital does not like Boris, does it? No. It's complete. It's a complete reversal of the first area. The doctor blocking Boris on the corner while Aaron passes through with a pretty smooth line. Aaron's getting Ooh, discharged, nice but Boris needs some more tests. Nice strafe for the pair of them. Both strafing very cleanly very to good. that key. You have to tap slightly there. That's not a hold. It, like, there's an input there that goes on. Too far, you miss. Too little, you also miss, but in like a different way. All right, now both of our runners are maneuvering to the antique shop, so I'm going to explain the tech that will be coming up before it actually happens, because blink and you'll miss it. We're going to be performing the trick called the romper out of bounds, called as such because the enemy called the romper will help us to get out of bounds. The way it is performed is that the enemy has to jump onto Harry, knocking him over at roughly the same time that he enters a particular kind of loading screen. In this case, it will be the stairs leading down into the antique shop. Uh, but it has to be at his particular timing. He has to be sort of like flat on the ground when he crosses the loading screen boundary. So the timing is particular. Too early, it doesn't work. Too late, and you just don't go in. Uh, so it's dependent on enemy luck, enemy positioning, and also the ability to sort of position yourself dynamically relative to where the enemy sort of ends up being, because there's no really, like, super consistent way of going about it. There's a general method, but you always have to sort of make slight adjustments here and there. And even the very best players, which are indeed, these are our very best players, do not have 100% consistency with this trick. It's, like, impossible to be 100% consistent. There's too many variables going on. And sometimes the enemies just don't put themselves in a position where it could even be possible at all. But if you manage to get knocked over and into the loading screen at the same time, Harry's collision does a weird, and you're able to just sort of walk through a wall and then run straight through the void and land on top of the hospital on the other side of town. Skipping an entire boss and several, several seconds of walking, saving about a minute and a half, roughly. Anyway, Aaron is coming up on it right now as he leaves the antique shop. Here it is. What will occur? Nope. Aaron, Aaron got the bar on the where nothing. <laughs> and here's Boris's patented strafe method where he just does it. And it works! Straight They're through. crazy! They're in sync at the same time! <laughs> what is that strafe method? <laughs> I told you! <laughs> Boris's strafe method is confusing. I think any time I've ever watched for Rizzle, he's been in the sewers. What is that strafe method? He just... <laughs> he sources right in. I don't understand how he makes that look easy. You have to position yourself very exactly on, like, the corner of those stairs as the enemy jumps into you to knock you down, to kind of, just, like, make you slide forward across the floor to get in. It's, like, it's hard. And he does it with a strafe, which feels like it should be even harder, but he swears by it as a more consistent technique. And you know what? He got it first try, so I can't argue. If it works, it works. It works for him quite clearly. Demonstrably. But importantly, yeah, both runners are now synced back up. It's beautiful to see. Perfect sync again. 
Although we do have another equalizer coming up after this boss fight in the sewers. Uh, the creatures can be awkward to deal with, but first, uh, the moth boss, Float Stinger. Uh, this is the boss where they want to space their shots out. Um, if they shoot too soon, the boss has a, a weird value where it won't take critical damage. So you've got to wait sort of if it's two or three seconds and then it takes yeah. critical damage again. It has like a damage shield or something. I'm not quite sure how it's programmed, honestly. Both spacing their shots. Taking damage and getting hit is actually not super important here because it helps to space the shots out, but also uh, the butt sting attack right there actually does a pretty comparable amount of damage. So you don't want to get hit just willy-nilly because you don't have that much health to, like, to spare. Both dying at roughly the same time as well. They're remaining in sync. Smooth fight for both there. It's, I like that fight as well, uh, or the way they do it, because they just take mm. a, a slight micro adjustment to, to dodge the, the butt sting, as you said there, which is really, really cool to see. Both also finishing it really near the stairs, because that's where you have to exit from, so you try and end the fight precisely in that corner. Before we get into the sewers, I just wanted to ask, I noticed on Aaron's, he brought up a little bit of text in the fight. Was that intentional, or did he click on something? I think he might have just been mashing. <laughs> I don't think that's strats. It doesn't matter, though, because text doesn't advance IGT. Uh, mashing X, as uh, Aaron would say. Both players now have to shoot a lock off of a gate, um, which thankfully doesn't phase us too much because we account for that in the ammo routing. But the fun bits now coming down, this is where sound cues will become very important for both runners uh, as they try to navigate through the sewers. Uh, there's essentially uh, three creatures, or four if you count the third one twice, they've got to try and slide past. Yeah, and these dodges are kind of like semi-random. A more skilled player will use sound cues to their advantage to sort of know where the position is. They can hear enemies before they move. So they know which like kind of lines to take, but sometimes, sometimes it's just brutal. Let's see what yeah. occurs. Ooh, they both nice pace themselves. Both. They got the same kind of luck and both pace themselves out for it, going for the walk instead. Oh, Boris getting caught there. Yep, Aaron got the like took the more favorable line, and it paid off. In a race setting, that's not going to be too bad for Boris because there's still a chance that on the way back, Aaron could get caught. And it's more likely to get caught on the way back by the uh, uh, the second guy there that they first meet. There's a few sewer dodges of this nature where you kind of have to like commit to a line and either you get it and sometimes you just kind of don't. A prey to the RNG gods for that one. And see, there's like a full block on Aaron's side. That's, there's not much you can do about that. See it where it let, Boris just let, lets him pass. Neck and neck again. <laughs> back in it. Boris was on the sewer guest list on the way back. I always found this weird. There's another level to the sewers, uh, which also has water alongside it. Um, not quite sure how that works, but... Uh -huh. I'd never thought about that before. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how water works. I can't say I'm well versed in sewers, but I thought that was a bit odd. Uh, oh yeah, Aaron turning his light off here. There's uh, small little creepers on the floor. Uh, I just call them cockroaches because they kind of look like cockroaches. Um, but I, I don't know if they are light sensitive or not, but yeah, Aaron's turned his light off there to get past them. They're definitely light sensitive, but it's usually not a big deal in that tunnel. There's only like one of them. That's why you'll see both runners sort of flashing the lights on and off for this next uh, gauntlet of the sewers, really. Yeah, sometimes bits of this game have to be done in the dark to avoid drawing enemy aggro. But uh, while you're in the dark, you have to sort of memorize where you're going. Because uh, do not adjust the brightness of your set. That really is just what the game looks like. You can't see anything. <laughs> dark and foggy, all the doors are locked. Not 
quite neck and neck, but they are still very, very close between both of these runners. Still very much anyone's game. Very much so. Absolutely. Especially on the way back here as well. Uh, what I like to refer to as the gatekeeper. Uh, the final door of the sewers <laughs> potentially could be in the way. Maybe not. Literally a keeper of the gate. Literally. <laughs> There's a guy in the way of the door. He keeps the gate. Oh, he moves Aaron forward out of the way for Boris. But Aaron gets by anyway. They're both slipping on by. It was one complete. And another dark area coming up. There's also another romper coming up here. Um, which isn't used in a skip. Uh, but again, you'll probably see both runners just turn their lights off as they approach the, the corner Are of this they, section. Though? Are they going to turn it off? I feel like they might just not, because I know sometimes they just don't. <laughs> they like sometimes to risk the idea it. of just suddenly being <laughs> jumped. <laughs> Boris uh, Aaron does indeed. Cool, uh... Aaron yeah. does indeed turn his light off here. He's not risking it. Boris Tempton fate flickering <laughs> Boris it. Does it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a romper enemy behind that corner, and if like if you're unlucky enough for him to just be like looking straight at you, he will just immediately jump you and knock you down. It's rare, but it does happen. Probably a good time to explain that this game has very funky frame rate in some places, and this is one of those places. Very much so. Uh, but again, both runners are going to opt to... Well, Aaron's opting for one in the dark. Boris is, I think, YOLOing it by the looks of it. Staying more in the middle away from the enemy spawns. Because the place we want to be is sort of on the left. And there are enemies around there who will be very easily attracted to the light. So he stays middle while running there, instead of going immediately to the left but turning the flashlight off. Both approaches work fine. Absolutely. Merely preference. And there's a chance here that one or both runners could have a dog on the uh, the pier here. It seems neither neither spawning. Have none. Zero. <laughs> Boris having a bit of trouble with the bow entry what? there. Oh. That was weird. Slight. He got hit by an air screamer on the way in, but he like slid off the hit. In a, I don't know, that was really weird. That interaction was very strange. That slide tech from earlier is catching up to him. Top of stairs now. We'll either run and get caught Ooh. here. Aaron getting through nicely. As does Boris. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, they're going to run in the dark here mainly. Uh, you can see there's a few air screamers around, uh, which will get in your way if you have your light on here. Uh, it looks like Aaron's managing quite fine. Yeah, much of the section done in the dark, so you do just have to sort of memorize where you're going and turn your flashlight on when you can get away with it to sort of orient yourself. They both got caught on the bottom of the stairs there, ever so slightly. A very awkward turn. Not as awkward as this next turn, though, in this lighthouse. Oh, boy. What do they do for this these days? Uh, I think they do, yeah, a little bit of a run, then a walking step, and then continue running. Yeah, spiral, spiral staircase in a, in a game with tank control movement. Thank you. I would like to have a conversation with whoever designed that. <laughs> Doesn't exactly bring out the best in the, the very uh, like cardinal direction-based movement system. But yeah, because you can't just hold like a diagonal when running down this, or eventually you'll be classified as being like directly parallel to a wall and smack straight into it. Both exiting at a fairly similar time by the looks of things. And mercifully the game just teleports you back to the boat rather than making you do the entire lighthouse run backwards. Chance that this dog could have spawned now and may well be on the stairs. Will either of them get caught by it? Nope, Aaron's out. And As Boris is, is out. Boris. No dog block. No dog block. We're entering the late game here and they're both still remarkably close. As a testament just to how solid their runs are. Extremely consistent players. That's a camera angle. Well, that was a very nice entry for both. 
Again, potential chance for some enemies to maybe block off. Shenanigans may occur. Oh, Aaron gets Aaron's through smoothly. <laughs> Boris <And> is <laughs> scratching and even move. You okay there, man? <laughs> that guy was like lost in thought. He was thinking about something else entirely. <laughs> He's like, yeah, just go on through, Boris. It's fine. And the enemies that spawn in as you move into this tunnel, there's like a random component to this as well. No scratcher in the first tunnel. But will they get the other dude spawning closer down? See, Boris gets the spawn. Oh, Aaron he does. does. I, I do think not know can... what determines that. I think it's the line you take, especially on that t uh, corner into that tunnel. Um, I if you felt take like a wide that as line. well. I felt like it's the line as well, but I've never been sure um, about it. Anyway, now they're going to execute the red liquid glitch. Uh, there's a boss that can be skipped by using the red liquid on it, but if you use the red liquid on like a ghost child that spawns in the area, uh, funny business happens, and you are able to skip the boss entirely with a very glitchy effect on the proceed on the proceeding cutscene, which I think both of them just skipped instantly. Yeah, I think on fastest speed, which both runners are on, I think there's a chance the game can crash if it plays really? out. Really? I didn't know that. And that's something of PS One. Oh my. Oh my. Uh, but long story short, Harry breakdance is the, is the best way of describing it. Yeah, Harry does a sick breakdance and they both immediately teleport to the final area nowhere. They skipped the civil boss entirely and it also puts them on the path for the bad plus ending rather than the regular bad ending. So it is faster to get slightly more than the worst ending. Just a little bit. And nowhere is a nice little amalgamation of... Pretty much most of the areas you've been in in the game, uh, well, you know, hospital and, and uh, school. A few very tight rooms, there's a few puzzles coming up as well. Um, and the alert puzzle. And also enemies uh, that are mostly transparent, so you kind of have to guess by feel how to dodge them. There is a nice little uh, strat that Boris has kindly worked out for everybody for sort of one of the final corridors which we can explain as he gets there. Hey, um, a dumb question really quick. Uh, I mm -hmm. noticed Brizzle didn't have to go one left on the item, but Aaron did. Is Brizzle doing the ray gun strat? I don't know. I don't I know. I don't think did so. He... We'd have to plug it in at some point. The, for those of you, the ray gun strat is a thing you can do in this game where you plug in a light gun peripheral during a cutscene at a certain point, which adds the Hyper Blaster to your inventory mid-run, and you use that to push the inventory one space over so you don't have to menu exactly one space. <laughs> it is absurd, stupid nonsense that saves like a quarter of a second, and you have to plug in like a $60 light gun to do it. I don't think they did that, though. Oh, I see it in uh, Twitch chat. Apparently, uh, Brizzle grabbed a drink earlier. Oh, that's why. That'll be it, yeah. Okay, I was like, wait, when, when did he get the extra item? <laughs> that would be why. Yeah, if you lack the health drink, uh, you would push the inventory by plugging in a peripheral instead. <laughs> this, okay, I, th I imagine you picked it up for safety reasons. $60 for a second time save, though. Yeah, it's it. great. Maybe less if you can find one being sold for less, but like when I looked at it, it was $60. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't even work with like point blank. Like, what's the point? <laughs> It works with, like, lethal enforcers and Area 51 and, like, nothing else. Money well spent. No issues leaving the clock room and going towards the final, I'd say, puzzle of the game, or of the run, at the very least. Yeah. Uh, the uh, light switch puzzle. Uh, probably important to note, both runners are doing this with the uh, analog stick. Uh, it just makes the cursor move that bit faster than if it's on D-pad. Yep. Just analog stick just makes the cursor move quicker for some reason. So you got to have your DualShock controller plugged in. But no fear of a nurse grab here, as both runners will just uh, delete the nurse. Yeah, there's no room to run by, even with excellent luck. You you pretty much have to kill it to get it out of the way. It's like the second one of, one of two non-boss enemies killed in the whole run. It's as close to a pacifist run as you're going to get for Silent Hill. It'll be interesting to see whether they uh, put the ring on the fridge first or take the sword out of the fridge first. 
Uh, there's no time difference between them. I just like uh, seeing who does it differently. Yeah, what does Aaron do? Aaron takes the sword first and then puts the ring in. They both do, actually. Yes, the ring must be put on this fridge before you take before you try and leave the room. Otherwise, the fridge bursts open and kills you. Very fun, especially if you haven't saved it for a good hour. Jelly beans, not a trouble for uh, Aaron there. Picking up his 39 flavours. Soon to be 40 once he picks one up off the floor. I feel like Aaron's gained a bit of a lead here in nowhere, just off movement. I think so, yeah. So, although he's had a technical second try on the uh, the skip earlier, yeah, certainly head. Although, as we say, it's IGT based, so perhaps there's some uh, trickery going on with the uh, the timing system. We will know when the results screen. We'll know, but for the they still definitely seem even. Okay. How does he approach this one? Ooh, getting grabbed by one of the invisible children in the dark. He just went straight Ooh. for it. And I think Boris likes Ooh. to try and bounce off the cart there. Seems like it worked out for him. No concerns there. That's all. That's the one that uh, Boris went into uh, wireframe to figure that one out. Respectable. Respectable. The deep research. <laughs> Uh, penultimate room now. Aaron definitely, Aaron's distinctly like... approaching the final door here, definitely ahead. Like, IGT where... will tell the story. This is where self-control is needed when you're mashing X on the door, because if you uh, mash through the menu, you'll examine the door uh, quite a few times. Aaron's now gone downstairs into the final room of the game. Yes. Boris is not too far behind. In the final boss, you need to position yourself in just the right place and then wait for it to start charging lightning, which is when you deal critical damage. Aaron positions himself, but you don't want to be too close, otherwise you'll bonk off its shield. Yes, Aaron's in a good position. I think Aaron got a six shot, six shot, six shot yeah. kill. That's time for one, two, three, four, five. Five for Boris. Ooh, very nice. All right, we don't know who's won yet, but we do have time for both of our runners. Um, honestly, this race was close. I really don't know. Uh, that was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed I enjoyed that a lot. It was beautiful. Perfectly in sync, like more than halfway through the run of uh, a couple points. We're not going to slide tech. quite back in yet. We still do want to see our ending here, make sure we can see before we announce it. But honestly, I'm feeling really good, and either way, I don't think there's any wrong answer for who won this one. This was a neck and neck. Very close. We just gotta see. We just gotta see. Drum roll. Unfortunately, you can't fully skip the entire ending cutscene. You can skip, like, most of it. Not quite all of it. Can't skip Harry getting slapped in the face by Sybil here. It's Aaron's cathartic side. to see. <laughs> <laughs> Go. Double oh, hands. First raid, first run of the day, uh, almost done here, and we're gonna see uh, which side takes the first point. Aaron's results screen coming in. Very respectable. That is a <sighs> nasty time. 30-16. Forrest's time? 30-23. So close. That is literally a seven seconds, seven, seven second seconds. difference between these runners. Seven All seconds? Right. Uh, on our end, really quick, I think we are ready to pull back in our runners, uh, so they should be able to speak in a moment here. Uh, but the first point will be going to Team Pyramid Head. I give a little clap. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent gameplay. I enjoyed that very much. That was, was that was really fun. So uh, before we uh, get into much here, we do have a few uh, 
talk with our runners a little bit. Uh, for both of you, uh, how are you both feeling? Uh, with questions, I'll start with Brizzle and then go to Aaron. But how are you both feeling after the race? I still don't like this game. <laughs> <laughs> I I very much enjoyed your strafe techniques. Yeah, I, I, I guess. <laughs> no, no, it was it was, it was good. It was a good run. I'm that was very entertaining. I enjoyed that a lot. Uh, how about you, Aaron? Uh, it was a good run. I hate the piano, though, so much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I almost had it, like, perfect first try, and then I messed up the last key, and then I just couldn't just couldn't do it after that. Luckily, it did look like time was made up later. Uh, we definitely saw certain points. Like, Barizzo was leading very heavily in the school, um, especially after the piano. But in the in the hospital, it got mean. It got it just jumped the other way around mojo-wise. It was a very mean to Barizzo a lot of time, and Aaron had a you had very It clean flipped, and then, then when you guys got to the out of bounds, you were in sync perfectly for, like, the next five minutes. It was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had that terrible pattern where he doesn't aggro yep. whatsoever. I had to run straight back because there's nothing you can do about that, unfortunately. The nothing. The oh, yeah. no RNG. The RNG where you cannot get to the play. Uh, I do know. Uh, I do have a question for both runners here. Just I'm watching that one. Uh, I'm going to start with Aaron on this one. Uh, Aaron, what was in your mind on the piano? Uh, that was definitely one of the uh, major early points. I think a lot of people were actually thinking that the race may have been done at that point. Uh, we kept reminding, hey, this is a long run, a lot going on. So what was the uh, was the action there? Yeah, I, honestly, I thought that was it. I thought that's the end. So I'm not gonna win this now. But um, yeah, I was just I was just shaking so bad after like messing it up the first time. I just couldn't regain control at all. But the hospital was like perfect for me. Actually, I don't think there was anything wrong with that section. Yeah. Uh, Brizzle, for your end, uh, what's with that strafe out of bounds? I saw that and I'm still just in awe. Like, that was. Uh, I, I swear, I swear to God, it's easier than it looks. It's so much easier. I told than you. It looks. I told you he does this. It's so <laughs> just much easier than it looks. into the guy and went back and then it equalized it after the hospital. I was actually worried, like, oh, it's school. Oh, God, it's going to be one sided. Oh, hospitals are going to be one sided. And then it was neck and neck, really, pretty much the whole just time. It's an it iceberg. I'm going to give you a little hint. It depends on which console you're playing on. Which model of all console? Alright, alright. Really? Makes it easier. Um, uh, that being huh. said, uh, as well, uh, before we gear up for our next run, I Rizzle, uh, first, would you like to just introduce yourself, tell us a bit about yourself, and tell us where people can find you? Uh, you can find me on twitch.tv slash Barizzle, and I play this game and try to enjoy it. Uh, doesn't always go very good, but... We try. All right. And then Aaron, uh, same to you. Uh, what do you, like, you know, just give a general summary of yourself. Say, feel free to say hello. Tell, uh, tell us a bit about yourself. And uh, where can people find you uh, anywhere? Uh, I'm on twitch.tv slash Aaron with an underscore on the end. Um, I speedrun Silent Hill 1 to 4 mostly, but I'm currently learning Homecoming as well. Well, trying anyways. Um, but yeah, I speedrun bunch of different games. All right. Uh, before we gear up for our next game, for our uh, commentators, uh, once again, I do want to give shout-outs here to Mr. McSqueezy and Punchy. And before I do go off, would you like to uh, add anything else before we go? I just think that was a fantastic start to this event. Uh, both runners just done incredible work there. Uh, you're all in for a treat for the rest of the, the, rest of the, uh, the show. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Well done, you two. Really, that was that was genuinely was a lot of fun to commentate. Race. Yeah, thank you. You're both great. You're both great. I love you. Perfect. <laughs> All right. With that, that is our opener for the event. We still have six runs for you left to go. It can be still be anyone's race. As we said, we have Team Robbie at zero points right now, and Team Pyramid Head with one. We're going to be gearing up next for Silent Hill Two. So don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right, everyone, we are back from the break. That was an amazing race to open things up. San Juan was truly amazing, and I'm I'm still just I'm just happy with how good it went. I'm just there right now. Uh, once again, I am your host, Dysis, and I'm joined here by uh, Punchy. Hello, I'm here again doing commentary once more for San Juan 2. 
Uh, you also did some great content for Silent Hill 1, but uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about the next game coming up? And also, uh, apologies in advance, uh, this one is one of the uh, absolute pains to set up. Yeah, so this is Silent Hill 2. This is the one that people like really enjoy. There's a nice variety of like lots of glitchy type tech. Silent Hill 1 was a game of like a lot of tight movement, a lot of like minor techniques. Silent Hill 2 is a game of large movements and a variety of like glitchy type techniques. And as a twist, this run will be hard difficulty. For both of our competitors here, we've got two of the best hard, hard runners. It's two difficulties because it's like action difficulty and puzzle difficulty. Anyway, uh, let us do runner introductions. Shishijima, comment please. Okay. Hello everyone, I'm Shishijima, a Japanese horror game speedrunner. Thank you for inviting me to this event. I and XD will run as fast as we can, so please cheer us on. Thanks for listening to my poor English. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Shishijima. And Ignatius? Yeah, big cheers as well. I'm very happy she's able to join us. Uh, I'm McDysis. Uh, not only am I your host, but I'm going to be your runner, uh, one of your runners for Silent Hill 2. Uh, Hard Heart is a pretty interesting category with some unique directions, so I'm pretty excited. Right, and this run has awkward start conditions because pre-run RNG manip is necessary for a good race. So uh, we will have two countdowns to start with here. Okay, so uh, both you guys ready? Yes. Right. Yeah. Hey, count to down, Three, two, one, boot. They are now both preparing the RNG manip. Okay. Seems that both of them have started, and on my next countdown, they will actually begin the run. Countdown ni kaime. Three, two, one, start. On. And they are both off. All right, let's get it started here. That was a very complicated thing to explain. I'm glad I think that went mostly well for starting the run. <laughs> and right away, both of them are grabbing text to immediately skip picking up the map. Uh, Shishijima has indeed picked up the text Motorhome because they managed to corrupt the text by leaving very quickly. <laughs> very good. All right, so that is the first and immediate application of Silent Hill 2's venerated game saved tech. Uh, when text is drawn to the screen using game saved, your stamina refills, but also it can be used to kind of grab text boxes and carry it with you, which induces a whole bunch of uh, glitchy effects and what have you. So it's used a lot over the course of the speedrun. And uh, they manipulated RNG to manipulate uh, puzzle solutions that they'll be getting throughout the run. That's why they sort of had to boot the game in a particular way, because it has to be done from, from title screens, so we had to arrange like a unique setup for this. <laughs> Uh, and also, uh, shoutouts to Shishijima for joining us for this event uh, from Japan at like 7am local time. <laughs> I feel bad. I feel bad about it, but very glad that we were able to arrange this. Nice to have uh, the international competition. Both of them, uh, Agdysis went for Angela skip there. If you pause the game frame perfectly as you start the Angela cutscene, you can skip the cutscene without starting it, which saves about a second. That doesn't seem like either runner got it. I'm not even sure. She I wasn't paying attention to if she even went for it. But that is okay. But very close on the entrance to Silent Hill. Uh, since this is hard, hard mode, I don't think they're even... Like, do they pick up the chainsaw? Let's see. No. Not sure if it'd be useful even if they did. I think the chainsaw is a new game plus thing, and therefore I don't even think it's technically allowed under the rules, but I was curious. I am not super experienced with hard, hard mode myself, personally. Uh, these are two of the best runners of this category. Hard mode is... Uh, the previous run we did, Silent Hill 1, was on easy mode, which, uh, you know, enables a pretty aggressive playstyle since you have a lot more health to play with. Hard mode, you die very quickly. So both runners will have to play a lot more carefully, and in a different kind of way that you normally would when doing the strict any percent type speedruns. Do we have a poll get made, by the way? I should be muted. I don't know how to do that. I don't think I can do that. It's for Ray, you're all good. Keep talking. All right, sorry. <laughs> Backstage things. Right, both runners have grabbed text and are now heading into Silent Hill. This text will prevent events from starting. 
uh, when they eventually get into Silent Hill, and this is the most convenient place for them to grab text all the way at that gate there, so they're mashing game saved on their controllers uh, while they're doing this, the whole to carry this text the whole way there, because if, if the game saved like disappears for any reason, the text will disappear and then they'll have to come up with a different way of doing it. There is like a relatively simple backup if that goes haywire, but you'd prefer to just carry the text with you the whole way. In doing so, they'll skip the entire intro segment where they have to collect the wooden plank, so they can skip that and fighting the very first enemy as well. So they'll save a lot of time via this technique. And they both carried it past the point where it's very common to drop it. As the main Silent Hill loads in, the game is in the habit of like stuttering sometimes, which makes it very easy to drop the text. Both of them advance cleanly through the streets. Also, a crucial difference between Silent Hill 2 runs and Silent Hill 1 runs is that Silent Hill 1 is done using the, uh, the rigid tank control style of movement, where, you know, like, forward is always forward for the character. Silent Hill 2 runs are fastest using the alternate control scheme, where uh, James will just move directly in the direction of whatever the stick is pointing at, which enables, like, strict 180 turns. Like, you can just immediately snap to a direction. But it's also very awkward, because any time the camera suddenly changes, your entire, like, notion of where up is completely changes. So the runners have to be, like, stay on top of that, be very careful about how they move the stick when sudden camera changes like that. Shishijima grabs the key. Both of them grab the key. For some reason, when you do this trick as well, the key is invisible. <laughs> it's there, though. You can just pick it up, but the key cannot be seen. So both of them are now heading to the apartments. Where things will get into swing. In the meantime, you can look at James's hip swing. Look at it. He really puts, he puts it all into that stride. Fantastic. Neither runner going for the health items available on the street corners. I wonder what health items they collect throughout this run, actually. I'll be paying attention to that. I have run hard in my life at a couple of points, but it is not what I'd define as my specialty category. Alright, both of them in the apartments. Oh yes, and I believe that on hard mode there'll be quick saving even while indoors, even though its stamina restoring properties don't really apply to uh, indoor areas, because stamina running out doesn't really do anything when you're indoors. But uh, on hard mode, you bonk walls when you run into it, like you do in Silent Hill 1 on every difficulty, but Silent Hill 2 it happens on only hard mode. But for some reason, quick saving will prevent that from occurring, if done with the correct timing. Both evading enemies in the apartment hallway. They are much more aggressive on hard mode, so you have to be much more careful about how you position your flashlight usage and all that. And all that business. Both players going straight for the handgun. The handgun collection is necessary for progress. And both have to exit sort of against the direction of the camera. Then they must trigger the key cutscene with Laura. Alright, now they're gonna escape. James is like, huh, what's going on animation when the scream happens by quick saving? But that puts the game in a state of being softlock, but for some reason if you press the walk button, it unsoftlocks you. <laughs> I don't know why it works like that, but it does. Both of them are able to get through and use that door. Collect the key to room 202. Saves a little bit of time with that method. That enemy spawn is only on hard and normal. Doesn't appear on easy. They both swoos on by like it's no problem. Both entering the butterfly room, quite straightforwardly, grabbing the clock key. Right, the clock key is a thing that both runners will have to pay attention to. They manipulated their RNG, but they're not psychic. So they don't know what their clock is going to be, roughly. But from the clock, they'll then be able to use the results of the clock puzzle to calculate the rest of the puzzle solutions. So the initial clock position uh, is how they'll be able to tell what the rest of the puzzles are. And also, the initial clock position is random... Oh, they both got very good luck. Since the solution to this puzzle is always 9-10, 
how close the initial clock face is to 910 obviously saves or loses time. They both got really good RNG. Different, but good. That's amazing. They're now both pretty much in sync, grabbing the handgun bullets there. Both turning their flashlight off to run by these enemies smoothly. And this is where Shishijima's letting the cutscene run a bit, because I presume he's calculating his RNG on the side. Oh, look, Dice's. Dice's blazes ahead. I presume he's already worked it out. Or he'll, he'll do it at a different point? I don't know. Who knows? None of my business. Ooh, that was fast. <laughs> Man just chimes in to say he worked it out. <laughs> All right, he knows. He's on point. He's got it together. That's okay. Since this is also an IGT-determined run, taking a little moment there to work out what your RNG is on that cutscene doesn't confer, like, a penalty. But now both runners should know the results of every future puzzle uh, down to the digit as long as it was calculated correctly. There's, like, a method for this. There's a range of seeds that are available, but if you do it the RNG minute correctly at the start, the range of possible seeds to hit is narrowed down significantly, so from your initial clock you can calculate pretty exactly what seed you're on. It's a whole... I'm simplifying my explanation a bit there because the full explanation is frankly quite boring. But basically, they should have... they have very likely worked it out by now. It dice is using his cans of soda to knock down the key. Or canned juice, as the game puts it. And Dice is quick saving as he moves away from the dumpster there, because it allows you to start moving during the fade out. But that does mean you have to maneuver while not being able to see what you're doing. Alright, Dice is heads into the pool. Both of them fall down. To move out. Ooh, both of them, both both players escaping smoothly without being hit. They dodged on the edge of those sprays. Very nice to see. Conserving their health, because at this point you don't have many health items. And indeed, for the sake of speed, you don't really want. You want to get away with as few healing items as is possible. Ah, there's the extra handgun bullets. You need to collect some handgun bullets as you proceed through this section. There's Eddie's butt. Please enjoy it. Handgun bullets will be needed to defeat the boss of the apartments, more so on hard than on other areas. WTF is canned juice. Okay, uh, brief Japanese language thing here. Juice is what they call, like, all kinds of, like, carbonated soda type things. So, like, but, like, it's a, it's a loan word, so it's kind of a false friend type thing. Whatever. I'm not going to labor the point. That's just why it's like that, all right? Now both of them are entering the second half of the apartments, through the fire escape. Uh, he him. Like now? Oh, okay, uh, backstage thing. I'm being joined by a co-commentator. I was supposed to be joined by a co-commentator. I assume he's just woken up. I'll be being joined by a uh, by Maxi. Hello, Maxi. Hello, everybody. I'm here. There he is. Fantastic. Anyway, Dysis is doing the coin puzzle right now. He's using his mouse to do this. He's using a mixture of gamepad inputs and mouse for this run. Cancelling the fade out using the pause technique. It's a little bit faster. Both of them on the coin puzzle now. I think Shishijima's actually playing on low texture detail. How can he see with this? Ridiculous. Anyway, hi, Maxi. They're commentating hello. hard. hard. <laughs> wow, that is that is low texture. Yeah, he's playing on low texture detail. Anyway, <laughs> my hello. goodness. <laughs> my my co-com has arrived. Maxi is here. <laughs> yeah, my alarm went off and I was like, huh. 
I thought that would be what happened. And then it went off again, and I was like, oh, 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 oh. My man overslept. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's no problem. We're only like 10 minutes in here or something. All right, Igaisus is already on the first pyramid head. Here's the strategy here. They kind of run into this corner, and for some reason that prevents pyramid head from attacking. And you can just simply pump about like... How many bullets is it into him? Do you know? Um, I, I don't, but I know it's definitely three clips at least. It's many. It's many. And then eventually, Pyramid Head will leave. I think you guys just tried to shout the number and I didn't hear it. <laughs> I think it's, it's five, it's five. Five clips. Five clips. See, this boss fight works more like a timer that dealing damage. Uh, ticks down faster rather than like a health bar, as it were. Both runners seem like they're getting the lock in place quite well. Dice is a simply throw, he's just waiting for Pyramid Head to leave. And Shishijima has also now got it, yep, both executing it perfectly well. Pyramid Head leaves through the dirty water. The walk of shame. Couldn't hit this guy, he was on the corner. Yep. And now Ignisus is once again back outside, exploiting game save again to refill his stamina. Which I think you have to do more aggressively on hard mode because you have a smaller stamina bar. More mashing necessary. And Ignisus has abandoned the cutscene. Where is James going? <laughs> there he is. He's off. He's off. Yes, yeah, so you can regain control during the, uh, the the Rosewater Park cutscene once again with quick saving. It doesn't actually save any time, it just looks kind of funny. Nope, both of them are doing it. <laughs> Excellent. Alright, now both runners are being uh, joined by Maria, who on hard mode presents a something of an issue in a couple of places because she is sort of an escort character. On most difficulties, uh, this is barely an issue. She has enough health that it rarely comes up. On hard mode in a couple places, there are spots where she can like get stuck and die. So one must pay attention to that at a couple of points. Narek Dice is coming up on the gas station here. This is where both runners are going to grab the pipe. Since they skipped picking up the plank, right, they don't have a melee weapon in their inventory, uh, but they will need one later in order to break a wall. Guns do not work for this purpose, so they need to pick up the melee weapon here, otherwise they softlock their playthrough, essentially. I will say, it looks like Ignisus has more of a lead here, uh, exiting the bowling alley, but I'm not sure how much that is in terms of the end uh, in-game time, because it seems like Shishijima took longer to sort of like calculate his RNG pattern during the Pyramid Head cutscene, so how far ahead he truly is, I could not say. Who knows? I honestly think they're probably quite evenly matched right now. Say that for the audience's benefit. I think it looks more distant than I think it actually is. I think right now this is actually pretty close. Yes, both runners fervently saving the game. They would never forget to save the game. Ignisus even has uh, the game saved sign from the Silent Hill 2 run at GDQ that I did a couple years ago. It's more than a couple years ago by now, oh dear. 2019. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, he took the sign home from that. I didn't have room in my luggage. And by luggage, I mean I had a backpack. I backpacked it that year. <laughs> ah, grabbing Brave the first man. aid kit in Heaven's Night. That's where they pick up their health items. Yeah, that's a free one. Yeah, it's very... I didn't know it was that close. Yes, that's where they get a health kit. They'll need some health items as they go. There are some places where avoiding damage is just not practical in hard mode. So a bit of health items here and there. 
will very much help them. Very, very much. I think Dice is grabbing the purple bull key here. It's the first item you pick up in the hospital. Ooh, getting smacked by that nurse on the way out of that room. That's damage. Not a critical amount right now, but it all adds up. Eventually, you may be forced to go out of your way to grab more healing items to compensate. Yeah, that's one of those hallways Maria can get caught too, so... Yeah, she can cause problems too. Earlier. If Maria... They both got smacked on the way out of that room. Actually, she's not also in turn getting smacked on the way out of that room. <laughs> Both of them just eating that hit. All right, both now on route to the third floor, I think. No, Eggdice is on route to the roof. I was confused. You need to get a certain distance into this room and then circle around back to this area which causes Pyramid Head to spawn. Dysis appears to be counting something. Oh, also, when Pyramid Head knocks you off the roof, he knocks your health down to its minimum condition without dying. He basically takes you to zero health, so healing immediately is what the first aid kit is generally used for there, because being on zero health, the next time you get hit from anything, including getting bopped in the ear by that guy, as just happened to Dysis, would uh, instantly kill you. Uh, this is not favorable. Yes, both players healing. In Silent Hill 2 PC, you can actually heal automatically uh, with the H key on your keyboard by default. Obviously, they might have moved it to something else. Uh, so that's how they were able to heal without opening the menu. It is a dedicated button bind in the PC port. And also, this is where RNG Minute comes into play. Both of these players, uh, they know what the buttons, what the numbers are for these passcodes without having actually looked at the places that would normally give their solutions. That's what RNG Minip is for. That's one of its major time saves, that box right there. Because you may notice they were able to open it without actually knowing the solution. But they did. They know the solution. They worked it out. They calculated the manual way. Ooh, Shishijima getting stuck between these two enemies. That's rough. That's brutal. Taking more damage. Ugh. Red health. Concerning. Dysus is heading into the hospital boss. God, this block is uncomfortable. Okay, Shishijima got through. Made it down there. Dice is dealing with the faster moving boss known as Flesh Lips, which, yes, does mean what you think it means. Ooh, getting strangled. It's out of it. Shishijima appears to be attempting to take... No, okay, he ran into a room and grabbed... What I think was... Was that ammo or health? I didn't catch it. He mashed... He, they do, they press buttons so quickly. <laughs> yeah, they do. I right. think it was shoddy shells. I, I think, think so. Is Shishijima really going to attempt to take this with red health? That's scary. I'm scared. <laughs> oh, Shishijima also has green blood enabled. That doesn't mean anything. It's just neat. Oh, no! Okay, he was... Shishijima was able to struggle Ooh. out of that without getting killed, but I, I can't imagine he's got more than, like, another hit left on him. He's scaring me. He, this condition is frightening me. Oh, okay, backsteps it. Playing very carefully. But he has to reload. Okay, he was ready for it. Both players taking this... Taking it moment by moment. Ooh, swooshed on right through. Dysus clears the boss fight with a number of clean shots. Shishijima taking the opportunity to reload before the third enemy spawns in. Counters him out of the grab. Mm, correctly swooshes under to avoid getting hit. Assesses that situation correctly. If he tried to go for the shot there, he probably would have gotten counter hit out of it, and that would have been quite bad. And Shishijima clears it without dying. Excellent. That was very stressful to watch. <laughs> Super scary, yeah. <laughs> that was terrifying. Oh, dearie me. The only thing that helped was the green blood. And now, Dice is going into the other world hospital. He's doing the technique where he's quick saving and quick loading, I think, in the elevators to skip the elevator loading animations, which is a technique that is consistent if you know how to do it, but risky if you don't, because if you do it wrong, you can break the game horribly. 
And Shishijima is able to pick up a med kit there and restore his health to normal condition and stop me from panicking. And then gets bopped on the way out. Immediately That's very bombed. unlucky. Oh no. That's, oh no, it's just rude. Had his flashlight off too, as that just happens sometimes on hard mode. And on hard mode, you take a lot of damage from everything. Okay, Shishijima now heading to the basement while Dysis is heading to open the fridge with the ring in it, a sentence that could only make sense in Silent Hill 2. It's you. I thought you were... sorry. Bopped. <laughs> yep, and Dysis also getting unlucky bop. Getting bopped on the nose. Avoiding getting bopped there. Nope. More bops are occurring. <laughs> but Maria also got <laughs> bopped. Only so much health. Only so much health. Between the two of them, Shishijima is definitely playing it faster and looser with, with health. Faster and looser. Good words. Faster and looser with health. He's picked up less and he's used less. Thankfully for Dysus, no more bopping. But uh, coming on to the pyramid head section, which is notorious on hard mode. Yes. Very, very infamous. For this being is very difficult. This is a scary portion of the run for hard mode runners because this is where Maria can very much die. It seems like Dysus is going for the. Yes, he's using the technique where he holds the text of it's too dark to read the map using the quick save in order to prevent pyramid head from spawning entirely, thus meaning Maria cannot be killed. <laughs> Uh, she can't die because there's no pyramid head here that spawns in to kill her. On hard mode, normally when you do this, if you try and run through this as fast as possible, there's pretty good odds that Maria will just get caught and die. Which is, uh, slow, notoriously. Save anywhere! Shishijima also now coming up on the... Name Undecided Forest. <laughs> What have, Jesus, what have you done to the subtitles? You've ruined everything. Parking lot! <laughs> Maria dies, her final words. Parking lot. Uh, Shishijima's also trying to nail the it's too dark to read the map thing. But the timing. There we go, he's got it. He's got can't save, game saved. That's the reason why you gotta like leave the room and re-enter is that there's a very brief window of time where it's possible to like get a quick save such that you can hold the text. Otherwise the game snaps to, no, you can't save anymore, we're not gonna let you do it. So there's a limited uh, limited frame window. It's not frame perfect, but the timing is pretty tight. The second try is good. Both of them playing it playing it safe and not like risking like just YOLOing it and letting Maria die and ruining everything. Dysus back out on the streets of nighttime Silent Hill. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Slides right in between those nurses there, both of them trying to take a piece, neither of them finding the hit. A brave line indeed. Shishijima now also exiting the hospital while maintaining his uh, low health condition. Which, yeah, unfortunately. There's, there's, uh, there's some free pickups here during the street section, so I'm interested to see uh, either of them, you know, see will, if they uh, pick them up. Will they go for it? Yeah. Will they do it? Shishijima seems to enjoy playing it risky. I'm not sure he will. <laughs> Also, notably, as your health is lower, uh, you have to mash game save more to refill your stamina more frequently because your stamina meter is actually tied to your health meter. Less health, less stamina. But you can always mash to refill it so it doesn't really have like a time implication, you just have to know that you have to do that. Whereas if you're at full health, you can get away with a more sort of like leisurely mash. You don't have to press it too much. Ooh -wee. Dodges right, or Shishijima dodges right around that nurse. Recognize it in an instant and snapped around. Ikdice is holding, it's too dark to read the map to get by this event trigger. This is the event trigger we skipped at the very start of the game. The one that would normally force you into getting the, uh... The... 
plank and the radio. The plank. Yeah, yeah, I did think there for a moment. The plank and the radio, but the event trigger is still there when you come back to this map, and it will like sort of force you back, but in like the wrong direction. And it's weird. So you have to do this glitch again to get back over it. But thankfully now, because it's dark, you can simply press the map button, which will bring up It's Too Dark to read the map. And then you can quick save and hold that text. So you essentially have a nice portable quick save skip at your disposal. This is, there we go, finds the wrench. Uh, you can pick up the wrench quicker if you sort of are half on the stairs when you do it, because then James will not bend down to collect it. So there is a specific angle you wish to try and pick up the wrench from. Also funny, uh, holding It's Too Dark to read the map will also prevent enemies from spawning in as you run through this area of Outdoor Silent Hill, which is why I presume they both did it quite early. But you don't have to do it this early, the event trigger's not that big, but I presume they do it for the, the properties of it despawning a whole bunch of enemies in the area on hard mode. On lower difficulties, that is nowhere near as much of a concern. Yep, there's the bend down. I'm running a little too far up the stairs on Shishijima's end. You got both outcomes there. But you do eventually have to drop It's Too Dark to read the map when you get to the end of this street here that Ikdices is on, because you can't use the door while attempting to read a map. That's not... You'd like, you gotta put the map down, man. Now, I, I've i noticed neither of them have picked up those first aid kits that you can pick up nope. here, so... <laughs> nope. <laughs> they're just going have. for it. <laughs> they're really just doing it. Shishijima especially, like, scaring me immensely with the pulsing red health cross in the corner, but he is, he's one of the best at this, so I trust, I trust his judgement. He knows what he's doing. Both of these runners, uh, Hard Hard is their specialty category when it comes to this game. This is their thing. They know it better than I do, even though I find it terrifying. Dice is about to grab... Uh, the key from the box out here. Using that wrench that was collected from the doorstep. This is the key that they need to get into the historical society up the road. And... Ah. So quick saving there as the fade out happens, it once again allows you to move before you can actually see what you're doing. And if you're very smooth at moving, you can sort of like start to take a line all the way out of the park before the, the screen is scrolled back in. But obviously, since you can't see what you're doing, it's quite difficult, because <laughs> you have to basically hit the movement blind. And if you get stuck on a wall, or the camera like sort of turns the wrong way, it can mess everything up. Right. Demon now coming up on the same line, pausing the game there to cancel the fade out. That's a little bit quicker. Shishijima hits it on the way up. Oh, there we Yeah, Shishijima gets nice. a nice line on the exit. Knew the position. Knew the, the stick location. Since this is played using the analog stick rather than the more common method of, like, D-pad movement for Silent Hill 1. This is all about where you place your sticks. And now they both get to run up the road for a bit on the way to the Historical Society, while well, hopefully not getting bopped by that nurse. <laughs> Took a swing Oof, at Ignisus. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Took a swing. Like, the second I... Like, why do I even say these things? <laughs> like, the nanosecond it exited my mouth, it went for someone. But that's okay, he made it to the Historical Society. Still in good health, no less. And enter the Vuvuzela downward <laughs> stairs. <laughs> <laughs> the Vuvuzela stairs. The staircase is really funny because, like, it it goes on for so long that like you think there's some sort of like looping trick to it or whatever. But no, even in like the the level files, it's just an extremely long tunnel. Like that's the best way to achieve the effect is that there's no trick. It's just a, it's just a really long staircase. Brute force. And Shishijima didn't get swung out on the way to the historical society is able to enter it. Now they're both on the Vuvuzela staircase. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Ignatius is reaching the end of that. Ah, that's where he grabs oh. the first aid kit. That's a convenient one. 
I'm assuming Shichijima will just use that straight away. I hope so. <laughs> He's scaring me. Yes, this is where the pipe that they picked up comes into use. Ignosis is using it to break down a wall. If you don't have a melee weapon at this point in the game, it breaks. Like, you, you soft lock. You soft lock. GG. Can't break wall. And also, here is bug room skip. While picking up this key, if you quick save and then quick load, uh, the key kind of duplicates its existence. So now you have the key, but also you don't have the key, which means you can leave the room without triggering the uh, the bug area. Yes, Shishijima picks up the medkit and uses it immediately. Thank you. <laughs> Terrifying, scary gameplay. And now the runners are looking for plates in the lower part of the historical society, or like the prison. It kind of it transitions into like a new area at a certain point. Yeah, Dice is already picking up the second one. First one's in the kitchen. Mm, getting second a smooth one's in the showers. Exit. Getting a smooth exit out of the showers, not getting blocked. Able to run around that guy. Very nice. Very nice. I think Shijima looked at the keypad by accident he, yeah, on the yeah. way out. I was wondering about that for a moment. I think that was an accident. I I believe it was. He does take the health drink. He's taking the health drinks in this room. Prepping for later. Health items will be necessary as we get further into the run as well, because final bosses, they have a lot of health, and they hit really hard, and dodging damage is sort of like funny, haha. -ha. You don't, really. <laughs> you don't. And Dice is waiting for funny noise. And has once again begun quick saving to run before you can see where you're going. You got a pretty good line on the exit there, actually. See, that that's a line you kind of have to take on faith. You just sort of hold back in the direction of the door and hope James goes in the right direction. But sometimes the camera turns in a way that you are not expecting and cannot see. Shishijima had a pretty uh, scary room there. Almost got blocked entirely out of the shower room. But luckily got out. Ah yes, the good old uh, candle wax, horseshoe, and lighter. Yep. Egg just did, uh, up the store. Egg Dice just did another quick save, quick load trick there. It turns out if you quick save once you've begun to use them and then quick load... Uh, it opens the thing without going through the whole animation of doing so. That was discovered, like, recently. That's very new. Still finding tricks in this. All right, now they're all in the elevator, so they're going to pick up the free resources available to them. The elevator takes, like, a little bit to hit the ground, so you've got time to sort of reload all your weaponry, grab some free ammo, grab a free health kit, which is very, very useful on hard mode. What is he doing? Ignisus is doing something. He's doing something. <laughs> he stood up. Why is he standing? <laughs> Game saved. He's brought the sign in. Well done. The game is indeed saved. Thank you very much, Ignisus. <laughs> just in case, just in case anybody didn't know prior. As soon as he stood up, I was worried. I was like, what is he doing? What was he up to this time? Shenanigans. <laughs> Shishijima's standing like on top of the hole, but not quite being in the range to interact with it is very funny. Uh, that's the one of the side effects of that trick is that you can kind of slide over the hole and still not be in it. It's not like a real hole. That's not how it works. Ah, and this is the major route diversion, the fun one of hard mode. Uh, they take a bit of... Ignisus is doing it right now. Normally, you'd you'd forge a path straight ahead on the other difficulties. On this, though, you take the slight detour to gather Pyramid Head's Buster Sword. Because it is a massively damaging but kind of difficult to use weapon, but massively damaging pairs really well against the very high boss HP pools of hard mode. So, using it well is the fastest technique for this difficulty since it does just do, like, a lot of damage. Like, a lot. 
Yeah, and this puzzle's uh, also random on hard difficulty. Yes, that's one of the things that they know. They know their result. Yes. Having calculated their RNG. <laughs> he got too many inputs, but like it doesn't make a huge difference. Pretty good exit, too. Pretty good exit on Ignatius' side. Yep, now that he's got the Buster Sword and the Wire Cutters, he's moving on to the Maze section. I wonder how kind this plays this weird, out. Uh, yeah, because there's some enemies here that can uh, can give you some trouble. Yeah, they, they block you on, like, easy, let alone hard. What is the play here? The dice is coming up on a problem room, even on regular things. Opting uh, for the handgun. His solution is gun, and then the enemy runs away of its own accord. Oh, okay. That worked out well, I think. But yeah, that seemingly. I don't know if that is 100% consistent, but... Seem it worked for him. Sounds exactly. good. Shishijima getting uh, similar RNG on the head puzzle, needing th uh, three inputs to get to the correct one, but they both got different results. Ignatius was like sideways green, his was upside down yellow. Interesting. Different inputs are necessary. Oh, and Ignatius is performing uh, a boss fight skip here. Once again, using It's Too Dark to read the map to cross an event trigger that would normally force you to fight uh, Angela's boss fight, the Abstract Daddy. And also, the Arsonist puzzle. Except on hard mode, I think it's a different thing. Regardless, you have to pull the correct Yeah, mix. counterfeiter. Counterfeiter on hard mode. Yeah. On any percent, it's known as, like, the Arsonist. The Arsonist is the correct solution to the puzzle of the bodies, so getting it without looking at the solution is called the Blind Arsonist, but it's still called that, even on difficulties where it's not the Arsonist. <laughs> Terminology is great. Art speedrun's fantastic. But either way, that's a thing that they know in advance because they have calculated the RNG ahead of time. Shishijima also getting the enemy to run away. Seems like it worked out well for both of them. Dice is now coming up on the end of the maze here. It's hard to tell. Dice certainly seems like he's tearing a faster path. Picking up the health kit the, there. The gap has widened a bit. It feels like it. Thing is though, because this run is timed IGT, I do notice that Shishijima has been letting cutscenes play out longer. Maybe he's like taking a moment to collect himself, maybe he's looking at his notes. Who knows? After all of the uh, close calls, I wouldn't blame him. All right, so this is where the Buster Sword is coming into play for Ignatius. <laughs> he's like shaking his hands. <laughs> what is this display? <laughs> okay, he's using the Buster Sword to try and to defeat the Eddie fight. This requires a certain timing and a certain technique. He gets punched once, that's fine. Then you got to time it on the way back to hit him with this overhead strike as he walks in. Clean hit. Very clean. Second time. Clean hit, clean counter. Got it in two hits, as you would like. And now, he's hiding in position behind this bag of meat. But he has knocked Eddie into a strange position. We would like him to get stuck. There it is, that's good, that's good. I believe he's got a position. Ah, he's escaped the position. He's getting punched. Oh, the double punch. Double punched. Those punches do a deceptive amount of damage for how wimpy they look. All right now he's changed to the shotgun. Oh, back to the buster sword. Yeah, the fight's oh. it's escaping. Hiding behind the meat to avoid getting shot. Oh, once again, he's gotten nice on the corner of that. That's a nice position. Oh. Okay. That's a kill. Got through it. A it bit, was a little, a little bit... bit uh, yeah, it was, I was about to say, it was a little bit worrying to see Eddie go into that corner and uh, pull out his gun, but... Yeah, the gun is a very high-damaging attack. It can kill you very quickly. 
but I would say it went well in the end. Yeah. And let's see how Shishijima deals with this. Shishijima takes a step forward, and that seems to... No punch. Interesting. And he's, like, stuck. This is an interesting approach. Also two hits. Fascinating. He didn't even get hit. All right, so how does he approach this? Once again, trying to take up the corner, but goes for the overhead strike instead. Strikes it Ooh, clean. Good damage. Goes for the swing. Ah, not quite catching him on the back. And trying to stand in the right place, I think. I also would not have been able to keep track of that. The camera really did something quite strange. <laughs> oh, the meat bag successfully intercepting Eddie's punch. Ooh, oh, nice positioning. Very this nice This is setup. very nice positioning from Shishijima. Very good. Very nice fight. Only only missed one strike. The rest were all clean as. Very yes, solid Eddie, damage. Eddie was very cooperative there. That's, Love to see it. That certainly saved a packet of time for Shishijima, I think. Oh, absolutely. As you said, the IGT is probably a lot closer now with that. All right, now Ignisus is in the hotel, where they shall summarily execute another out-of-bounds technique. This out-of-bounds is funny because you have to sort of, like, exit past a loading screen that you would normally get by walking up the stairs, using it's too dark to read the map, and then fall back in bounds, but sort of half inbounds, half out of bounds, by running down the very side of this staircase. Uh, too far left, though, and you pop back inbounds. Too far to the right, and you don't fall at all, and you do want to fall. Ignisus does this on keyboard, because he this is just the thing he finds easier to do. I find that incomprehensibly strange. Because keyboard is, like, digital. <laughs> You know, and you're trying yeah, to do you're yeah. trying to do a diagonal for this, but he finds he, he got it. He got it first try. He, he says it's the safer method for him, so I mean, I suppose it's it's preference at the end of the day. Got a few runners here today with like very idiosyncratic methods of doing like harder tricks in these runs. But sure enough, he got it. He's he's down in the basement now. He's able to skip into the hotel basement without giving up his item inventory, which is normally what you have to do to get back down here. It works for him. I just, I find it mysterious. <laughs> it's like, I don't understand how you make that work. All right, now here comes Shishijima. Doing the trick. Oh, see, that's too far to the left. Gets popped back in. And that. Now he's trying to set up the same, I think actually they're doing the same kind of thing. Ooh, a little too far forward there. Fell off the wrong way. So you got to, like, fall sort of, like, parallel to the diagonal of the slope. Because if you don't fall a little bit down before you try and run all the way out of bounds, you won't be far down enough to fall back into bounds again later. You'll just sort of yeah, sail but... over the top of what you're trying to get into. And then you are and... lost in the void. <laughs> and funny enough, Shichijima's last attempt was very fast. Very good. Definitely far enough down. It's a very analog trick, right? Like, even if you fall down, you might not have fallen down enough to get back in bounds. But that was definitely far down enough. Definitely far down. That's one of the harder tricks in the run. They both executed it very confidently. Doing that trick skips a whole set piece involving an elevator where you gotta get rid of all your items and yada yada yada. So that saves plenty of time overall. Now going towards the uh, briefcase, I believe. Yes. The word. Um, so <laughs> yeah, pushes. flashlight is off. <laughs> Just pushing them by. <laughs> by force of will. Yes, this is another thing where, as they have manipulated RNG ahead of time, they know what their solution should be. What word did they get? Did he get help? Ignisus help. got help. Ignisus requests help via his puzzle solution.
and now able to input the three musical boxes to solve the main puzzle of this area. Uh, general aside, somewhat irrelevant to the run, fun thing, if you put the music boxes down and pick them back up again, the game continues to count it as plus one item collected. Very good for 10 star. Just like the local equivalent of a 100% category where you've got to collect enough items and kill enough enemies, etc, etc. Uh, the music boxes continue to repeatedly count if you pick them back up and put them back down again. Big Dice is clearing the puzzle, moving on to the end part of the hotel. Just got to put the VCR in. What is Shishijima's word for the briefcase puzzle? Mama? Kusa? That's funny. Mama. <laughs> Shishijima getting stuck behind an abstract daddy on the way out. They're coming along for the ride. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Silo Ho 2. Ah, okay, not pick- wait, are there, uh, free ampules on that stand, on- outside the elevator on this difficulty? I don't think so on hard mode. I don't think okay, they're there. Okay, right. Instead, they go for all of the health drinks in all the All of the health instead. drinks. All of them, there's like six in the same room. How about the kitchen? Oh, there's none in the kitchen. Getting blocked by the lying body there. But it didn't get any damage from it, so it's all good. Dice is now heading up out of the flooded basement and into what is distinctly the final area, the final couple of bosses. But the final bosses, they are a real doozy on hard mode. They have a lot of health and they hit very hard. Yeah, the uh, the sword that uh, Dice has picked up earlier is going to come into play here. Yes, there is an entirely difficulty unique strategy down to the mechanical level that will occur here on Dice's side of things. Because what you want to do as he takes an exhalation of breath, I absolutely noticed that. Switches to the sword and changes his control type back to tank controls. I don't know why, but you need to do that. So he'll swing the sword, or at least he'll attempt to without getting knocked out of it, and it will bounce off the wall like that. It rebounds. If you're able to get them stuck like this, you can get them stuck in a loop. Uh, the sword doesn't bounce off the wall this way in other difficulties, so this only works on hard mode. It is entire. He's really got the lock on them as well. This is looking real nice for him. Like it cuts through both of them, and because it bounces off the wall, he's able to recover in time enough to do a swing before he takes more damage. That was very nice. That's about as well as you want that to go. Very well done from McDice's side. <laughs> he's on keyboard now. Ah uh, yes, he's changed to his keyboard. He's changed the keyboard. for the staircase, right? And for the changing control scheme in general that occurs here. Since he's changed to tank controls, he is now using keybad, uh, key, keybad, <laughs> keyboard. Shishijima key, taking key up bad. keypad. Shishijima taking up a shop in the other corner. Also, similarly trying to bounce the knife off the wall. It also seems like he set it up very nicely there. Yeah, I think he's got the loot. Oh, maybe, maybe. No, no yeah. Okay, he's nope, that's good. Ishima picking a different corner, but nevertheless setting it up well, setting up nicely, able to counter them before they're able to attack him. That should be... Yep, killing shot. Well done. Very good from both of them. That is more difficult to set up than it looks. <laughs> the position is exact. The timing to start it is particular. Right, Dice is strafing up these final stairs here because uh, this game tries to force you to walk up the final stairs for like for dramatic reasons, I guess? Question mark? But strafing, you can just do whatever you like. And now Dice is on the final boss, fighting Mary using the Buster Sword. This is all about sort of exact spacing and positioning using the bed. Ah, getting knocked out of his swing there. Yeah, it's very important to uh, have the right spacing because the Great Knife does more damage the closer it is to the uh, hilt. Is that the right word? Yes. So yeah, definitely looking for those Mary, big damage hits. What do you want? That was a good hit. I, uh, I brought you some flowers. Also, if he gets knocked out of position, he'll very quickly like quick swap to a different weapon flowers. using the PC PC on. port bind of being able to instantly swap to a different weapon to increase his walking speed. Because the great knife, while very damaging, comes with the penalty of you move very slowly while you've got it out. So it's not ideal for repositioning. Another solid hit. Another solid hit. 
Shishijima once again also strafing up these stairs. Wanted to go faster because otherwise the game tries to force you to walk, but strafing isn't walking, so it works fine. Will he get that hit? Okay. He traded, but he got the hit. So I think that's favorable for Ignisus. And now Shishijima entering the final boss fight in the same way, and Ignisus finishing it off with a shotgun blast. He did plenty of damage. Shishijima has the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> the pipe. Wait, why is she not moving? Is that intentional? Is that technique? What is this behavior? This is what? This is new. Also, Dice has got forty four oh eight. That's a good. Also, what is happening right now? Multiple things are happening at once. I'm very. There's so many things going on right now. Shishijima is doing a, some type of stun lock. Yeah, what is this? I've never seen anything like this. With the pipe. Uh, Ignis is PB'd by like 20 seconds or something is what happened there. That's why he's popping off. Ignis is just PB'd by massive amounts. He made a, he did a great play. And Shishijima like got the boss stuck. I'm super confused. What? Like, was, was the pipe bonk on purpose? It must have been. It had to have been. Shishijima killing that boss in pretty quick time, too. Well, the results screen will tell all. What time did Shishijima get? The ending strat was very unique. 44-39. Our winner for this race is Ignisus pulling out a stellar performance to PB by... Like... His previous like PB was 15 seconds. Yeah, his previous I, I PB, believe. according to the leaderboard, was 43, 44, 23. So he PB'd by a spicy amount of time. Very good. Very good indeed. All right, that was a very interesting race. That was a very interesting race. And, and also, Ignisus has more saves, which is the most important statistic of all. <laughs> Over 2,000 presses of the game save button for both of them. My lord. And hilariously, you would think Shishijima would have more being on uh, low health, but... Less button presses. Conservative. Yeah, bring, bring the two of them. Bring the two of them back in for the conclusion. Ignisus, how'd you feel about that? I'm sure you're very excited. How did I PB? <laughs> you PB'd, you PB big. I, I don't know what happened. That Eddie fight was terrible. I had a terrible Eddie, like he got away from me. <laughs> yeah, but, but other stuff was very good. Yeah, I will oh. admit your movement and, and uh, execution was quite smooth throughout the run. So You, you were solidly leading in quite like quite by quite a bit in various locations. I have no idea yeah. how my boat was also that much slower. The, uh, the, the, <laughs> the, the, the hospital, the hospital, and the historical society—you definitely pulled uh, quite the lead in those two areas for sure. <sighs> I'm sure you're yeah. very excited, but let's let's hear from our from our other runner, Shishijima. Comment, please. Yeah, I hope everyone watching enjoyed the list. Silent Hill has brought us connections that transcend national borders. Thanks to XD for running with me, and Punchy and Maxi for the commentary. Thank you. Arigato. Arigato. Um, Arigato gozaimashita. Yeah, that was, uh, that was wild. I don't know how that worked. Uh, honestly, I didn't think I'd PB. That's kind of thing that's surprising right now. I, I'm not gonna lie, when I set this up, I kind of thought I'd lose. <laughs> yeah, he was saying that. But you put yeah. up, that's, it went well for you. You put up a PV, you get to stick that one on the leaderboard. I do. But, uh, that's yes, excellent. um, I do want to give a special shout out once again. Uh, if you have not checked out, uh, Shishijima, uh, he's a Japanese speedrunner, does a lot of great stuff. He'll be in the RTA in Japan event coming up. Uh, as well, he does a lot of his own Silent Hill speedrunning. So definitely please check him out. Uh, it was definitely uh, pretty great to get him involved in the King of the Silent Hill. Uh, as well, on my end, I am McDysis. Uh I'm one of your hosts for the events, and uh, Silent Hill 2 speedrunner. Do a lot of horror games on my own end, so... Yeah! Um, 
that being said, uh, we are going to be getting ready for our next race. I do hope you enjoyed the uh, stellar commentary, uh, the close race on that one. Um, I do want to say thank you all again so far for watching. We have plenty more coming up. Uh, before we do go, uh, for our commentators, if you'd like anything to add, also feel free to just introduce yourselves once again, um, and then we can be all good. Yeah, Maxi joined in late, so you got to like give yourself a little shout out if you want, dude. <laughs> Hello, I'm Maxi Lobes. I was quite late. Well, not that late, but late, it, it, nevertheless. It's um, fine, don't worry about it. I also run a ton of horror games, and uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Maxi Lobes. Win number two for Team Pyramid Head. Woo! They're, they're pulling away. Which, hang on, I'm like double checking what team I'm on. <laughs> I am on Team Pyramid. Yes! Woo! All right. Well, that being said, we're going to be gearing up for Silent Hill 3. Don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right, everyone. We are back to King of the Silent Hill. It is your day of Silent Hill races. We've done two so far, and we have plenty to go. I do hope you all enjoyed that run of Silent Hill 2. Uh, once again, before we talk a little more about that, I'm your host, Dices, and I'm joined here by Punchy. And uh, Punchy as well, would you like to tell us a little bit about the last run? Because you definitely watched more than I did. Yes, uh, that race was... <laughs> you PB'd by 15 seconds or something like I that. I don't know how. You did extremely well. It was very close in the middle, but I feel like you really took off towards the end. Your hotel was uh, very fast. Like That's where you definitely gained the lead, I think. Although, you didn't see what Shishijima did at the end, and I actually want to ask oh, no, you I know, about I that. I actually know that, uh, so that is a strategy. I don't know if the pipe can do that automatically, but hmm. I do know if you get Mary stuck and you get really close in theory, it prevents the grab, and it can just let you wail on him consistently. Um, I do think the difference, though, was with the hits I was doing with the strat I went for. Um, I ended up getting a lot closer hits, while Shishijima's were more consistent. So I got yeah. really, I went for greed, Shishijima went for reliability, and you I think that's ultimately hits. how it went. I had no idea that the freezing strat was even possible. I'd never it's seen rough. it before. I was completely... Is... Shishijima's talented. So I, th I, thought, I, th I thought the bonk was accidental for a moment, until it like froze the boss in place, and I was like, oh, I think he did that on purpose. <laughs> like, that was All a lot. Right. That was... Anyway, yeah. that was a very good run. I enjoyed that. That it is. And uh, for our next one, I'll be booting that up in a moment. So I'll get that channel point prediction for Team Robbie and Team Pyramid Head. Uh, for those of you catching up right now, we are currently at a 0 2, with 0 on the Robbie side and 2 on the Pyramid Head side. Donald 3 might change it up, so uh, let's go see our hosts and runners. Oh, yes, and uh, welcome to Silent Hill 3. Uh, I'm Mr. McSqueezy uh, from the first one, and I'm joined by Catlink. Hello, everybody. I'm Cat Link, and uh, I run this game. It's a great game. I'm very excited. <laughs> it's gonna be. Right, a, if we uh... want to. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's fine. Uh, if uh, if any of you have not seen any percent for Silent Hill Three, it is a wild ride. So buckle your seats, and it's gonna like, get yourselves ready. Uh, we're gonna introduce our runners, uh, Death Tropes and Sephiriel, If y'all want to go ahead and do that. Hi, uh, I'm Death Tropes. I speedrun Silent Hill 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then a few RE titles as well. But this has been my main game for, I would say, probably the last three years. And uh, yeah, I'm just really happy to be here. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and I'm Safrel, or Saf, and uh, I also speedrun the first three Silent Hill games. Um, one and three, especially. And I've run a lot of categories in this game, and I'm looking forward to doing this. And it's going to be fun, I think. So... Yeah, it's good to be here. All right, awesome. Thank you very much for the introductions, everybody. And so let's get our runners ready for the run here. We're gonna do a countdown if y'all wanna get ready for that. There you go. And we're gonna get started in three, two, one, go. And there Good luck to both our runners here, Deftros and Safriel. Let's see where it goes. If uh, McSqueezy, if you want to go ahead and explain a little bit what we're going to be seeing at the beginning here. Of course. So at the beginning here, uh, it answers the age-old question of most Silent Hill free speedruns of, can you fall down the hole at the start? And the answer is yes. In some categories, you can. <laughs> um, not every category. Um, as they touched on earlier, they are running the any percent quick save quick load uh, category, which is run on the normal mode. Um, that's where Heather is allowed to kind of fall down certain areas. 
uh, and it comes into play quite a lot throughout this run with uh, certain skips and out of bounds, which you are going to love seeing. Oh, yeah. Uh, the skips in this game have gotten increasingly uh, crazier and crazier as time has gone on, especially with all the alt entering. But we'll, we'll be skipping a few of them because some of them are quite dangerous in terms of it will crash your computer. Uh, so we'll be avoiding some of the skips in general. But yeah, being on normal mode for uh, combat is quite interesting because usually it's easy, easy. Uh, which means you you wouldn't be able to fall down the holes that we saw earlier. Um, but yeah, on normal, it's a, it's a little bit more riskier. Absolutely. And it also factors in a little bit more ammo routing as well. Because um, obviously being on normal mode, a bit of a harder difficulty, uh, your ammo count needs to change accordingly. So you actually see an extra room in the hospital uh, called the birthday room. And there's a particular mechanic behind that. You'll see both runners here picking up a multitude of health drinks over ammo. And that's to kind of sway things uh, to a, a better outcome in what we call the birthday room in the hospital later on. I love that room. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to be coming up to our first puzzle here, which we only need to grab one, uh, one book and we get different... Uh, the, the codes that we get here are completely RNG, so both the Death Tropes and Sap get different numbers here. We've got to input them all the same. And that's our first puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to see some cool uh, sort of ammo routing here. You can see both Saf and Tropes shooting four, uh, four shots in the elevator. And there's a reason for that. They're just kind of prepping themselves for the, the boss of the mall. And they're also spamming their map button there. Uh, this game, much like 1 and 2, is timed by IGT. So what they do is when they're spamming that little bit of text, it's just kind of stopping the timer ever so slightly. So it's a minute bit of time save, but it's time save all the same. The classic in-game timer saves. <laughs> Love them. All right. Oh, they're great. Especially when they're just so free. <laughs> All right, so we're going to be going through the mall here, picking up the flashlight. We're pretty close, neck and neck here. Uh, it, all that can change in very, uh, in a very quick moment, especially with the boss fight coming up. But we won't be seeing that. In, uh, we'll be seeing that in a little, little bit. Absolutely, yeah. There's a fair few equalizers, uh, certain enemies, uh, which will definitely give both staff and tropes a run for their money. Mm, Yep. Messing with the light. <laughs> I think he's spelling out SOS. Right. <laughs> well, that, you know what? That could possibly be it. Someone help that <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this game has a very interesting uh, menu system. Uh, you'll see it quite a bit. Um, or it, I believe we mostly use keyboard. I use keyboard for this game, but I know some of you will use a controller, but the default for most runners is keyboard and mouse. I don't know about you, Mr. Mixbeasy. Yeah, I'm, I'm very much a keyboard warrior myself. Um, I I know that Saf and Tropes will uh, sometimes use a mouse. They'll uh, position their mouse cursor and then use that to click through the menu that a little bit faster. Uh, so you, you can use a combination, which is quite nice. Yeah. Uh, definitely nice, especially for uh, anything that requires you to move the cursor around very quickly. Mouse and keyboard is fantastic. Uh, All right. Go ahead. Uh, so I was going to say, I think Saf actually runs with a controller, has run with a controller in the past. Um, the control scheme is, is nice enough where whether you're running on keyboard or controller, it's not going to be an advantage either way. Uh, you can very much get top, top tier times using a controller. Oh, for sure. That's the one nice thing I like about this game is that uh, the ability to use either keyboard or mouse uh, or controller is very much up to you. Uh, all what, what you're comfortable with. But the movement in this game is absolutely beautiful. You'll see a lot of strafing coming from both Sav and Death Tropes uh, when they're coming out of doors or when they're needing to go to a specific spot. Yeah, it's certainly yeah. one of the oh. cleanest movements, I'd say, of any of the Silent Hill games. Oh, definitely. It's my favorite out of all of them. <laughs> all right. Still now we 
both got uh, they both got really good uh, hitbox. So the the nut to crack it uh, can be quite finicky. Oh, we got some enemies here. Not too bad though. But yeah, the hitboxes in this game can be a little finicky, but not too bad. Yeah, Saf and Tropes have actually opted out of doing some tech there. Um, there's a, a rule where you can actually use the quick save and quick load function on certain enemies to kind of reposition them or respawn them. Uh, but they've both decided to not do that this time and just make that run a little bit spicy a few days. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Uh, so I believe uh, we use that just specifically for uh, pausing or just getting rid of the enemies. But unfortunately, that can cause some issues with the game, so definitely want to avoid that. Absolutely. <laughs> and both oh, we got a nice time. little zoom. All right, All right let's see how, how our split worm boss fight goes. Both going in at the same time. Anything could happen here. We're on normal as well, so uh, this should be interesting. All right. So right now, basically, you have to shoot and hold your shots on occasion just so you can get more damage in. But essentially, the only time you can really shoot the monster here is when he's opened up. And that, wow, that was, that was a very good fight. Very clean fights from both runners there, yeah. Yeah, very, very clean on both ends. Very nice. And that... Usually that worm is the biggest nightmare sometimes when he decides to go back into the hole and <laughs> back out or just trolls you by slamming the ground. And <laughs> It's even worse on easy, believe it or not, because... Uh he can have random health, or say he, it can have random health. Uh, so it's sometimes six shots, seven shots, eight shots. But on normal mode, it's a bit more controlled. So as long as you're um, planting yourself in the right place and you're not going too far forward or too far backward, you're not going to have many issues, ideally. Yeah, uh, on easy, yeah, especially on easy, the uh, RNG boss health is not exactly <laughs> the funnest thing in the world to deal with, but it's a thing. All right, so now we're both making our way to the subway. And both in really good time, too. It's a very close race so far. I'm very excited to see how things change. But right now we're getting our uh, nutcracker here. Uh, the act an actual nutcracker. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier was just a vice, but now we're actually using a proper nutcracker. Uh, but we're gonna be they're going to be using it on the door coming up here. But we've got to avoid these dogs. They, they can get a little spicy. They can, especially on the train tracks. You don't want to get knocked down by them. Oh, yeah, no. They uh, they can basically almost get her into like a stun lock almost sometimes if you're not careful. But it should be fine. The both runners are now going to try and make their way down to pick up a shotgun. And there are some shells that are in this train car, but they're going to purposefully avoid these. Uh, oh, I say that. They're picking them up for safety. <laughs> um, Probably for safety. Honestly, I don't blame them. Uh, Alessa and a few other instances where extra shotgun ammo is always useful. Always nice to have. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, especially in uh, in the case of especially Silent Hill 3 with the boss health RNG and some bosses just like to run away magically. Um, so it's it's usually just best to have the extra for marathon's sake. But for record's sake, you probably would never pick those up. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those things where they are going to have to balance out, as I said earlier, their, their health pickups versus their ammo pickups because that does have a very key mechanic in the hospital. All right, Death Trope's getting a very clean uh, train tracks there. Let's see how Saf does here. Perfect. Also just as clean. Wow, that is awesome. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now they're working their way out of the subway here. We're going to be slowly making the way over to the sewers, which is going to be a fun little area. And we're going to see one of the very first skips in this version of this run in the sewers as well. There's also yeah. potential for some swag strats. Uh, I don't know if the runners will go for it, but we, we shall see. We're going to hold our breath on that one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, and Deftro's getting bonked in the butt there. 
<laughs> the, these, uh, these, these little guys here can be a little bit of a problem sometimes because you never know if they're going to hit you late or early or it, it's a toss-up on when they're going to hit you or if they don't hit you. Yeah, if they're on the warpath, you, you just got to handle it, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah, I forgot the uh, insane cancer is in here. Yes, so not normal. I'm so down used to easy, easy mode. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And Deftro's making his way out of the subway and into the sewers. Same with Saf over on the other side. Wow, this is, this is just so close. I'm loving it. Absolutely, yeah. So these are the top two runners for this category. Uh, and they're actually, I think they are the first two runners to get the sub 30 for Silent Hill 3, which in That's... itself is a massive achievement. Oh yeah, definitely. That's something that I, I couldn't even imagine achieving. So these two are the best of the best. They are just showing a lot of good skills here um, and teaching me a lot of new things that I'm like, oh, I'm, I might implement in them, that into my run later. <laughs> <laughs> they are always a joy to watch. You can always learn something from from these guys. Uh, no matter oh, the yeah. skill level. No matter the skill level. Definitely. All right. So we're going to be working our way over to that skip. So I'm going to explain it a little bit ahead of time here. We're not going to be coming up it too soon, but it's always good to explain it. Oh, we're picking up some health items. There we go. Uh, but the skip coming up here is basically... Um, it's very weird to explain. So essentially you have to walk off a ledge, quick save, and then quick load as soon as you hit the ground and regain control, and then ready your weapon and walk backwards to get the out of bounds. Now, it's a pretty free skip in my opinion. It's not too hard. It's probably one of the easier out of bounds skips, um, but things can still go wrong. Yeah, it could take a few tries. But that, again, is the beauty of this being timed by IGT, uh, is even if they yeah. you know, get a second or a third try, they're only really losing from memory sort of one to two seconds on a second or a third try. So it's not as bad as it looks if, he, if it does go wrong. Oh, yeah. Uh, like I said, this, the skip is fairly easy. It's not too complicated. It's just the setup and the timing of the quick save can be a little rough. Um, yeah, some say it, it's frame perfect, but it, it's not exactly frame perfect. It's just very finicky. <laughs> yeah, you've, you've got a bit of leeway. The mo most important thing is Heather's position when attempting the skip. If you're too far left or too far right, she'll either not zip far enough or it will just fail completely. Yeah. All right, both leaving into the hole. Very smooth entries there as well. Oh, yeah, very nice. I have uh, movement envy over here. They're just <laughs> moving so fluidly through all this m madness and chaos. They make it look so easy, but it's always a pleasure. To I know, watch. right? All right, and we're coming up on the skip right here. We're gonna, they're going to be doing a setup, walking backwards, quick save, quick load, and let's see if they get it. Tropes hey. for the first try. First try for tropes. Let's see. Saf gets it. Hey, yes. there it is. Perfect. Good job to both the runners executing that beautifully. Good job. All right. So now we're getting out of the source. That skip effectively skips about a minute yeah, off of sewer time. It's kind of crazy how much time it actually skips. You don't think about it, but it's it skips a lot. <laughs> yeah. It also skips one of, the, I, I would argue, one of the most awkward pickups in the game, which is that, that hair mm. dryer. Uh, God, that hair dryer, yep. <laughs> oh, the practice you do for that, and it never pays uh, off. <laughs> yeah, the, the hair dryer, I'm glad we get to skip that. <laughs> it's one of the nicer any percent skips that I will say is not, not too bad to implement into a, a run, but yeah, the other yeah. ones, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for context, uh, they've opted out of doing the, the monster out of bounds, and that's the ones where they will use the uh, alt enter to sort of resize the screen. So it'll look a lot nicer for you guys, um, but that's where a big chunk of time save is in the, the 80% run. Mm hmm. It's wild to me that the this game has gotten even down to, sub, uh, to the time that it is now. It's 
It's been a wild couple years. <laughs> <laughs> it's like every year there's something new. <laughs> All right. Oh, we found a new out of bounds. Let's go. <laughs> Five years time, you won't actually play the game. It'll just be the end screen. You just fall into the hole and that's it. That's it. All, all the way to the end. <laughs> <laughs> All right, making our way into the loud town here. <laughs> Good old pendulums. <laughs> Favorite yep. enemy. They, they got that screech on them, but they're great. So in this, uh, because we're on easy puzzle mode, we actually get to skip a good majority of the puzzles in this game. So we don't have to focus on grabbing extra items or doing certain puzzles because they're either out of the game entirely or they're just simplified. Uh, so you don't have to worry about extra things. You just get the item and go. Yeah, so all these pickups are, are very, very simple uh, for this area mm -hmm. too. Yeah, this is very much a point A to point B type of area. Uh, it's really not too, too bad. You do have some enemies here and there. Sometimes there's a dog that comes hurling at you. But uh, other than that, it's it's a pretty simple area. But then you get to the slurpers, and then it gets messy. <laughs> Very. I just want to say that was some fantastic jack pickups there from both runners uh, running in. Oh, yeah, those, those are Perfect. both. The mute, like I said before, the movement that both of them have been executing has been just so good. They're about, and we're still pretty close. And they're about to head to the second skip of this version of the run, uh, which does skip some of those slurpers that Kat was talking about earlier, um, which both runners will be happy to do. Um, it's a very, very similar to the sewer skip that you saw. The positioning is slightly different, but the method is the same. They're going to quick save on a ledge. Um, except there's one caveat here. If the... Oh, bit of a slurper catch up. That was, that was a close slurper there, yeah. <laughs> um, so because this is on normal mode and have a conteeter, um, if the runners accidentally push her forward while she's teetering, she will fall and she will die. And they have to use a continue. But it looks like... Rope's having to do another attempt. Oh, alright. Try number two. Saf threw first oh. try there. Oh, nice! Saf pulling the lead now. We love to see it. There we go. Def Trub still trying it out. Let's see if he can get it this time. Crossing our fingers here. And he's got it. Oh, well there done, we go. There it is. Good job, Trubs. Awesome. Good job to both the runners. That that trick looks fairly difficult. I haven't attempted it myself, but uh, I can assure you the skips in this. Some of the skips in this game are definitely not the easiest, but uh, the, both great jobs on both the runners' parts there. Yeah, fantastic work from both. Um, Saf is about to finish up in Hilltop. Um, tropes can still catch up, though. As I say, there's uh, there's a lot of things coming up which can even the playing field here. Oh yeah, definitely. This run is caked with stuff that can either just go right or wrong in a moment's notice, so don't be cheering too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, Trops is just about catching up fairly nicely now. Uh, he's just, mm -hmm. yeah, no slurper issues there. Ooh. Yeah, no, th those two slurpers can have a mind of their own sometimes when it's Sometimes they'll come right at you and start, you know, try, tr they basically just want to come eat you. Um, but, or they'll just sit there. It's it's a toss up on what you'll get though. Yeah, you either get aggro or roadblock. One of the two. Mm-hmm. All right, we're going to be coming up to the next boss here, a missionary. Missionary's not too, too bad. Uh, although... <laughs> He can be a little squirmy. He likes to move and run around a lot. So he hopefully does. he doesn't block any shots. Hopefully he doesn't run away. <laughs> <laughs> We're hoping for the best here. <laughs> oh, that looks textbook oh, from there Saf. You go. Nice job on Saf's end here. Oh, oh, a little bit of a tap there. Sometimes he does do that. The hitbox is uh, a little finicky. Nice. Get at him down. 
Def Trump's about to attempt the same. Let's see how it goes on his end as well. Ooh. Oh. This is a very scary fight sometimes because this this boss just does not want to cooperate at times, but looks like staff has got the missionary down. And very Trump's nice is job. Nice and Trope's as well. well. Wow, that was both like even playing field there. Nice. And you'll notice that uh, Saf actually equipped a, a, sorry, both runners equipped a health drink there. Um, there's a hot key on their, their controllers or keyboards, and they're going to use that to heal up without going into the menu. So there's a little bit of time save there. Um, they can also do that to get extra stamina too. Uh, yes. There's no game saved like in Silent Hill 2 for this one. I <laughs> wish. <laughs> that would be so cool. I, I'm kind of happy there isn't, but at the same time, I'm kind of happy there is. Uh, uh, either way, they be, they'll be able to use the health item that they uh, quick swapped to be able to get regain stamina, or there's another way to do it, which is by quick saving and quick loading into the game, yes. and then you get full stamina back, which is absolutely great as well. It's a little bit more of an extra step than Silent Hill 2, but hey, it's all the same and it works. Gotta love that continuity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you do have to do it about uh, two times. Yeah, two, two to three. Um, yeah. But I think they're both going to reach the hospital at yeah, roughly the same time. And... Yeah, right, literally around the same time. That's just, this is wild. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> we love to see it, though. We love a close race. Always the best ones are the close ones. Mm-hmm. They're going to be coming up onto the hospital here. One more quick save, quick load, right at the same time, too. They're in sync. But they're going to be coming up on the hospital here. So the hospital is going to be introducing the nurses. And uh, they can be quite bonk heavy. Uh, if you haven't noticed from the uh, Silent Hill 2 run, they love to bonk and they love to slap. <laughs> and on rare occasions, they will actually shoot you as well. One of them has a little gun in one of the later corridors. And the gun always sounds distorted as heck every time it shoots. It does not sound like a proper gun. <laughs> <laughs> At least for my game. I don't know why. It does not sound like a gun at all. <laughs> it's always a runner's all fear. Right. Yep. Uh, so this code that they just uh, inputted is the same every single time, so you don't have to worry about remembering any different codes. And they're going to do a pause strat here where it allows you to see what time it is without actually going up to the clock. You do have to listen to the annoying clock. However, you don't actually have to go up to it. It can be a little rough because you don't see any numbers. But as long as you get the gist of it, you should be fine. Yeah. And uh, both got it. There you go. They did. Saf paused a little bit longer there just to read the clock. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to sort of really see uh, the exact hand position. Uh, so thankfully the pause doesn't affect the IGT. So it's still very much anybody's game at this point. Oh, definitely. Yeah, the... Uh the, the ability to be able to do that is quite quite silly to me. <laughs> but I, yeah, hey, I, I, I am okay with those. Get to see the code without actually having to touch it. So you save yourself like two extra steps. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Equipping the shotgun for our uh, next boss fight coming up. But first, we're going to be heading to the basement, grabbing the submachine gun. So that way we can use it as well on the boss fight coming up. Uh, but first, we got to get that code, which is completely RNG. All right, we got a 8378 over there, and we got a. Let's see what Tropes gets. Oh, that's not bad. Not too bad. That's actually a pretty. Uh, for Tropes' side, that's actually a pretty nice code. It is, yeah. Uh, he'll have less, less mouth for movement to do on his keypad mm -hmm. there. Oh, yeah. Any, any minimized movement is great. <laughs> All right. I believe we do, yeah, the hospital we're going to be coming up, or the uh, happy birthday room we're going to be seeing. I haven't seen that room in ages. It'll be nice to see. Now, All right, hopefully. talking to Leonard. Well, Saf is talking to Leonard. <laughs> well, yeah, we're going to be talking. Well, well, both of them have now talked to Leonard. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Leonard. Bye, Leonard. 
And now that we have spoke to Leonard, they can both now proceed to the second floor to get out and uh, into Nightmare Hospital, which has a plethora of uh, slurpers and nurses. And that all... Hopefully they all play nice. <laughs> Hopefully, they're all, all over the place. So it's going to be an interesting uh, <laughs> interesting time for both runners. Uh, there's also a nice bit of tech here with that gate opening. Um, so oh, yes. So we've got Saf there quick saving uh, as it opens up. And when he quick loads, it just saves him a little bit of time. I, th I think it's sort of half a second or so overall for doing all of the gates. That is tedious. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's, a, it's it's the small things that are always the most tedious sometimes. Uh, but it does save a very, very small amount of time. Uh, if you were to run this for your first time, you wouldn't have to worry about this. But it's cool to see some extra swag and tricks. Yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> for it, certainly. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully no crashing. <laughs> Please, none of that. <laughs> <laughs> now this this uh, next little area coming up, I always like to just imagine uh, one or both of the runners just singing the uh, Snake Eater theme from MGS3 because of the. Uh, oh yes, ladder. of course, classic ladder. Anytime you climb a long ladder, it's a recommendation. Oh. Oh. Uh oh. We've lost Saf's feed there. We oh. lost Saf. Oh no, oh, that's dear. okay. Don't worry, everything's fine. Thank you. All right, everything is fine over here. We just uh, lost Saf's feed, but that's okay. We got a backup. So Saf can continue and not have to worry. All right, thankfully we still have the GDQ live feed for right now. go so yes the first of the slurper rooms here uh Zaf actually getting knocked down by one of them unfortunately but for this part of the hospital they're gonna go to uh the basement the second floor and then the third floor and then back down to the first uh it's a few items that they're gonna pick up along the way uh the key as we've just seen a blood bag and they're also gonna go and talk to a very lovely person who wants to wish us a happy birthday Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, dear. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, such a classic song. I love it very much. Up there with the UFO song for this game, I would say. Oh, the UFO song is just... Maybe one day we'll be able to see it here on GDQ again, but... For now, if you want to look it up, YouTube it. It's really good. <laughs> Tropes masterfully uh, dodging those slurpers there. No problem. Oh, yeah. Him. Those those slurpers get very scary, especially when you're not sure if they're going to attack or just sit there. You're just like, okay, please, please don't hit me. <laughs> not today. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like Saf got taxed a little bit there. Tropes getting the ammo. Got some. Got the ammo and everything. Very nice. Ah, uh, but there's his oh, tax. Unfortunate slurper. But that's okay. Making it in to the room here. Gonna uh, have a seance of sorts and uh, go talk to go talk to Leonard. Just gonna talk to him. That's all. That's all. So Trump is coming up onto Leonard here. Hopefully. He doesn't swim, oh, no. and unfortunately, he does swim. It's like the l l one thing you don't want to happen with Leonard, uh, because when Leonard does go swimming, you cannot do anything. You have to wait uh, until he comes back up, and hopefully, he doesn't go swimming again. And this uh, let's see how. Oh, oh, and he goes swimming again. Oh my god. Oh, it looks like Saf got very, very good luck here with Leonard, with just being able to do the shots and going into the submachine gun. Very, very nice. Hopefully, tropes over here can get the very same. Yeah. There we go. Finally getting... Oh, 
Leonard's being a little bit of a, a bully here. Is this yeah, wow, wow, he's just really getting into him. All right. Wow. Oh, oh my he god. Does not like trucks today. Leonard is just not having it today. That's okay, Trips. You'll get him. I believe. I think Saf you may have paid it. off Leonard for Trips. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Saf, you definitely made a deal with Leonard, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Looks like Trips is just now... I think he's about to finish Leonard off now. There yeah, we go. There right. it is. Well done, Trips. Good job, Trips. Jeez, Leonard is just nasty sometimes. He really is. But now we're finally getting out of the hospital. Both are out of the hospital and making their way over to the discount Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Awesome. We're going to be doing some more quick save, quick loading to save our stamina. And those of you that are excited to hear the uh, Bawley Haunted Mansion, I don't think you're going to hear it this time around. There's a, there's a nice little skip that we have for this category. Uh, Welcome you just to, to the <laughs> no, Sorry. Right. <laughs> I am going to miss Danny, though. He looks like a very pleasant fellow. Oh, that's Danny. <laughs> <laughs> so glad you came. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a Borley Haunted Mansion. It has its own little fancy tech in itself. Uh, but because of the any percent skip, there actually is the ability to completely skip it entirely. However, we do love a good old Borley Haunted Mansion, but we will not be seeing it, and I'm sad now, but it's okay. Because both the runners are going to be going through the amusement park with ease, I'm sure. I say, there's still plenty of time for Trubs to catch up on here. There's a few things that could happen to oh, Seth along sure. the way. Um, there's a key drop, uh, actually, in Discount Disneyland, um, which may be favourable or may not be favourable. Uh, we shall soon, soon find out for him, though. Hopefully for favourable, but we shall see. Yeah, so the, the walk over to the amusement park is quite a lengthy one, so you will see them going in and out of the quick save, quick load quite a few times for the stamina, because the stamina in Silent Hill 3 is very, very short-winded. It doesn't last very long. Obviously, you know, Heather's not a track star or anything, so it does take uh, a few times to get that stamina going. Yeah, both runners are on critical health at the moment as well, so their stamina's going to drain just a little bit quicker too. Yep. That dog almost taking a bite of tropes there. <laughs> Oh, God, that, that dog sometimes, it gets very close. <laughs> like Saf had favorable right. RNG there for the key room. Very nice. Yeah, that sometimes that key can have a very late drop. And if it has a late drop, it's not uh, it's not too big, big of an issue because usually it drops pretty quick. But sometimes it can take a, take a few seconds. Yeah, sometimes you'll run around That's the room. Saf getting... Hey, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess I'll just reset now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tropes making his way into Discount Disneyland or the amusement park, however you want to call it. I'm getting that key. Let's see how Tropes get, does with the key. Hopefully the key is very nice. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh. There it is. Yep. Sometimes it can take a few seconds. That's okay, though. And there's Got his team the mascot we're egging him on as well. Got a Robbie at the yeah. back. <laughs> you can do it, Trumps. I believe in you. <laughs> All right. Uh, Saf is off of the uh, roller coaster tracks here and making his way over to the skip. Hopefully, first try. Oh, Ooh. pause. Oh, no. Try again. See how that goes. Tropes making his way over to do the very same. Tropes saving, on the, this time. Tropes saving on the stairs there just to get his stamina back. Zaf has now broken through the, uh, the void barrier. Very nice, very nice. And Tropes very, very close behind here. 
wondering if Saf is going to do the uh, quick save quick load uh, midway through. There's a way that you can kind of get your stamina back in the out of bounds. Usually you can't. Um, but be interested to see if he does do this. Oh boy. Let's see, first try. Ah, let's try again. Goodbye, Borley Haunted Mansion. It was nice knowing you. <laughs> Always be on our hearts. Yep. All right, let's see if Tropes gets it this time. One more time. Third, third, times, third time's the charm. You got this, Tropes. Say. I believe in you, dude. Yeah, so these, these out of bounds can be quite scary. Uh, as you can see, Saf is kind of running through an endless void. Uh, while occasionally seeing the uh, inside of the map. Uh, but when you're running through the void, it's a very specific route that we need to take. Also, good job, Tropes, on that out-of-bounds. Very, very nice. Well done. Very, very good. But yeah, the out-of-bounds in this game can be quite scary. Uh, there's certain instances for the skips where if you go too far to the left or too far to the right, in some cases, it's it, it will just crash everything. <laughs> so you, you have to really know where you're going. Yeah, there's uh, little pits as well, where if you kind of fall into them, uh, Heather will actually zip, and yeah, the game will crash at that point too. So uh, it takes a lot of, um, we'll say, practice just to really make sure you're on the right path. Uh, Saf is now on the, the horses. Yep. So the horses here, uh, you probably saw, you saw Saf do a, uh, go into the menu to the save menu and then jump back out. So that essentially just uh, runs down the timer, uh, but it doesn't run down the in-game timer. So it allows you to go straight into the action, uh, and you don't have to worry about waiting there for an extra couple seconds. It doesn't save too much time, but it's still a really nice little free time save you can do. Yeah. And uh, but go ahead. Oh, sorry. So they, these horses run a cycle as well. Uh, so there's a sort of chunk sound that both runners will hear as the ride starts and as it ends. Um, so they want to try and get the horses killed as quickly as possible um, to, to not avoid the, the chunk cycle. Because if not, they'll be waiting sort yeah. of, you know, five to ten seconds extra following the horse kills. Yeah. And you probably had noticed that uh, Saf was holding the text on the screen or the horse is moving. Uh, that essentially just allows the horse to continue going up and down, but it pauses the in-game timer, which allows you to... You know, just wait there until you can get the proper shot. Let's see how Saf does on Alessa here. Alessa can be quite a troll. I like to call her Troll Alessa because she <laughs> loves to run away. <laughs> so hopefully, in. yeah, exactly. Uh, she loves to make you run. So the nice thing here is that thankfully, if she doesn't block your shots, you can do a really good amount of damage to get her down quickly. Uh, but sometimes she can do a block. Uh, I think on normal it's not too, too bad, but on hard mode it's like she just always blocks. It's <laughs> yeah. I've got to say as well, credit to uh, Saf and Tropes here. Normally, uh, for any percent, they'd skip this fight altogether. So they've actually done a lot of practice over the last few days to, to work this oh, fight Oh yeah, it. true. This fight is usually not in the any percent run. That's true, I forgot about that. Usually on uh, no quick save, no quick load, you have to do this boss fight obviously. However, on any percent, this fight is just completely out of the game uh, entirely for the run. Uh, so good job on both the runners for really putting the extra effort to learn this fight and really get, try to get it down. So yeah, get some claps in the chat for both the runners here. All right, hopefully Tropes has a uh, no trolly Alessa here. No Trollessa? Hey. Looks like he's doing quite well. Saf's now entering the church. Tropes is not too far behind, though. There is still time for Tropes to catch up to Saf. Uh, to Saf. I say that as Alessa starts to walk away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alessa doing what Alessa does best. Living her best life. There you go, and Tropes is now on the final, the final Alessa form. Not being cooperative though, that's okay. 
Ah, uh, unfortunately, Tropes has run out of shotgun ammo, so he's having to yeah, use the Yeah, I just noticed. Now. I was like... Yeah, when you run out of shotgun ammo, and this is why they picked up the extra shotgun ammo at the beginning, because this fight itself can waste a lot of ammo. As you can see, ha Alessa is blocking the shots, so it can get kind of finicky. Yeah, she's got Kevlar arms, Alessa. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, this this boss fight is not a not a nice one. Sometimes, I the amount of resets I've had on this boss fight alone. <laughs> it is, it is an awful fight. Yeah, especially under pressure as well. Trotes is doing really well to to handle this and adapt on the fly here with this fight. This is a very very scary boss fight, but I believe. All right, so Saf coming up on to the key here to get out. There we go. Mm. All right, so there's a few. Uh, there, so on Saf's end here, that's just going to do a quick save, quick load to get rid of the uh, crying lady. She takes her time to walk over to the door before you can open it, but with a quick save, quick load, you can effectively just skip that entirely. Very, very nice. Yeah, so. Mm. Saf's now heading back out to pick up the remaining tarot cards that he needs to get into the final door, uh, or penultimate door for, for the game. Uh, both runners now in the end game. Yeah, it's getting very close here. Oh, watch out for those ledges. Yeah, so the ledges in uh, the church section are way more scary on normal because the the possibility of falling off the ledge is very high. Uh, so that is never, never fun whenever you almost fall off and you're like, please don't fall, please don't fall, please don't fall. <laughs> Especially when you're trying to go fast and catch up as well. It's one of those things where you think, ah, muscle memory. Uh, it's not always your best yep. friend in this situation. Tropes getting oh, left definitely. there by the missionary. But. Yeah, the missionary there has quite the hitbox sometimes when uh, you, you're you pretty sure you ran past him, but no, no, you get hit. Yeah, it's sort of like <laughs> the kid at school that puts his uh, foot out to trip you up. That's what he does a lot of the time. Mm-hmm, exactly. Staff getting out of the school area there and making his way over to the final section of the church. Everything's getting a little deformed and wild. You can make sure you grab all the shotgun shells there, and uh, away we go. So right now, they're just collecting all the tarot cards for the final puzzle of the game. Uh, all the tarot cards are going to be in the same place. Uh, it's not RNG at all. Uh, just, at least on normal and easy mode, I know they're not RNG. I don't think it is on RNG on hard mode either, but... Uh, no, I think they're all We have to set. collect... Yeah, I think they're all set. I, I, Regardless, we got to get all the tarot cards and put them into the door. So Saf's going to be doing that just now, and Shropes is making his way to get all those tarot cards. Yeah, Saf now prepping for the final fight, and Tropes is making his way through as well very nicely. A big ups to Tropes uh, dealing with that Alessa mm -hmm. fight as well. It's something that, yeah, when it goes wrong, it goes very, very wrong. So he's doing well here. Oh yeah, yeah. That that it will just happen where you know bosses just don't cooperate. Uh, but that's what makes you know Silent Hill Three probably one of the more interesting ones, just with the boss fights alone, and as well as the movement tech and everything. Absolutely, especially in race format as well, when you've got you know arguably two of the best runners going at it. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, and let's see how. Saf does on the god fight here. Effectively, all you have to do is shoot her while she's up and then wait till she comes down and shoot her in the head, and then that should be it. It's pretty simple. It's nothing too, too wild, nothing too crazy, but uh, sometimes she, her head does do a lot of damage, mind you, so the extra healing items is very, very nice. No head boops from god, please. Yeah, no. Please no. I, honestly, I'd take the head boops over the flaming swipes she does sometimes. Every day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going to be coming up on time on 
staff stand over here. He's got one more cycle to go, and then he should have got defeated. And that is... Oh. We're out of we're out of the oh. shotgun ammo. <laughs> oh, and the hammer. Oh. Hey, and that's time for Saf over here and now <laughs> over on Death Tropes making his way to do the very same. Because now we have to just put the tarot cards in and see how the boss fight goes on God's end uh, with the God, and then yeah, that's it. Absolutely. It has uh, it has been a great run so far. While well, we are approaching God at the very end here, I would like to request Twitch chat to yes. cheer on everybody. Death cheer tropes on Death Tropes. Yes, everybody clap. If you got cheer emotes, use the cheer emotes. If you got heart emotes, whatever you got to give some love over to Death Tropes, making his way to the final boss here. Absolutely, absolutely soldiering on, uh, absolute champ. Oh yeah, uh, both of these runners are absolutely insane at this game with death tropes with the world record and Saf really not far behind at all um both amazing runners of what they do and honestly they put on an amazing show tonight so definitely give a lot of love to the runners all right let's see how this boss fight goes hopefully god is nice I think Tropes is going to make up for that Lenny fight, or the game is going to make up for that Lenny fight, rather. And uh, I believe. Yeah, give Tropes a good time here. Come on, chicken bones. <laughs> it's Wing <laughs> Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, a few head boops. Quick, quick little reload. Thankfully, she doesn't do anything when you're really close to her. Uh, the closer you are to this boss, the less amount of stuff she'll do. Uh, sometimes she'll swing her arms, sometimes she'll do some fire flames, but as long as you stay close, she should always do the head boop. Do the... Some quick healing here, and then we should be on the final couple taps. I'm always a fan of the sassy and... <laughs> Yeah, this is a reload mid-fight. Yeah, hold on one second. I got to reload. <laughs> um, and that's time. GG's. Very good job to Def Tropes over here. Let's see that final in-game time. We got Staff over here with a 3345. And with Def Tropes, we have a... 3527. <laughs> Yeah. It's the Leonard, I swear. Is, it's the Leonard. Yeah. That Leonard was a Leonard. big old meanie. <laughs> All right. Uh, for one, let's bring our, uh, our runners back on in, our races back on in. Uh, we definitely know where the uh, the race uh, divided there. It was really close, but then Leonard happened. Uh, we all do know that. Uh, once again, I do want to say GG to both runners. So thank you both very much. And uh, Thank you, dude. Yeah. Uh, first things first, Death Tropes. I'm going to ask you about Leonard, and also, um, while I have you as well, just how do you feel about the race? Uh, the race was great. Uh, my only thing was when Leonard swam. Usually, if you run this, you know you reset, that's it. But when Leonard swam, it was like, well, I have a finite of ammo. I have to put him down still. And then I knew at Alessa I was going to run out of ammo. I, had already knew, I already knew that. So I was like, I'm just going to empty everything else and keep going, and I'm finishing this race no matter what. So, and you um, did. Still, I, uh, I, you know, it, it was it was a little embarrassing, but you know what? I had to just keep on pushing through, and, and I had to make it happen. So, you finished the run, and that, I think that's uh, credit enough. I saw a lot of cheers and loves uh, cheering on that final boss fight. So there's no thank you guys. No shame whatsoever. Fantastic. And uh, Sephiro, uh the uh, the winner of our race here. How are you feeling about everything? Yeah, I just want to give big credit to Tropes there because I would not have won that if it wasn't for Leonard swimming. Oh, yeah. Um, it was such a good race, but uh, I got so much bad RNG as well with the Slurpers and everything in the hospital. And uh, it's just the fact that Leonard swam for, for, for Tropes as well. Um, he would have easily beaten me, I think. And um, I think he did great to bring it back. So I'm just... It was a great race and it's a great, it's a great run. Did you finish with your so. last pistol shot? 
I did. I, was I, did. Say, I, was I was like, expecting did, that. Did anyone notice that you've won <laughs> with literally your last shot? <laughs> yeah. I, ran yeah. I ran out of ammo. I ran out of ammo. Yeah, you, so. you ran out of shotgun shells. Okay, you had two bullets, bullets left, left and I was like, he won on his last bullet. I was like, what? Right. Before <laughs> I let you both go, uh, once again, I want to thank both of our runners here. Death Tropes, if anyone wants to check you out, where can they, where can they find you and what do you do? Uh, Twitch.tv slash Death Tropes. I speed on mainly Silent Hill 1 through 4. Uh, some Resident Evil stuff, but Silent Hill is my main thing. Love doing it. And so if you look me up, that's what you'll find me mainly doing. All right. And Zephyrl, uh, where once again, what do you do and where can people find you? Uh, yeah, you'll find me on Twitch.tv, Zephyrl. Um, again, like Tropes, playing a lot of Silent Hill games, horror games, and the odd casual playthrough as well. And... Uh, I just want to say thanks for giving me the opportunity to play this here. So, yeah, thank it. you very much. All right. Once again, I do want to give big props to our runners here. Both of them finished the run at great race. Uh, the score now is Team Robbie zero, Team Pyramid Head three. Uh, we'll be continuing on with more, but before we do go, I want to give props once again to our commentators. And before we go, if they would like to uh, just talk for a moment, just to tell us about themselves, let's uh, let's have that. Sure. Uh, my name is Catlink, and I speedrun a lot of different horror games. Uh, Silent Hill is definitely one that I love the most, but if you want to come check me out, I'm at twitch.tv forward slash Catlink. And uh, yeah, I love doing a lot of dark fantasy horror games. My jam. But uh, yeah, that's on me. Squeezy. Uh, yeah, you'll find me at twitch.tv uh, forward slash Mr. Underscore McSqueezy. Uh, very, very similar to these guys. I, I run a lot of Silent Hill, also play a lot of horror games. So you'll you'll find me there. All right. Well, we're going to be getting ready for our next run. We are a little under halfway through the event. We're going to be coming up with Silent Hill 4 next. That should be a very interesting race coming up. Not that the ones haven't been, but this one's going to be a lot more volatile. Uh, anyway, we're going to be right back really quick as we set that up. Don't you go anywhere. We will return shortly. All right, everyone, welcome back from the break. We are about at the halfway point for the King of the Silent Hill. I hope you've all been enjoying it so far. Uh, once again, I am your host, Sigdysis, and I am here with Punchy. Hello, hello. And that Silent Hill 3 race was absolutely brutal. I'm definitely glad both runs were able to finish, but it does show how rough some of these runs really can get. Yeah, that's Silent Hill 3 for you. Even even the winner barely was able to close it out, finishing on their last handgun shot. That last handgun wild. shot. <laughs> very last bullet is the thing that clinched it. That was very wild. Uh, even more so, uh, given uh, the, just how the way this event's been going, we're going to be getting into even deeper uh, volatility with the runs. Uh, as you all may know, our next oh, run boy. is going to be absolutely spicy. <laughs> uh, this can really be anyone's game. Uh, for those of you tuning in just now, uh, Team Robbie is currently at zero wins, while Team Pyramid Head is at three. Uh, we still want to see some dubs on the other side, so hopefully we'll be cheering, and it's been good all around. But uh, without further ado, I'll punch you. About ready for Silent Hill 4? All right. Silent Hill 4, a run of much things being random. <laughs> That's how uh, this run goes. All right. It all, it's all uh, dynamic. It's all over the place. Things will happen in an instant. You can't keep track of this one. All right, uh, that being said, let's hop on over that, shall we? Okay, uh, so I will be helping commentate for Silent Hill 4, and with me is going to be Chuleta. Hi, everyone. I'm Chuleta, and I'll be commentating Silent Hill 4 for you. I've been running this game for a few years now, so it should be fun. Yeah, uh, we have a lot of talented runners with us today. Uh, Chuleta is an excellent runner in this game, and we have uh, plenty more excellent runners to show you. Uh, Chuleta, would you like to introduce our runners? Uh, of course. Uh, we have first Sark, if he wants to introduce hey himself. Hello, guys. How are you doing? My name is Sarks, and I'm from Guatemala. I do speedruns and play lots of horror games. All right. Uh, and next we have Matt Gale. Eh, hola amigos, eh, hello, soy Matt. Eh, soy actualmente el world record de este juego, ya hace más de un año. Y supongo que la mayoría no me está entendiendo nada un pingo lo que digo, pero bueno, es, le tocó el récord a un argentino de lo que hay. Eh, supongo que por eso me invitaron acá y bueno, un solo para mi viejo, para mi vieja y aguante Messi. 
that's a handful hello. to translate, but I'll do my best. <laughs> um, hello, he's, he's, uh, he's Matt, he's Argentinian, he's the current world record holder of Silent Hill 4. Um, so he speaks Spanish, uh, none of English, so I'll be translating for him. Uh, whenever he has something to comment, no, Messi and, he also, says, yeah, yeah. and no. he also says something about Messi and Argentina. All right, uh, I want the Messi. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It'll really just be the uh, the beginning and the end. All right, so I mean, right. we'll be taking for commentary here. Uh, if we're ready to go, I think we're ready to begin the countdown. You all ready? Give me a second. All good. Okay. So, all right. give me a second. Just. There we are. All right, Chiletta, would you like to do the honors? Oh, sure. Uh, let me know when you're ready. On your mark. Listo. Listo. Okay. En tres, dos, uno, ya. All right. Oh, great. So starting off, uh, Silent Hill 4 is one of the games that's going to be uh, kind of going between first person view and third person view. Uh, I have mentioned in the intro that we're going to be having a lot of volatility of this run. Uh, what that means is that even more so than the other games, there's going to be a lot of random elements that can affect our runners. Uh, with us, we do have um, a pretty short uh, space between the two PPs, two very close runners. We have third place and first place, respectively. And uh, Chalette, we'd like to kind of break down more of the game before we get really into it. Just what we might be expecting. Uh, correct. So... For, I believe that for the first half of the game, honestly, the any time difference that they have will be either minimal or probably doesn't matter because the first half of the game uh, doesn't have that much RNG. But once they uh, reach the hospital part, uh, I believe that's when we can probably see any time differences there. Yeah. But for now, I think it's going to be, you know, neck to neck. <laughs> So right now what they're doing is they're uh, triggering the cutscene for the first uh, level, which is the subway level. And that's when we're going to be meeting um, the first character. Uh, so as you can actually see, uh, Sark is actually playing the game in English and Matt explained it in Spanish. That doesn't really matter here. Um, cutscenes are, cut are going to be skippable, so it really truly doesn't matter. Um, and also when there's uh, text on the screen, it won't really uh, affect the in-game time, so they can actually pause whenever it's needed. Uh, it should also be. And right oh, now, yeah. what they're doing? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. No, right now, if you can probably hear, they actually are um, tapping the um, the buttons because they they don't need to. How can I say this? It's it's very weird. Uh, the way they actually get in the hole. Um, how can I explain this? Maybe you can explain yeah, it better. Yeah, so the crawling me... works based, if you hold it down, you'll have intermittent pauses. Uh, the pauses are kind of forced, but if you just keep tapping it in a rhythm, you can just keep the speed going and you can crawl through the hole faster. Uh, it's a bit of early time save in the beginning and both runners seem to have executed it pretty well. Perfectly explained. And they're actually pretty close together now that I see. Yeah, uh, we are uh, getting into the first of our world, so to speak. We're going and going to be entering Subway World, which right now you can kind of see a bit of how the game works. You have to do a little bit in one world, and then later on you'll have to go back to the apartment every now and again to do these puzzles and to grab certain things like the gun. Uh, you have to look through the uh, the peephole, and this will allow them to get a phone call to eventually get a coin. Correct. And you probably notice that whenever they are on the apartment, which is the uh, first person view, they are actually uh, walking or rather running diagonally. Uh, that's a little bit faster than actually walking on a straight line. Uh, so you'll see that a lot here. Yeah. Uh, as well, I definitely noticed some people have mentioned uh, some of our fun runner antics here. Uh, Zarx's face is absolutely trippy to me and I love it. And uh, Matt Gale seems to be a lock in a bit of a rough spot, according to his room, from what we can tell. Um, both, both of our runners are going to be able to uh, utilize the coin here. Uh, this is the item that they got from the phone call and the um, just being in the apartment. Uh, now you can be going to make your way to the second half of the subway. We are not entirely void of RNG coming up. We will be having our first mm -hmm. major enemy encounter, really. 
uh, once you kind of make through our, uh, the subway tracks, which we'll be seeing in just a moment. But as you can see, a lot of the movement in this section is going to be just kind of clean moving. Uh, runner soul seem to be pretty close, which is nice. Correct. And mostly it's uh, camera movement. Uh, something that it was discovered a, a few years ago is that it's better to actually move the camera uh, rather than uh, moving uh, Henry's. Uh, I'd say movement, just in general, just move the camera rather than move him. Uh, it's faster, um, especially if you play this game on PC, you can notice that the controllers are a little bit winky here, so I, I just prefer that much more. Uh, as well, while we are making way continuously, I do want to mention that for uh, like Sonhole 1, 2, and 3, Sonhole 4 will also be an IGT timer, an in-game timer. Uh, the catch, though, is that cutscenes actually do run uh, the in-game timer. Uh, so while loads will not, uh, our runners will have to do some shenanigans in order to actually um, have pauses of that in-game timer. Correct. So right now we're heading to, like you said, the first RNG part, uh, which is the escalator part. Um, first, I want to see what they're going to be doing here um, because they do need some bullets. I see that Matt is going for them. Uh, so that's probably going to be the only round of bullets. Oh, he missed a trigger there. <laughs> it's fine. And as I see, Sarg as well is going to be uh, yeah. <laughs> getting the second round of bullets. There we go. Both of them kind of miss the the, it's, the door trigger it's there, but it's fine. Oh, okay. Matt got the the dog boost. That's great. Oh, Sark went for it, but it's RNG. Honestly, it's not something about. It, it's not really anything technical. It's Alrighty. it's RNG. Here we go. By the way, we have Matt to kill right now at the elevator. Okay. Uh, he is starting. Um, first one's always gonna be a free one. However, after that, it's gonna be a bit more RNG. Uh, looks like a couple of hits dodge on Matt's side. Zark's making his way up right now. The elevator, Matt's in a safe area. No hits so far. This is good, although there are a few swings that are a bit uh, suboptimal here. Uh, luckily, there have been no hits yet. Another dodge, another dodge. Oh, there is a hit on Zark's oh. side. Luckily, it wasn't a punching it. Oh my god, Matt Gale gets knocked down. Uh, the escalator a little bit more. Uh, you can see they're also kind of buffering a uh, command there. That's going to allow them to kind of uh, move a little bit better with the text, the positive IGT. Uh, looks like Matt Gale's up the escalator. Both runners take about one hit, although Matt Gale's is a little bit more harsh going down. That was tough. I didn't think I'd talk that fast. <laughs> <laughs> that was some football commentary. I loved it. Oh, I had to go fast. So much was happening. <laughs> But it, overall, it was great. It was a little bit rough, but that part is just like that. It's a really um, resettable area, I'd say. Absolutely. So far, it should be fine now. So uh, how about you tell us a little bit about the forest and what we have to expect here? Honestly, forest is mostly lines and maybe trying not to get uh, any damage from the flies that are here. For example, Matt right now is trying to Okay, he got hit once. Oh, that's perfect. He only got uh, hit once. And Sar got once. Perfect. Okay. So that this area is, is kind of tough. Because they can hit you several times and they can actually stop you. Um, but that's there's nothing really you can do about that. So that's purely RNG. Um, and I think that right now uh, we're going to be triggering a cutscene. Uh, so we can get a... Um, we're going to be giving the chocolate then to Jasper, so he can give us a... So we can get our ways to get the key. That's uh, the line right here. So, so far I think that Matt is a little bit ahead, if I'm not mistaken, but not for long. It's a very close race so far. Our runners are neck and neck. Yeah. Uh, I do think that hit on the elevator that knocked Mac, uh, Matt further down uh, definitely did a little bit of equalizing, but so far, about equal. Uh, as well, I know you... Anything uh, can happen here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I know you mentioned the bullet count as well. I know there's a few different strats that runners use uh, based on uh, bullets, and that's mainly going to be happening in the late game. Uh, a lot of resources Correct. as a whole, and we'll see what our runners do with them. Yeah, I think the safest strat would be to grab probably another round of bullets. Uh, but we'll see what they can do. You know, 
third world record holder and the third ver uh, third position. So I think that they can do great. Absolutely. Uh, with, with what they have, but we'll see what they will do. As well, I know uh, two of the big strats here are one. Um, one is you just sort of uh, during the subway two, you end up running down instead of shooting them. But I know some runners do elect to shoot them. I don't know how safe they're going to play it, or if they're using just the bullets during the uh, one of the final bosses. Um, you know, uh, the, the one truth later on in the run. But honestly, it'll be very interesting to see what uh, strats the runners pull out, especially in a race environment. Yeah, on the ideal uh, run, you don't actually use the gun until probably Water Prison 2. Uh, you'll probably see that they will actually uh, put the, the gun on the bolt. So they will not be using it for the, the rest of the run. So they're going to be getting the to key here. That was a great, for both of them, a great trigger. And they'll be heading back to the apartment to actually put the, the key back on the bolt. So yeah, Matt is saving basically everything except the coins and the um, one of the blockers and I think Sark is doing the same. Yeah, this uh, honestly, item management on Silent Hill 4, it's mostly the same for, for everyone. Everyone does the same thing. Uh, this is going to come in uh, especially handy later. Uh, some sections require certain items to be removed. Uh, for instance, right now, if they did not remove that key, I think they endlessly wandered the forest, so they'd just be stuck here. So they must do that uh, as well. When we're going to be returning to the forest later, uh, inventory management is going to be super important. Uh, right now, it does look like Matt and Gale is getting a bit bullied by the dogs. Zarks also does even yeah. like uh, a little bit less. Oh, wait, uh, about equal. You know, it's really interesting, uh, especially with, I don't know how many of you have been watching all of the runs tonight so far. Um, a lot of the races have kind of gone, hey, runner A does really good in this level, and then really bad here. Matt and Zarks are kind of just getting hit equally. <laughs> They're doing equally good and equally bad. Yeah. Like, but that's RNG, uh, You've got honestly. to see that. Um, by the way, uh, right now, uh, Chuleta is a bit of fun for both uh, us and the audience here. Uh, what RNG do you think our runners are going to get for the infamous hospital puzzle? Uh, I believe we have, uh, I, what, 11, 12 rooms per side? Yeah, we have 11 rooms per side. I really wish we can get an L1, R1. I don't know if we will, but I'm going to put my bets down now. I think Zarx is going to whip out an L3, L5, and I think Matt Gale is going to be getting L4, R9. That's going to be my guess. Oh. I'm going to say this out loud and manifest it. I mean, it's something that happens once in your lifetime. I don't think they got an L1R1, but I really wish they could. Oh. It would be really interesting. We'll definitely be seeing that later. I hope so. Okay, so right now we're going to be heading to the water prison. Um, this area has a really interesting skip that will actually save a lot of time if you do it correctly, which is the bob skips. Um, so we have two bulbs on the top, and then we have, I think, our four on the bottom, if I'm not mistaken, yes. that you need to be turning to the right. Uh, you need to skip a cutscene at the correct time in order to um, save the time. If you don't, you'll see the, the cutscenes, and consequentially, you'll lose time. Uh, they're so insane they right are, now. I wanted I to bring that really up. I'm happy you did. <laughs> they are right next to each other right now. And this is good. This is really good. I'm paying attention to them. I'm so sorry. I I don't remember what I was even explaining. They're so we'll insane. We'll be talking a little it's bit really more about it as we get up. Oh, we are getting to the valves. We need to turn six valves in order to position the water tower to let us drop down where we probably need to drop down. That's the gist of it. Um, this is going to be more based on IGT time saves. If it doesn't look like mm -hmm. they might still be in sync, but depending on how this goes, one of our runners can get a significant lead here. Um, it is pretty skill-based and requires you to both activate the valve and pause the game at the same time. Uh, what this will do is this will just kind of prevent cutscenes from happening uh, and that little load that you can see. Um, you can't do it on this one, but they'll be doing it on um, the next ones coming up. And honestly, uh, depending on how many we can get, we can really see the race start to spread here uh, from anywhere. Right now it's been perfectly in sync. All right. And I think 
that the ones that matter a lot are the ones on the top because those um, you are able to actually skip uh, two other cutscenes uh, that will make you lose even more time if you don't uh, do them. So I'm really curious to see what's going to happen on that. Um, okay, so Matt is heading there right now. And let's see. Oh, that's two for Zarks. Oh. Uh, Matt seems to miss the first one. Zarks gets <sighs> both. Uh, let's see. Okay. So that's that's two extra cutscenes for, for Matt. Uh, right now, it looks like Zarks is getting two. Uh, he looks like he got two out of the four black wow. ones. Uh, Matt seems to be getting also two, I believe. So you'll see now the difference that Matt will actually have to skip two cutscenes. Uh, yes, the uh, the in sync running has uh, finally uh, ceased. However, this run can <laughs> still massively change as we go. Uh, that is a very difficult trick to land, and you have to hit six of them. So. Yeah, we have a lot of RNT instances, but no way, so it's fine. Oh, we actually uh, end up eating a hit on Zarks' size from the Twin Victim Leap. Uh, from the look of it, I think it may have actually been a leech on the ground. I'm actually not sure how he uh, got hit there. I think it was the leech. Yeah, I think it was the leech, yeah. And here he has to grab the, the third plot cord, and the code will be the code, actually the number of our apartment, which is 0302. Funny enough, the only not RNG thing this game has are the codes, <laughs> so that's actually good for them. So the codes will be the same regardless how many times you you reset. All right, we're now entering uh, uh, Building World, I believe this one is titled. Yeah. Um, right now, they're heading towards a bar which is mostly um, I think it's just lines. There is a skip here that was discovered uh, not long ago, but it's mostly just doing the correct lines. Definitely a bit of a chill point before we get to um, some of the really rough sections, because I know um, yeah. definitely getting... Either, uh, the apartment's not too bad, luckily, but we'll be seeing an interesting skip there, but I know hospitals where the games are really going to be amping up. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think even apartments is probably more um, movement based. Yes. So that's going to be tough and probably. We also do get to see a bit. We'll of see the, what's uh, going to be happening. It looks like they don't go for the ammo in that room for Sarks, at least. Uh, not grabbing the ammo in that room. However, Matt Gale is grabbing the ammo in this room. We have two different strats yeah, here. Uh, Matt safe. is playing it a little <laughs> bit safer. We'll have to see what exactly he wants to do here. Uh, <laughs> it should be interesting, however. Uh, while um, the while the audience will not be able to hear uh, some of our runners, uh, we are able to hear a bit here. Uh, Matt is going for the Saber Strat, hoping that luck is not going to be much of a factor, while Zarks is going for the YOLO Strat. He's going to be going for much riskier stuff. And honestly, <laughs> right now, I want you to pay attention because this might pay off. This could be the case. If we get a bad one truth, this might be the thing that changes it. <laughs> that is correct. I mean, it, uh, <laughs> they, they just shushed him. They did, they did. They, it's it could be though. beneficial, but... <laughs> Don't jinx it. Oh, we'll, be, we'll be good, we'll be good. I uh, I have jinxed a few <laughs> runners before, so... Maybe we can get another PV. Maybe. We don't know. Uh, there's been uh, one PV during the event so far, weirdly enough. I hope so, I hope so. Or maybe a world record. We'll never know. I mean, depending on how that hospital goes. Oh, okay. Sark actually got only one hit there. If I'm not mistaken. Oh, you got two. Okay, he got two. Looks My like mistake. Two. And so it's two, two for Matt and two for Sark. That's perfect. They're equal. Uh, another minor factor early that I should mention is that you may notice that you have their health in the top left. In the early game, health's actually not that risky. Uh, every time you are in the room, although they're barely in the room because they're going so fast, 
um, that's actually going to be healing them just a little bit, and it does make the early game a little bit less risky you're taking hits there, although our runners aren't going to be taking too many. Uh, but late game, uh, depending on how that goes, the room stops healing, so we do have to be a bit careful. Uh, as well, Zark is inputting the code, we're going to be hitting our first of the skips. Uh, Chula, would you like to break down how this might work? Uh, so whenever you hear um, a scream, you have to one press the correct. <laughs> that's it. You have to press the item um, button, and that would actually let you take control of Henry. Oh, uh, so two for two. whenever you hear the scream, Ooh. yeah, they both got him. Perfect. And let's see. Uh, they also do have to move without being able to see. Both runners execute that greatly. Uh, both of them landed that, and that's going to be a nice time save. It makes sure the gap doesn't widen at all during this section. Um, pretty great movement. Hopefully the ghost won't be too mean. There's minor damage you can take here randomly, but it seems like our runners are running up just fine. Yeah, I think they're very in sync. I think Matt uh, took a bit, a bit of time to actually put the code in, so they could be really in sync. They here. could be. Uh, once again, I do want to mention that certain things are not timed on IGT, such as code inputs. Uh, same with a lot of item pickups, so if they seem to linger there, don't worry. Uh, the run's not over until we're on that final <laughs> screen and we see both times. Anything can happen. Correct. So this is the end of the building world, and we are heading to the apartment. Looks like another one, Captain. All right, uh, so now we are in the uh, the apartment. Uh, the apartment is going to be um, kind of the last of the normal world, so to speak. Uh, for those of you who are unaware of Silent Hill 4, maybe you loosely know this game. Silent Hill 4 is one of the weirdest ones because this is one of the only games that's really an escort game in the Silent Hill franchise. Uh, we aren't going to be seeing it quite yet, but we will be seeing a minor strat where they talk to Walter early uh, by getting rid of him on the stairs. That's going to allow runners to take a better line running back up later throughout the level. He'll start to vanish. Uh, as well, just talking about more tech, you may have noticed neither one of our runners has equipped a weapon. Uh, the reason why is this is going to allow them to bypass some uh, enemy combat sections that will normally block items. Uh, we're going to be having a fridge in a moment with a bunch of uh, little leeches around them. Uh, by not having a weapon equipped, they can go into battle, and that's going to allow them to just sort of avoid the animation. Uh, we're going to be having, looks like Zarks get here first. Mm-hmm. And let's see how this yeah, there's no goes. need to get in combat here. Yep. And here we go for our pickup. Let's see how it goes. Uh, quick uh, little load ins, which is nice. And you can see that Zarx is just able to grab the torn red paper without any issue with a minor slug hit. Uh, next we have um, Matt to go on the same. This is really close even still. Yeah. We do see a minor hit. A um, couple of them. Uh, but we are still doing pretty good while we make our way back up the stairs, back to the room. I think we're having some technical. I think we're having some technical problems with Matt. Oh no! <laughs> Matt just said that one of the keys of his keyboard just broke. How did you? How did he break <laughs> his keyboard? <laughs> I don't know. High high the impact speed hard. running. That's what it is right now. It's Silent Hill 4 RNG. I hope it, uh, yeah, the RNG really hits in the real world too. Yeah. All right, uh, we have Zarks getting back to the room, going to get the key, uh, and then uh, they will be entering the hospital. Once again, this is where the run will be uh, likely turning. Uh, there's no way that the runners are going you know, If they keep equal RNG, that's going to be kind of amazing. I don't think they will, given how this game goes. 11 rooms per side, 22, and they need two. I'm sure it's just someone knows numbers here. It's, imagine. It's going to be what? Imagine. <laughs> imagine. Hey, I'm saying it again. I think uh, Zark's going to get L3, L5. Ma uh, Matt Gale is going to be getting L4, R9. That is my guess right now. Yeah, I think we're going to have a terrible RNG. This game... Terrible? It's really not forgiven. Uh, yeah, it's not forgiven. Well, both runners will be coming up on it. And uh, yeah, let's just see how this goes. Uh, if you are watching this currently and would like to join some of the fun, feel free to spam your favorite cheer emotes or good luck, bless, whatever you might have to bring these runners luck. It's about to get rough. Yeah. Oh, okay, so I got the red paper there. Oh. Luckily, it doesn't That's lose bad luck. too much time. Oh, bad luck, though. 
No, it's not, but it's just positioning, but it's very unfortunate. And looks like we are mostly equalized, actually. Although the IGT might still be <laughs> a little bit different. Okay, let's see how they do there. Alrighty. Paletta, I will let you do the honors of commentating the rooms here if you would like to. Perfect. Okay, so there's going to be a cutscene here, probably... Um, yeah, they're going to skip it, obviously. And they're going to be heading to the Doom room. <laughs> One of the Doom rooms, I'd say. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's not the, the correct Doom room, but it's one of them. So let's start with L1. Not for them. R1. <gasps> nope. R2. No. L2. Oh. Okay, L2 for my... L3. R3. Uh -oh. R... Uh-oh. Zerks really needs to find one of the two rooms to catch up right now. This is getting intense. We have, oh, uh, right now it's one <laughs> oh, of them. This is oh so my tough. God. They're going deep in here. <laughs> You're right. So this is terrible. Oh, my God. <laughs> Zerks still has not found either of the rooms. And uh, Matt Gale's almost at the end. Literally oh, the second to last room from Matt Gale, all the way in the back. Zark still make this work. Uh, you may notice every time they're entering a room, they're pausing it. Oh my god, Zark still has not found the room Matt Gale is This taking. is some awful RNG. It is. This is terrible. Commentator's curse. Oh my god, Zark's is still looking. Is it the last two? Oh. Uh, no. Oh my god, they're the last two. Wait, are they? Wait, he missed one? Oh, he found he found Eileen earlier. It was locked. He found it. Oh, he found Eileen. Okay, okay. I saw all the text is wild. Uh, Matt Gale has taken a uh, pretty nice lead here, unless there's some IGT. Uh, it is pretty wild right now how that race has shifted. Both of them all the way down to the end of the hallway. Uh, I guess this is not going to be a baby no. for neither of them. Uh, there's also a lot more that can go oh. wrong. Uh, Eileen is more susceptible to damage of these long, long hallways. And uh, even still, depending on how Eileen goes, depending on how more RNG goes, there's going to be so much that can go wrong right now. Which I hope it gets starts going right. Yeah, hopefully. I'm just gonna so now it starts uh, the, the score mission, which is still really tough. Yeah. Um, as well, earlier we asked, might, might a rubber PB during this? It is very unlikely. That is uh, the worst RNG that you could have imaginable, essentially. Okay, Matt is already at the end of the hospital world. Uh, this is a very tricky staircase. Uh, uh, you can actually get locked there. All right, Matt is out of the hospital. That was a pretty good Eileen escort to the bottom. Um, as well, we're going to be having these little movements that Matt will be doing on his end to keep Eileen moving. Uh, while he's on the staircase, let's see how Zarks is going to be doing in the same hallway. Um, this is one of the death hallways. Uh, he's going to be moving Eileen in a very particular way to avoid the nurses here. We do eat a bit of a hit, but luckily it is on him and not on Eileen. Let's see. Looks okay so far. Good. That was actually a really good secondary uh, part of yeah. that. Uh, both of the runners are now on the staircase, and you may notice on uh, Matt Gale's side right now, uh, he's moving a particular way to keep Eileen moving as fast as he can. Uh, there's going to be a series of running straight down the stairs, but also running into the wall to make sure to slow down and adjust Eileen. Uh, a lot of micro adjustments from both runners, and we're going to see more. Correct. Eileen tends to walk towards you in a straight line, so whenever there's something on her way, she would actually stop for a minute and readjust herself, so it's better just to run like that. I do want to mention, though, that uh, as you all remember, uh, Zarks did get some IGT time saves earlier in the run. Those still can mm -hmm. make some difference up. It might still be closer than it might look right now. Correct. So in this part of the run, you are mostly trying to get Eileen the, uh, honestly, the safest place possible. Um, this area, it's really tough because there's Cynthia. Uh, around and she can actually do a lot of damage to her uh, so it's going to be really tough for both of them and they're probably going to go with the safe strat or the safest to make sure that she doesn't get as much damage 
Uh, as well, on Zark's screen right now, you may have noticed he was able to enter the hole that is using the same strategy earlier that we saw with leeches, and uh, I believe that's the last one, so we might be able to start seeing some weapons in due time. Not just yep. yet, but I believe when we get back to the forest world, we'll finally equip our first weapon of the game. Correct. Uh, and now they are... Okay, there's Cynthia here, so what they have to do right now is you have to wait just a few seconds to make sure that actually Cynthia gets to the portal and then uh, go down the stairs. So that's what Matt just did, and now we're going to do. Uh, we're going to see the same uh, with Sark. Let's see. He's actually not going to be waiting that much. All right. Hopefully they got it. Um, as Trilla mentioned, the strategy is going to allow the runners later to not have Eileen get too damaged. Hopefully, uh, Axor is a despawn if I remember correctly. Yeah. And as well, Chaletta, do you remember uh, remember our favorite part, the elevator from earlier? Yeah. Uh, we fun. have to go back again. <laughs> We have to do that again, and not only uh, ourselves, but Eileen as well. Tell me they're doing it twice once again. Yeah. So uh, that's actually something that the game has, that you have to do all the levels again, but it's courting Eileen. So that's the, the toughest part. And here it's actually a really resettable area, because if you get Eileen to a certain uh, damage level, like she's... Um, any like a, a really bad health condition she will actually slow you down um so i hope <laughs> they don't get uh any damage from uh, what we can either tell, from her uh I, I know matt's going to be good here he probably did the despawn zarx is yellowing it uh probably trying to make up some of that earlier time a uh, very bold strap but it might save some time depending on how uh how it plays off <laughs> Uh, anyway, right now we have Matt Gale yeah. uh, coming up to the elevator. Uh, this round is slightly easier than the first one. I think there's just less spawns as a whole. First one's always going to be a dodge, as you can see here. Uh, continuing to run up this... Oh, I said elevator. It's an escalator. It's the same thing. Oh, there's a hit. Escalator. Luckily, it's not a huge hit. It's a minor hit. Um, with these fences is a safe part. Zarx is coming up to the same escalator. Uh, Matt gets a dodge right there. All right, let's see. Uh, another dodge from Matt. Uh, Zark's gonna be going for that first free dodge. Um, Matt looks to be about done with the escalator, and let's focus on Zark's for a moment here. As we can see, that is a dodge. Pretty nice and safe. Uh, overheads are nice. Wide swings are bad. A wide swing lets you launch down that escalator, mm -hmm. as we saw earlier. Uh, still looking pretty good to get a wide swing, but it is a nice dodge. And... A bit of a slow hit on that fourth one there, but it is a dodge nonetheless. Zarx makes it through without a hit. That's great. The ones that truly matter and the ones that will pop, uh, probably be the toughest are the ones when you go down with Eileen. Those can be really rough, uh, especially if they hit Eileen. Uh, but uh, hopefully they'll do it great. Uh, looks like our runners seem to be doing uh, pretty good right now. Um, Matt Gale has obtained the key. Uh, this is the coin we had earlier. We had to wash it, get rid of all our inventory. Uh, you may have also noticed the coins earlier using the subway are gone. Uh, partway through, they're able to grab a bus ticket, which utilizes the same job. It looks like Matt has Eileen waiting in the back there, getting her back right now. Um, That's so lucky. Zarks might be able to get some back right now, depending on where Eileen might be. Maybe. Eileen is close. Uh, that may have just been the equalizer in all honesty. Oh, she's there. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's insane right now. Zarks again. has managed to come back from that yellow <laughs> Eileen, but the damage will pay the price. I can't imagine Matt's Eileen right now is too damaged, but Zark, we're going to see at the end of this level, uh, she's going to start having the... Uh, what is it, the curse on her? The, the damage? You, you'll see it. Um, also, we have this escalator. Both runners are yellowing it. There's going to be running down. Some runners kill these swingers. Um, we are not. There's going to be running past because Eileen will follow when you make it down. Uh, Matt does eat a hit right there. Zarks is uh, successfully running down. Uh, some awkward swings. That is a second <laughs> hit on that one. This is not being some nice RNG. Uh, I think it's the dodge this time. Uh, Zarks is successfully making his way down past the fence. Another dodge based on Matt and Zarks right there. And Zark should be hitting the bottom in a moment. 
Uh, Matt is now on the fence. Hell moment to chill. One more dodge from Zarks, and that is good to go. He'll be approaching the final train. We'll talk about that one more moment. Uh, Matt is making his way down this escalator. There's still a lot to come up. As well, Zarks has to avoid Cynthia. Cynthia is showing up right at the end here. Matt gets another dodge. And let's hope Eileen will behave, because Eileen can be a massive issue if she freezes in this train cart. Uh, it's probably one of the most intense parts of the run. Uh, we get the train cart moved. Eileen is right there for Zarks. Cynthia is away. That is good for Zarks. Matt Gale's turn. Repositioning. Repositions. Good to go. Uh, Cynthia's... Cynthia has uh, avoided the hit. If Eileen makes it, we are back on track. There's Eileen, and we are out of the subway. Good. That was just a rough, really rough escalator for both of them. Oh, yeah. Uh, it looks like Eileen's not too damaged on either side either, so that's going to be pretty good for our runners. Yeah, you can visually see how damaged uh, she is uh, once you uh, finish the level, once you... Uh, you're in, on this area. Uh, for both of them, it seems like it's equal. So same thing with the hospital uh, area. They just have to go down until the, they find another door. And we'll, we'll be going back to uh, the forest world. Okay, so Matt right now got a, <laughs> a bit of an issue with Eileen. Yeah. That truly really depends on how much damage she got. That's very unlucky. And right now, what we're going to be doing, um, we're going to be seeing is that they will have to get five doll parts, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Uh, and this is where the inventory management really uh, matters. Um, this was, uh, I think it was Funky Orange that um, perfected this. Uh, you should be uh, having only two slots um, of inventory. You know, you should actually you should be having eight free slots whenever you enter the forest area in order to get all the uh, necessary items on this part. As well as some oddities for one, the game kind of wants you to like wrap the torch in gasoline, but weirdly enough, you don't have to do that. You can just use the torch normally. Uh, in addition, you may see some weird movements from our runners. They might be running into certain doors long enough. That's to wait for Eileen. They're going to pick up the map, make sure they're finding Eileen, and that's going to let them um, move through nicely. But they will leave her behind that main area while they get the items. Correct. It's it's very unlucky if she follows you, but she actually can follow you here. Ooh, that's not good, um, is it? Yeah. She'll get a bunch of damage. Uh, Walter is around. He can shoot you. That's... Not really good, actually. I think Matt either got hit there by Walter or by a, oh, it was the a fly, the fly, but yeah, it's really, really unlucky uh, to get shot by him. Yeah, uh, the flies are also pretty annoying. They kind of just swarm you and they don't do a lot of damage, but they can lead to a lot of damage with those Walter hits, as you mentioned. Yeah, actually, here's where you get the most damage, probably because of the flies and, and Walter. You could grab some probably energy drinks. You do have a, a medical kit around, but the ideal run is to not pick them yet. Now, the way Matt's been playing, they don't need it, though. I do think he might go for one. He's currently in the yellow health. Uh, it sounds like he will be yeah. taking it. Yep. Um, we're about to get cutscene. Oh, this cutscene actually doesn't count your really? in game time. Yeah, it doesn't. Whenever they're presenting, that's a fun fact that maybe I always skip, uh, but whenever they're presenting like the ghosts, for example, Cynthia, Jasper, those uh, cutscenes do not count your IGT. That's such a weird example of like, here's the one that doesn't do it. Yeah. But those are the only cutscenes, I believe, that don't. Or, uh, and I think that on One Truth, uh, that one doesn't. Makes sense. It's a, a little uh, breath <laughs> for them, a breath taker for them. All right, we're almost done with the full backtrack and then the next two pickups will be much faster. Uh, both runners making it through pretty nicely. This is just your standard bread and butter Silent Hill speedrunning, which honestly, at this point, I feel like I should have mentioned this hours ago. You may notice in a lot of these games, uh, where is the time saved? It's sort of a lot of the optimal angles per room. Good movement is really rewarded in this franchise. Um, this is going back to things like the camera movement in this game, as Chuleta mentioned. Uh, it's going to be taking the right lines in certain hallways. Uh, really, just everything can do that, and it really does add up, as you'll be able to see. Yeah, 
it truly does. And just try not to get uh, <laughs> locked there by any enemies. <laughs> but they should be able to grab the last two uh, remaining doll pieces. I'm interested to see if Zarx goes for a safety health. I don't think he needs it. Uh, currently a uh, little bit ahead here and on good health. Uh, some of the risky strats I don't think have so either. paid off. I think you're right. I don't think he's going to get it. If, if he would, I probably think he would do it on the last uh, the last part before the one truth, where you get a lot right. of damage from the flies whenever you're going down. But if not, honestly, he doesn't need it. I don't think he does. Uh, luckily, though, we both runners should be staying alive. Also, I don't actually know if they're going to be using the pickaxe or not, but we will be seeing. Oh, yeah. They definitely will. All righty. Uh, for wall tray, it's a necessary item. If you miss it, it's a run reset immediately. It's a run killer. Uh, it's one of the uh, weapons that has the most uh, damage input. Uh, so that's what we use for Walter uh, final boss fight. And you'll see it yeah. in a bit. It's a, it's a fun strat. It definitely is. Uh, it also really helps, especially with one of the rooms coming up. If it goes really bad, having the pickaxe, I do know, is really nice for the invulnerability and the big hits you can get on a large mob. Uh, we all know what's coming up. Uh, as you may have noticed, uh, <laughs> some of these worlds are repeating. We had subway, we had forest. Water prison is coming back in a moment, and the water prison can be the death of a runner even. It is really risky. Hopefully won't be seeing many issues, but... You never know. They do have some backup uh, health kits. Not health kits, but actually... Um, the health drinks. The drinks? Yeah, health drinks. They do have... Probably Matt is going to go for it. Uh, but we'll see. I would grab one just in case. Uh, in the event a runner does die, they will be allowed to continue, but the victory will be going to whoever can finish with, let's say, less deaths. I don't think either one will, but you never know this game. Yeah, that's good to know, though. I'm gonna put actually. that there now. <laughs> um, in the Silent Hill franchise as well, it can be quite risky uh, eating deaths, uh, as these games are based on IGT. Dying actually does kind of mess with that. So that's why we're putting that rule in place right now, just to be sure. Uh, many of the other games didn't have this issue. This game could. Yeah, and fun fact about Silent Hill 4 is that whenever you continue the game, and you, I mean, you die and continue, the game actually gets easier. So there is a category for um, for that, that you actually quit and continue several times on the intro, and it makes the game way easier. All right, uh, part one of the water prison. Uh, you may have noticed our runners are just kind of running down the big building here. Uh, is there a reason why for this, Juleta? I I think that there isn't really a said strat on this. Everyone does whatever they feel like it could work. Um, because of the moths there, uh, they can actually slow Eileen down. Uh, but there isn't really a set strat. Uh, you can lose time even if you do it perfectly. Uh, looks like. This is but what they're trying to do is they're, they're trying to get Eileen to run as fast as she can all the way down, and they're trying to trigger the the moth to actually hit Henry instead of Eileen, uh, so she doesn't stop on her way. All right, Eileen has come around for Matt Gale. Uh, Zarks is almost at the door, from what I can tell. Uh, hopefully Eileen will keep moving. Yeah. Uh, right now, uh, Zark's going to be doing a little trick. Uh, he'll be bumping Eileen and then going out the door. This will allow him to keep Eileen out of the room nice and safe while he goes back to where we ended the water prison early. Um, right now, while he's doing that, uh, Matt Gale is finishing up the Eileen section here and will be dropping off Eileen in the same manner. Goes to the corner, bumps her, and now going back up. Wait a minute. All right, good, good. Looks a little bit close on oh. that one. Yeah. That's weird for Actually, second. if you, if you, yeah, if you miss that trigger and you wait a little bit, you can actually uh, get Eileen to follow you back. Yeah. So right now what uh, Sark is doing is he's going to be getting a shirt, a prisoner shirt, 
that actually has a, a message there and that would actually um, help you go through the next area. Let me see. Okay, he's going for the nutrition drink just in case. That's that's smart. This is going to be the next area is going to be really tough. I'm pretty sure so they heard us talking about that twin victim hallway, and yeah. uh, they thought, "Hey, maybe maybe I grab the uh, maybe I grab the drink." I put some pressure on them. Well, I mean that, that I hallway. Think it's smart. I've seen many a runners die to that hallway. It's a risky hallway. It is. It definitely is. Okay, they're both catching up, actually. They're not really that far away from It's still a very close other. race, and uh, we have plenty of elements still waiting for us to see how this will go. Uh, you see Zark's okay. over on the... Oh, uh, go ahead. No, no, that's very interesting that he actually left the um, the torch and got the the tube, I think it is. the. Okay, Matt is doing it the same. There's no set strat for that, but... It's really interesting. All right. Uh, both runners need to make sure to grab every item that they grabbed earlier. Not all of them, all of them, but like the items they prepared for, uh, including the silver bullet. Zark loads it on the left, getting ready for this, uh, we'll say, boss fight. It is a boss fight, but it's going to be pretty trivial. Uh, one shot, one kill. Uh, what's going to happen is then they put the sword in. Zark is now good. Uh, you may notice there's a minor skip. Whenever they get hit, they're actually going to be trying to reload the gun. That's going to animation cancel. And also, they won't eat the hits because then Eileen won't eat the hits. Uh, Matt Gale is now coming up on the boss. It's going to be a very easy shot. Good job. And then the sword stab. But this isn't the actual boss fight. It's kind of like how you have the weak boss and then the strong boss. Um, the strong boss is going to be the main victim hallway. Uh, as well, Chilla mentioned that pipe. That pipe is doing work on the tentacles. Correct. And maybe uh, I skipped that part, but actually whenever they um, try to, to hit... Um, Andrew, um, they do a, a quick strat that they actually use the card there, so they skip an animation and they actually hit him immediately. Uh, that's a little bit of a time save, but it's ideal. Uh. All right, uh, there's gonna be some fast commentary once again. We've been having these during these <laughs> sections. I am going to get ready. And this is the twin victim hallway. Zarks is running in. It is a hallway full of twin victims. Eileen needs to pass. You need to pass. Uh, Zarks leads in with a nice right bank, uh, getting the twin victims on him and not Eileen. They seem to be following, but where is Eileen? Eileen is not around. The twin victims are hitting, and Eileen is already found. Mad Gale is coming up the same hallway right now. There's Eileen for Zarks almost at the end. And Zarx is out. Matt Gale takes that bank, lures the twin victims in. They are following him dead on. Eileen needs to hurry up or else Matt might be in danger. Where is Eileen? There's Eileen and both are out. Oh, okay. That was rough. That is a room. <laughs> I think it was very smart from them to, to actually get the nutrition drink. Yes. Yes, I'm on, glad on, that they third. took it. Uh, right now, Zarks is looking really low health. Uh, that is about half. Not, not not super low right now. They're not in the yellow health. However, you can see Matt Gale has near a full health bar. Uh, Chuleta mentioned earlier, we're not going to be getting more health until we get to the, uh, what, the, the end of the building world? Correct. And that leads yeah. to the and boss fight. Yeah, and I think it's, it should be enough. Yeah, it should be enough. Um, if I'm not mistaken, hopefully they won't get many hits from any dogs or anything, but I think it should be enough for them. Let's see. Uh, so right now they're going to be doing a bit of a trick where they're going to be leaving Eileen on a safe area uh, where you actually are not supposed to leave her there. Um, she's not supposed to be there alone, but you can actually do it and you can skip a full puzzle by doing that. Uh, the subway gets much, much shorter as a result, and uh, you'll see uh, how the strat works out. Uh, oh no, there's Cynthia. Don't worry, our runners are safe. They're literally just going to be waiting right here uh, for the Eileen retrieval. Yep, so they just skipped about 10 minutes, 15 minutes of just puzzles. And it looks like the wheelchair room is being kind. Although, where's Eileen? I don't. Where's Eileen for Zarks? Eileen is. Where is she? Where did she? Oh, there she is. Oh my God, that was a mean Eileen. Let's see how Matt's scales go. Another mean Eileen. I, I don't see her either. Okay. Yeah. 
another minor skip coming up right now. They're going to be listening to the sound of the concrete, not the metal. Uh, by doing so, they can actually avoid having to take Eileen uh, all the way around. Uh, looks like Zark skits it. It is now Matt Gale's turn. And it looks like he gets it, I think. Mm, looks good. Yeah. It was rather, I think he does rather a visual cue than a sound cue there. He was able to see Eileen before. All right, so this is what we talked about earlier. Uh, these flies, uh, while they don't do a lot of damage, are pretty annoying and it can stack. Uh, you have to make sure Eileen yeah. gets down the whole area. Uh, as well, that damage is going to add up because we're going to be having the one truth. Uh, as you can see right now, Zark has 24 bullets, while Matt Gale has 36. Uh, if RNG goes bad, Matt Gale will be prepared, so let's hope Zark's will benefit here. Yeah. Wait. I mean, with his health already. Yep, uh, and much more dire straits. <laughs> Hopefully, he will be doing fine. So this, this part is pretty, pretty straightforward. He, they just need to go down the ladder. All right, uh, Chuleta, would you like to break down the one truth for our runners and the audience? Uh, yes, so the one truth is a boss where you have to um, basically find the truth one. <laughs> um, there are uh, in total 12 wallmen, uh, two on the, on the door and two on the exit door. And then you have four on the... Um, on the walls. Uh, whenever you hit the correct one, all oh. of them get damaged. Oh my god, Zark's <laughs> our first try one truth. That's insane. Uh, looks like it's still going. Matt Gale going for the same strat right now. Let's see if it pays off. This might be the... Oh my god! Double first try one truth. It's about <laughs> time our runners had some good RNG here. This is an we did a jinx even it. race. This is so evil. Oh, it sounds really, really spicy. You know, either way, runners are super close. Double first try, one truth. I may be wondering where does it lead now? We're going to nowhere, the apartment world round two. Uh, this is mostly going to be skill based. I think most of the RNG is gone, barring maybe a bit of the Walter fight, depending on how he moves. Uh, it's just going to come down to runner skill right now. It can be anyone's game. Yep, that is correct. Uh, as well, we'll be returning back to the original room on our final one of the staircases. Luckily, uh, in terms of runner health, it doesn't matter too much. Although, Matt Gale is getting a slight wow. curse. Uh, we haven't talked about this much yet, but curses are when Eileen chooses just to utter words and not move. Uh, the only way to avoid it is either wait it out or hit her. Uh, unfortunately, though, um, one did happen, but luckily it seems shorter. Yeah, her, her damage, it seems like her health hits in that relatively good condition because uh the mo the more damage she actually gets the worse the curses are so it seems like it's just a, a normal normal health what a run so far though like this has been a very close race i do just want to give props to both the runners right now as we're going into our uh finale area uh the wild uh, hospital rng that one truth really everything about this run has been uh very high octane gaming So they're getting uh, the notes here in order to trigger a cutscene. There's going to be Joseph. That uh, cutscene needs to be skippable. Uh, to need skip, sorry. And they're going to be getting a pickaxe, the pickaxe of hope, I believe it's called. Um, and that would actually open a hole to your apartment, to the real apartment, not this version of the apartment. And you will finally be free for now. Uh, one of the upsides as well is uh, in the next section, it's pretty uh, pretty lenient. Uh, the enemies aren't too brutal, and even if they are, they get a free heal right before the final boss. Uh, the run's not quite over yet. We still have to go through nowhere, but it is good to know that also they don't have to deal with Eileen anymore. Eileen is now no longer a problem. It's just going to be pure movement and enemy dodging. Yes, it's, it doesn't really matter whether you save her or not, so at this point you can just leave her. Um, and you will also see that they're trying to actually equip the pickaxe on some of the doors. Um, it's better to actually uh, equip them here 
instead of actually wasting some time. Oh, Matt is having some, a bit of an issue with one of the twin victims. Okay. Uh, <laughs> he actually forgot the route there. It looks like Zark's got that equip that you were talking about. Oh, uh, yeah. They actually need to equip the, uh, the pickaxe uh, to save a little bit of time. It's just a little bit of a strat. Uh, because like I mentioned previously, uh, for Walter, you actually have to use the, the pickaxe. It's, I believe it's two full charged uh, hits and then five or six, depending on the RNG. Um, five or four, sorry. Right. Thank you. Five or four um, normal, normal hits. As well. Don't you think that uh, the speedrunning tricks are done? We do have a special trick for the final boss. Uh, right now we are just talking to the Walters so we can hear dad speeches being like six dads is what we can call them. Um, <laughs> but the... Uh, the final boss is going to be having a unique strat that will save IGT and will allow runners to gain a little bit more movement, uh, depending on how that goes. I believe there's going to be eight of them to hit, so we can still have some time made up right now. And once again, even with any gaps, I do want to mention that this is an in-game time-based game. Certain things can be changing. I do know we had uh, one cutscene watch, uh, there's some uh, tricks that were different, and we're not going to know until we see that end. We're saving the best for last, definitely. Absolutely. So Matt is finishing talking with the dads, and I believe that Sark already triggered the cutscene. If not, he is on his way to do so. There, he triggered it. Perfect. And now he's going to be getting the umbilical cord uh, that is going to be used for the final boss. All right, uh, here's the grand return on Zarx's half. Uh, Matt Gale starting the first of the cutscenes that you uh, mentioned and getting the uh, intestine, right? <laughs> I don't think it's, it's, it's an umbilical cord. Umbilical cord, okay, I was like, all right, I don't remember the exact, <laughs> I know it's a body part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's the umbilical cord. All right, that makes more sense. I don't know why I thought intestine. <laughs> it, I, I had not very much sleep. It's fair. Let's uh, see like we get a little boost in the twin victim and the crawlers there. Oh, but we get a pipe. Yeah, hit. you can actually get it. Oh. So this part is pretty straightforward. They're just going back. They're doing the same route, but backwards and heading to the apartment. Okay, Matt was able to actually not get hit by one of the patients. And Sark, it's almost on the end of the level. You don't really get hit here, so it doesn't matter. And if they do, like we said, uh, the damage won't carry over. They'll get a full heal going into it. The final boss. All right, we're starting on Zark's. This is the Walter Sullivan fight. Uh, Mac will be joining shortly. Um, here we go. So, there are, Good luck. <laughs> we have a few things to do here. Part one, they need to use that umbilical cord on the boss. Uh, that's going to allow us to get the spears and start to do damage. Uh, we have the first usage. Um, looks like Zarks is going to the right, and he is doing the strat by using the bus ticket or an item and grabbing at the same time. You see, he does this little <laughs> slide. So, he's two for two um, and three for three. Matt Gill is now approaching the boss and starting the same. And with Zarks, he got all four of the spears. He is taking them over to Walter. Oh, Let's see Matt Gill. Matt Gill misses the first one, but gets it anyway afterward. Luckily, there's not too much time loss there. Uh, has the second spear. Uh, uh, Zarks is now putting them in. All right, that's three for three. You gotta be careful with Walter there. He can actually um, spawn like right in front of you. Oh yeah. All right, Zarks is on round two. Matt's been the spears. One is missed. So far, we are four for five on Zarks. Uh, all right, dodges the Walter hit with the boost. Uh, right now we are uh, six for seven and one more for Zarks, seven for eight. Uh, let's see how Matt does on the spear grabs while uh, Zarks putting them in. There's uh, one for four. Uh, two for four. He's gonna be waiting. Three for four. Perfect and positioning. Matt Gill gets all of them. Let's see. The Walter is in a great spot for nice. Zarks. We're gonna be getting ready for the fight. A Walter needs to follow. Walter zooms. Okay. We're now gonna be getting these pickaxe hits. As you can see, we do eat a bit of a hit on uh, Matt Gill's side for Walter. Uh, while Walter is waiting to get up, uh, Zarks is charging that pickaxe hits. Uh, 
Let's see. We get a little spin. Luckily, Zarks dodges the spin. Uh, we can just jump back. Let's see. Oh, that's real unfortunate. Getting, he actually moved. Yeah, we're getting some gunshots. All right, Matt and Gale is getting ready on the same hit. Zarks gets his second one of the big swings. Uh, Matt Gale gets a big swing. Uh, Time is going to come up when we hear the scream, but we're not going to categor uh, categorize it until we see that end screen. Let's see what we get. This is so tough. <laughs> Anyone's game. All right, Zarks is taking him down. Let's see how Matt Gale finishes it. up. I don't know who's going to win. This is really close. All right, uh, we're going to wait one moment. Uh, Matt Gale has now killed Walter Sullivan. I think Team Robbie might take this one, but we don't know until we see it. Let us see. Uh, let's pull out those end screens, and then we'll talk with the runners once we see him. We have a 4704 on Zarks. That's amazing. That's actually an insane time. That is really good. And a 4734 on Matt Gale. Uh, Zarks Team Robbie takes this round. GG. Uh, let's great. bring our runners back in here. Let's talk to them. We have a lot of <sighs> questions for them, because my god. All right. Oof. Zarks, we're going to start with you over here, all right? Okay. Hey. Zarks, how do you feel uh -huh. about the race? How do you feel about that hospital RNG that sent hey. you all the way to the back? It was, it was awful. <laughs> it was unforgiven. But you can already expect that thing coming from the hospital. Actually, one of the late PVs I had was similar to that, and I ended up with a 4630. So I was kind of confident I can, might pull something out of that. But nah, I, w when I heard what, that Matt was already out of the hospital, I, I was just like, oh no, okay, it's oh, over. Oh yeah, like, it was, it, <laughs> you both go yeah, it was close. terrible, aren't you? <laughs> I want to mention as well, before I go to Matt here, but the same hospital, both of you were launched all the way back to the 11th room. You were all the way launched the last one. Uh, the difference was though, Matt ended up getting Jesus. key first. Uh, Matt, uh, on your end, Matt Gale, uh, how do you feel about the race and just in general with some of the RNG that you were dealt? I know early game was pretty rough with that big swing and the hospital even then being as brutal as it was. ¿Cómo te sentís, Matt, con el RNG, en especial el hospital? Que te acostuiste un RNG eh, bastante ¿cómo malo. ¿Cómo me siento? Eh, como anoche. Estuvo buena la run, lástima que el juego está muy salado conmigo. Es como que traigo la mala suerte del R3 para este juego y no sé. Pasó en cosas raras en esta run, cosas que no, usualmente no, no se van a ocurrir. Pero fue, estuvo bueno. He said it was unfortunate. It, it bueno. seems like the, like the RNG he got... Uh, from, ah, sí, from para... Resident Evil 3 yeah, translated yeah. to Silent Hill 4. Saludos para mi viejo y para mi vieja que me están viendo seguramente. I definitely know that feeling. Para viejo, un saludo uh, para... También para mi comunidad que también están ahí, están haciendo el aguante, me están poniendo cebollita que es segundo, pero bueno, <laughs> qué sé yo. <laughs> Definitely. Hay, GGs to both runners. Uh, really quick before we go, Zarks, mm -hmm. uh, on your end, um, where, what do you do for streams yep. and where can people find you if they want to watch more of you? Okay, uh, what do I do? Mostly speedruns for Silent Hill 4. I start to learn the Resident Evil 3 classic as well. And I also like playing horror games plus meme games, like those funny things you you don't find anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> like the Slendy Toys and all those things that you say, like, what's going on here? And also, I have to ask... So, the face. Mm -hmm. Your face is now fixed. I saw yeah. a lot of people talking about your face in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, well, nowadays I use this filter because I notice when I'm, when I'm streaming, I like pay too much attention if I like, a, I have a weird face or something <laughs> because when I get too focused on something, I, I, I tend to, I don't know, get a, Get a very rough face or something. Uh, it was fun. So I decided, like, let's let's turn on the filter and don't get distracted. And it paid off. <laughs> it paid off. Uh, Matt Gale. One thing. Oh, uh, go ahead. Yeah, no, just wanted of to course. say hi to my friends. Gracias a todos los que me vinieron a visitar de mi comunidad, de los de los patos, de los 
perritos que están ahí también de parte de Matt Gael. Saludos a todos y a mi familia también que probablemente estén viendo mis amigos que espero les haya gustado. Un abrazo a todos. Salud. Cheers. That's it. Uh, Matt Gale, on your end, uh, what do you stream? What do you play? And where can people find you? Eh, lo entendí lo que dijo Chuleta, tranqui. Eh, hago mi stream, hago speedrun. De vez en cuando estoy jugando casual últimamente. Pero don't follow my channel because the most people here speak English. My English is bad. But only come here to, to play because it was funny. Ah. Play with my friend Sarks. Eh, y es un saludo para mis viejos que ya man, le estoy hablando como tres veces de que arranqué también eh, para mi comunidad que hicieron el aguante y los pibes que están ahí tirando camanache y todo eso eh, también para la gente que no tiene esto for the people who doesn't know what I'm saying también un saludo igualmente y nada vamos a Argentina que mundial se viene la, se viene la, la copita viejo se viene aguante Messi hello Messi Messi <risa> All right. Uh, gracias. Uh, thank you both very much. Uh, I do want to say, uh, I hope you all enjoyed the Silent Hill 4 race here. Uh, before we kind of go onward, one, there are runners, uh, Zarks and Matt Gale. Please check them out. They did an amazing job. Uh, as well, for the race of the night so far, we have uh, brought the score a little bit closer. Team Robbie has scored it, their first point. While Pyramid Head is still sitting at three. Uh, we still have three more games coming up for you tonight. We have plenty more, and I hope that you'll be enjoying that. Before we do go, though, um, I would like to uh, just, one, say I have, uh, I've been one of your commentators at Dice's Song of Four, and joining me is Chuleta. Chuleta, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at Twitch, uh, Chuleta underscore B. I'll stream not so regularly, but I can speak both English and Spanish, so you're more than welcome. To join in. All right, GGs. We have more games coming up. Also, and uh, I guess I see it in chat already. I think the World Cup has started, so it should be exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, saying messy again. <laughs> That's fun. Anyway, we're going to be setting up for our next race. Don't you go anywhere. We will be right back. All right, everyone, welcome back to King of the Silent Hill, a name we chose based on a pun. I have been one of your hosts, Dicis, and join me is Punchy. Hello, hello. So that run of Silent Hill 4 <laughs> was wild. I love races of that game. It was spicy and pretty good stuff, if I have to say so myself. I'm definitely glad how close it really was. It really, it really showcased a lot of the uh, the highs and lows of, <laughs> of possibilities of Silent Hill Four runs, like Hospital, absolutely dreadful. But then they both got really good one truths, like back to back, and it's First like, try? oh wow! First try for both. That is absolutely true. Uncommon uh, scenes, said, to say the our least. Our next run is going to be a little bit more traditional, although we still have a lot of fun stuff and some new routing that I believe came from a GDU Hoffix, Funny enough. Mm -hmm. uh, we have one more experts uh, joining us for this game, and my co-host, uh, Punchy. Would you like to tell us more about the run coming up, and would you like to introduce you and your co-commentator? Yes. Hi, I'm Punchy again. I'm back to commentate this one. I'll be around. Uh, this will be a run of Silent Hill Origins, or more specifically, Silent Hill Zero, because that's what it's called in the Japanese version, and both of our runners are playing the Japanese version. And joining me for commentating this is Starwin. Say hello. Hello, I'm Starwin. You all know me. I do the Silent Hill games as well. You do the Silent Hill games as well. We've both ran Origins for like a while. Yeah, it for a, like a while. <laughs> yeah, there was there was indeed new routing found, uh, as Ignatius has said, because he had me do his own hotfix show, speedruns from the crypt, a while ago, and then I found out by accident that picking up a certain weapon changes the item layout entirely to something more favorable. <laughs> it's like, so I'm, a, I'm assuming just more energy drinks. That seems yeah, to be it the, spawns like yeah. an extra four. Okay. Th yeah. That's we'll, awesome. We will get into that as the run proceeds. We will now go to our runners for a quick introduction. Start with Becky. Becky, say hello. Hi, hello. And Hi, Becky. Is... <laughs> is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have techie. anything else open. I'm like in the I'm in the, the sound chamber right now. I'm I'm focused. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. Aiming this for game's gold. scary. 
And Emma, a word from you. Hello. Hi, Emma. <laughs> Hello. I am totally scared right You'll now. You'll do great. Don't worry. Right, you're just, just playing a game. Just playing a game. Like it. It's just another day. Another day, another dollar. <laughs> so the, just simply the safety saves. Silent, <laughs> simply Silent Hill Zera. All right. So this is, this is we, the only Silent Hill game you can't continue in. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> if, if you die, you have to load a save. There is no, there is no continue button in this one, huh? I haven't thought about that before. That's scary. All right. Ooh. We both ready? You both ready? Ready. Yeah. All right. I will count you in. Three, two, one. Play video games. And they have both chosen different places to start, but somehow still both mostly got there at the same time. <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, for the most part, for sure. It's very surprising, that. <laughs> yeah, Techie has decided to do this using a, uh, a New Game Plus save file, such as to differentiate the two screens because he wanted to wear the dog outfit. I respect that so much, Techie. Thank you so I, much for doing that. As long as, uh, as, long as no <laughs> New Game Plus items are actually yes, used, yes, yes. I, for, the, for the sake of the fun... We no jogging suits. It. it was allowed. <laughs> yeah, most costumes in this game do not confer any benefit. One specifically does. The dog outfit is not one of them. One thing you're definitely going to be noticing a lot is these camera changes. This is one of the main reasons this game is annoying. <laughs> yeah. The camera changes are insane. It is not tank controls. It is like yeah. camera relative controls, but the <sighs> camera angle still likes to do very deep angles like that. <clears throat> I think oh, I no. just quit to title by mistake. Quick, start again. <laughs> the perils of playing on the Japanese version. When it's true. No, that, that you have to get used to being, you know, circle being your yes and next yeah. being your no. Cutscene skip. Okay, so skipping cuts in this game is done by pressing start and then hitting uh, X, right? But if you do it too early or press the wrong button, it's easy to accidentally bring up the dialogue for quit to main mm -hmm. menu instead. <laughs> And if you go through it, we'll just kick you to main menu. It uh, it doesn't like double check that or anything. Nope, sure doesn't. The perils of running on the Japanese version when uh, can't actually see what the words say. Also, the runners are playing on the Japanese version, known as Silent Hill Zero rather than Silent yes. Hill Origins, because it's actually the only one you can like legally buy these days. They're playing Which on a. Actually, I think Emma's playing on a Vita. Yes, I was playing Vita and then Techies on the Vita TV. And we went through a lot of things back in the day trying to figure out, like, hey, can we actually play this? Because you can't play the English one, nope. like, on the Vita TV. <laughs> it's really annoying. You have to have... Yeah. For some reason, you, they don't, you, you they need, don't you, sell you need a the Japanese English account. version. It's, it's, it's really weird, but this is the optimal way to play it. We don't play the PS2 version because it's bad and it's dark and it's slow. <laughs> yeah, the, there's a comment. People say, why don't you use the PS2 port? The PS2 port is, like, really bad for running. It's just bad, 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 bad. Whoa. Looks nice, but... That is the only thing I can add to, because I run it on that one. Yeah, it's terrible. It's pain. It's, it, it's pain. It's like running it's Homecoming on PS3, dark. which, uh, shout out to Aaron. <laughs> God bless him. For I, I God bless that. him, seriously. Like... <laughs> So, Techie is in the hospital right now, one of the more iconic locations in the Silent Hill universe, the Alchemia Hospital. It's going to be going to a lot of very familiar out. places from, like, the first game. Yeah, Origins is a prequel game, so it goes through a lot of the same beats. In fact, Alchemilla mostly maintains its layout from the first game. For the most, yeah, for 100%. There, it, this is going to be traditional Silent Hill, survival horror, just one of the big differences in this game compared to, let's say, the last you know few games that we've seen. Uh, we have stamina. <laughs> QTE! The, see, that is a QTE grab. That's bad. You want to avoid that on Techie's yes. end. But uh, it's not as though you get hit by an enemy and it causes a QTE. It's more like an enemy sort of creates a zone mm -hmm. of QTE starting. And if you happen to be sort of within the five block radius of that it immediately starts like a, a, a grab sequence it's You're, quite something you will something. get grabbed you will get vacuum grabbed sometimes and it's very annoying it's quite something all right emma's starting to catch up getting back in the elevator slowly but surely going to be getting into the dark world of alchemilla that's the little gimmick of this game touch a mirror go into the dark side i don't know if it's a metaphor for vanity because you know Travis is just kind of looking at himself in the mirror, but... Yeah, in this game, the, the nightmare world shifts are, like, under player control, mm -hmm. rather than being something that just happens. 
Oh, Emma got through without being grabbed. That'll that'll save um, us some time. Hundred percent. Hospital relatively easy to. Uh, there are places where you need codes to use codes, but if you know the code, guess what? Thankfully, it doesn't change like in some of the other earlier versions of Silent Hills. It's like, yeah. nope, things will stay the same in this, this game. This game lacks random puzzles or difficulty-based puzzles. In fact, this game has no difficulty settings at all. This is when it drops the puzzle, puzzle difficulty, right? Because only one through four had puzzle? Or is it? I don't even know. Uh, one doesn't have it. Two and three do. In fact, I think two, two, and, three and, three, two and three has it. Downpour also has it, but downpour is illegal and not to be <laughs> oh, talked yeah, about down, during this live oh, yeah, stream down, because it's oh, not yeah, in downpour. <laughs> downpour, downpour isn't in this lineup. Oh, goodness. Peggy has used the all-important egg to, to gain get access to a bathroom. Yeah, to get to a, a liver and a toilet. Beautiful. You, I always got to use the egg-shaped key to get into the employee bathroom. <laughs> this is what all hospitals are like. <laughs> yeah, a, lot, a lot of areas in this game are going to be blocked off in the light world, and you, the whole point is just trying to figure out ways to get there by accessing the dark world and then appearing in that said area in the light world. Toaster, That's... toaster, toaster! Yes! <laughs> Techie picked the up infamous the toaster. toaster grab. You don't, <laughs> don't want to grab that toaster. <laughs> it just, you kind of will, and you just hold it sometimes if you do. You just, it's not you a big deal, L. but you, you don't want L. it. So we were talking earlier, you said that, uh, you know, we were talking how, like, this game doesn't have, like, random generating numbers for puzzles, but this game does have inventory that can randomly spot on the map and picking up things yes. can change things and it's really frustrating but yes um i didn't know about this new routing Toaster I, on MSI. Uh, I knew the i knew the old way of just picking up certain things to get certain energy drinks but yes. it's really cool to hear so, that we're going to have more energy drinks in the run yeah like an additional four or five i haven't worked out the last one yet that's so cool i'm excited so, like, to see i'm excited to I see what item <laughs> <laughs> yeah, item drops are not actually random in this game at all, but, like, picking up a razor, like, 20 minutes ago can completely change the item layout mm -hmm. in the area that you get to. 20 minutes from that point, it's really strange. I, It's still a complete mystery to me how it works in totality, if I'm being honest. But uh, I discovered that picking up a certain item in the sanitarium just, like, spawned four extra energy drinks in the subsequent areas, and it's like, okay, that works. And it was a completely accidental discovery, too, because oh, I was just... Yep, the grab on techie side, yep. fighting the boss of the, the hospital area. The, yeah, I would say the boss. boss that becomes... It's just a really a normal enemy. But, uh, Emma's catching up, like... Uh, she's she's, she's about trying to, to fist fight, fight well. it. <laughs> he didn't pick up a weapon. He's just punching There's it There's no knife. Where's the knife? I love it. This is techie strats. He just punches it to death. It's... <laughs> I'm... <laughs> Yes. Do it again. Mm, mm. <laughs> so this usually takes three. I, I can't remember. It's been yeah, so long. Emma's, like, Emma's going in with the scalpel. Three clean yeah. hits, three strong hits with the scalpel. We'll put it down. Yeah, perfect. Just like that. We'll put it down, and then you run up and do a finishing blow. And that's actually <laughs> Emma most like mostly caught up. Uh, yeah. So we're we have a race again. <laughs> so that's we have awesome. A race again. Don't worry about it. Quick also, on my behalf and possibly for the audience behalf, uh, does Origins actually use an IGT? Yes, it does. Yes. We'll be timing it that way. Okay. Well, I guess then it doesn't matter that Emma like accidentally yep. quit the menu at the start. <laughs> yeah, this is. I think assured. this is the last of the games they're gonna have in game time. Well, I guess technically Downpour does, but again, we, we, we don't, don't say that. that. We don't talk about that. Uh, Downpour isn't even time with IGT, even if it was in this. It, game. Yes, uh, right. One hundred percent. It's a fake in game timer. The fakest it can never be. Also, um, or uh, when uh, Emma was fighting the boss, uh, Punchy had mentioned. Doing strong attacks. Yes, there are yes. different types of attacks in this game. There are light attacks and strong attacks, and sometimes you need the right combination to kill a boss uh, efficiently. Yeah. Basically, the strong attack is done by kind of clicking the stick in the direction of the attack as you press the attack button. It's like plinking uh, in fighting games. That's how yeah. I've always described it, it to is myself, a lot like at least. <laughs> it is a lot like that, and it's very weird, and it's very easy to get the wrong one. Yes, very much so. And because this game actually has weapon durability as well, like if you use the same weapon too much, it like shatters in your hands. Uh, you want the strong attack because it's based on number of hits, not how much damage you deal. So yes. getting the weak attack is most of the time just strictly speaking bad. Right. Um, I'm, I'm assuming you does the weapon, since weapons do have durability, does the light attacks do less durability damage or is it pretty much the same? 
Or am I it, doing a strong attack? It's this pretty much the same as doing a strong attack. If you okay, use a so, bunch so, of light yeah, attacks, you'll break it a lot uh, faster and do a lot less damage. See, so, so you really want to be on point with your hits. You really want to get the strong attack, yeah. Accidentally getting the weak attack too many times with the katana can, like, seriously hurt you. Techie opting not to pick up the first aid. Maybe that's the routing. I don't know. It isn't. <laughs> He's just brave. I, I, I respect that. I, that's, I, that, I, I usually pick, pick that up. I do as well. Because the only other one I can think of getting is like before the theater. Like there's that one other first aid kit that's like a backup, but... Yeah, also oof. they're picking up uh, green stamina drinks. I haven't actually explained that. So Travis yes, is a tired boy who mm -hmm. gets tired when he runs. Boo-hoo. <laughs> like, uh, in order to run at top speed again, you need to down a stamina drink, which are these green things. So they're very important for the run because walking slowly like this is a hassle. Here we go, here's Emma using one. Yep. Brings you back up to top running speed. Uh, quirk of the stamina system, though, you recover from being out of breath faster when you're indoors. So stamina drinks yes. are mainly reserved for use in the outdoor areas like this one. Yes, this 100%. is why a new route that adds extra stamina drinks saves like time, a fair amount of it. Because there's, uh, it's been so long, and I for, forgive me. It's like three street segments, or is it four? I can't remember. Where, you're gonna, where it's really important, that's where you're going to be using your energy drinks the most often. Yeah. Like, a, I, um, I don't remember how many there are. I don't either. even I'm trying to think. There should be the one by the tree? I, the, yes. The, uh, I think they're... It's off I to the Techie, right. Yeah, it's off to the right. past it, but... Emma found it. it. I think uh, Techie's just going to stroll right on in. That's fine. It's energy drinks. And here comes what is considered probably the most annoying dungeon in the game. It's a gigantic maze. This this dungeon is huge. It's quite big and a lot of it looks the same. Yes. Which makes it very challenging to navigate sometimes, but they should not have a problem with this, I no. hope. <laughs> Tempting fate. It took me a long time, like at least a few weeks of like, I, this was the only place I had to use notes still. And it took me a long time to get used to like doing this area without notes. And thankfully, we can skip cutscenes in this game. That makes me happy. There's some games that we don't get to do that. <laughs> <clears throat> what, could, what could he be referring to? Oh, Shattered Memories. Yes. We'll see that later. <laughs> we will see that later. <laughs> we will see that later, won't we? Joy of joys. And we have both uh, runners are about to be coming up to the Iron Lung puzzle. Uh, oh. This is a puzzle very easy. Navigating the camera very hard. Oh, that's different. Yeah, Tiki just... has a health drink there instead of a stamina drink that it's supposed to be. Yeah, that's probably because the energy drink wasn't picked up outside. I would assume so. Probably. Uh, it's um, honestly quite hard to tell where the like the divergence is. hundred percent. Yeah. So Emma's sh she hasn't picked it up yet. Yep, Emma's is a stamina drink. Is is a stamina drink. So that's going to come into play. Four Emma's sure. route's still on track. I have no idea yes. where Techie's item generation so, is at, from at being the, honest. I mean, at this, at this point, Techie probably should be just looking out, like, knowing, like, where items are going to spawn. Maybe if if it's a health drink spawn, maybe double check just to be sure. Because I think wa wasting a little bit of time uh, to check, you might be able to still come back. Might spawn other energy drinks elsewhere. I honestly don't know. I mean, know. it could have. I mean, it's it's possible. I mean, the at this point, the item generation in this game is mad. Yes, <laughs> it's not it's random. Uh, it's just mad. It's hard to predict. All right, now we're going to the spooky basement. Oh man, I, I'm just noticing like how strong the uh, filter on Emma's stream is. It's really awesome. You get to see the why the American made Sound Hills like to use the, the, the noise Eden filter. resolution. Oh man, that's beautiful. <laughs> oh, that's a, that was supposed to be an energy drink too, right? Because that was yeah. the razor. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Stream, that's also supposed to be an energy drink and there it is forever. And it, okay, oh, they and, successfully oh, got the drink without picking without, up the razor. Yes, without picking. The good thing is about that is even if you pick up the razor, razor much like the toaster from earlier, will not mess up your item spawns, thankfully. I'm not 100% I'm not sure about that Oh, anymore. don't tell me that. That used to be razor. true. It might okay. not be anymore. <laughs> oh, no. That used to be true. I'm not sure it is anymore. 
please let that be be, be true <laughs> what I just said. I don't want to reset right here every time. But I'm, not, be awful. I'm not sure. I'm not. Oh, I've, like, no. the, the specifics of what you can and can't get away with using like the, the brand new route, I'm honestly still like kind of hammering it out. Oh, no. I know the That's toaster right. doesn't do anything, at least. You don't have to reset over toaster. Right? <laughs> As you can see, uh, both players not touching the mirror. Uh, going in the dark will just taking advantage of the gigantic hitbox of the mirror. Let's touch like kind of near the mirror. It's fine. Yeah, the it works. Picky. It's fine. You. You and your devil oh, there was a rare instance right there where Techie actually ran out of stamina in a dungeon. That's a uh, you don't see that very often. At the moment, both players are like roughly around the same point. Mm hmm. Although Emma had a bit of a delayed start on account of like accidentally quitting to menu almost immediately, so I'm willing to bet Emma's probably slightly ahead, maybe. I think that's my if, assessment. If, if, so if I far. were to put money on it right now, just alone with the the item routing, Emma's definitely going to be ahead for sure. Maybe not. Oh, they immediately. Oh, they they flushed the toilet. I'm very excited about that. Yay! <laughs> Always flush. Inspecting toilets, my favorite puzzles in these games. I, I mean, they're they're. they're Items can be hidden there, always. It's a great thing. Need to hide your keys? Put them in the toilet. Yeah, Techie also, like, for the, for the bit, like, took the time to change his costume. Although, time in the menu doesn't actually reflect in IGT. Right. Mm -hmm. Honestly, who knows? Anyone's game right now, I'm going to say. I'm going to say anyone's I'm excited. game. I'm excited. Are we right, coming up? Uh, man, it's been... Good. Oh, it's, man, it's been so long since... Okay, now I know where we're at. Okay, we're backtracking, like, back to the beginning. Yes. They have gained the patient belongings key, yes. I think it is. And we'll be, also, right there, like, uh, on Techie's screen, I'm about to be on Emma's, like, there's a map right there that just really wants to, they really want to show you the map. Pulls the camera in with a force <laughs> that cannot be stopped. Yeah. You even see Travis's head, like, glance down and then... Right, right, uh... <laughs> Techie has picked Ooh. up two boxes of shotgun shells and a typewriter that he will never use. He can throw out a Caliban, it'll be funny. If you say, like, if you say something like that, he'll actually do it. Don't tempt oh, him. I'm sure you're right. More shotgun shells and a shotgun blocking a door. And that yeah, shotgun yeah. is, oh my goodness, that's such a very important item. And very guess what? Very convenient for routing that it is impossible not to pick it, up. Yeah, it's impossible <laughs> not to pick up because it's, it, it's such an important item. You literally have to. So like that, it, the game kind of solves ammo routing for you. Because <laughs> you literally yeah, can't the, avoid picking up the gun. The game gives you six things of ammo like for free. And that, like, that will kill anything you need to use the gun on. That gun 100%. At 'll right, back into the the dark world basement for both runners I think he got turned around there briefly and I do not blame mm -hmm. him I hate the screen too oh no this uh ugh, this whole area is just a pain okay lucky Emma ran out of stamina right as mm -hmm. they were passing by an enemy and that's a bit scary those enemies are annoying too like they, they don't look like they can do much but they can they have a really they have a pretty good lunging hitbox. Yeah, it's hard to gauge their range because they're sort of like mm -hmm. weird floating invisible cage. Yeah, like individuals. It's, yeah, like it's... they kind of swing <laughs> their cage at you and like they bop you on. Oh, the uh, key they just picked up was the key that was in the to toilet. Yay, flushing the toilet. toilet Access key. to keys. Oh, yes. Good dodge from Emma. Clean movement. Becky picks up the ampule there. And Emma picks up the ampule and the hammer. Interesting. That's not new route. I don't do either of those things. What it, what did you say the item was in here that you would pick up in the new routing? No. Just before the boss. It's oh it's just before the boss, really. Okay. Yeah. They both pick up the hammer for purposes. I don't know. Hammer time? <laughs> we'll we'll see what they're going to do. This is honestly like this is not quite the route that I use, so I don't know what they're getting <laughs> up to. Shenanigans. I'm okay with shenanigans. Fighting. Where are they going with this? Uh, if, if anyone is uh, confused of where they're at, don't worry. We all are. You blink. They're both on the top floor of the sanitarium right now. Techie is ever so slightly ahead in terms of, like, progress through the game in a linear fashion. They are we, opening we, the archive. 
We, we've been up here once, and now we're in fact, up here again. the navigation again. for this is apparently so confusing that even in the Japanese subtitles, they still subtitle all of the key names with their English counterparts because they didn't actually change the room signs. Oh my goodness, I, I okay, you know, you're right, you're right, you're right. Isn't that the, the, the sword yep. room? Okay. Emma picks up the sword, Techie does not. I know why he doesn't, he does a different thing. Oh, okay, cool. Techie's up to something else, he's got kind of his own weapon route going on. Cool. I watched his stream before this. <laughs> Okay, I mean, that's good to know, because uh, Katana, best melee Very weapon strong. to use? Like, best melee weapon in the game, easily. If you can consistently land the strong hit, you can kill stuff very, very quickly. Yeah, like, we, we use melee hits on the final boss. <laughs> we don't use guns. Uh, Techie prefers a different strat for the boss of this uh, area, because the Katana oh, really? strat, while fast, if you are unlucky slash slightly slow, it's very easy to just trade and die. Getting hit by the carrion right there, which those things are very slow, but if they if they target you, man, they lunge super fast. It's really Their hard lunge to dodge. Their lunge is incredibly accurate. Yes. Really hard to dodge if they successfully, like, start going for you. I think we're going... Are we going to the... 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 the, the pill room now? They're going, to the, they're going to the pill room. Okay, they're going to the okay. Pill room. It's, I, I had to look. I was looking and just look at looking at the speedrun leaderboards. So I was like, oh, I wonder how long it's been since I've submitted a run for this game. It's been like three years, so it definitely hasn't been three years since I've played this. But <laughs> you know, or uh, I don't mind the speedrun. To be honest with you, I, I think it's a lot of fun. But I'm the West. I was dubbed the Western Silent Hill guy for so long, and I just kind of embraced that title. <laughs> Easy puzzle, uh, put pill in mouth. There is a solution somewhere, and we don't have to worry about that because it never changes. Yeah, it's written in the room. It's like corresponding color to corresponding uh, uh, person, uh, but it never changes. The puzzles uh, are fixed in this game. I, w I will say, though, that the hitboxes of putting the pills in the mouth is kind of annoying. They're Actually, surprisingly small. Yeah. Such a big icon. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're getting to the towards the end of this dungeon. Yeah, that's the key that will open the office, the doctor's office that contains the key that they need to open the actual final area. Keys for keys for keys for keys. Silent Hill. Beautiful. That's how Silent Hill games work. Keys for keys for keys. Keys, toilets, keys. That's all you need to know. In that order. <laughs> In that order. <laughs> yeah, another change back to the regular world over here. You can barely see it because it's off camera, but there is a carry in that room who will bop you if you take the wrong yes. line. <laughs> They're both avoiding it pretty skillfully. You can sort of use Travis's like head tilt yes. advantage here because he will turn to look at enemies and also, but also items. Carrions are definitely not going to be the. You're, you're going to see the last of them here because the there's one very annoying part when we go to the theater that. If they're just in a weird spot, it's it's really hard to dodge. But we're getting to the about to get to that boss, which uh, I guess I get to see what Techie does. I'm kind of interested because uh, Emma's going to be doing the sword strat, which I think it's like five strong hits and one light hit to kill the boss, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. Is it five or is it four? I think whatever. It's, it, it's either four and a light or five and a light. I, I can't. I honestly can't remember. I might have notes somewhere. Very deep I've got in it my written phone. down somewhere as well. I didn't have the presence <laughs> of mind to open them for this. <laughs> oh man! Point is, strong hit and then like some weak. Because the weak attack, while weak, does come out faster. So if it's if you know it's going to kill, then you know do a faster move. both backtracking to the female wing of the sanitarium through the door that they unlocked earlier. It's very easy to forget to do that <laughs> and end up having to walk the yes. long way back. Yes, oh my god, yes. Yeah, I'm scrolling through all my speedrun notes. I just don't have them on this phone, I guess. That's cool. We're, we're, I guess we'll find out if uh, we watch Emma closely. Yes, okay, so this room that Techie's just about to enter... Okay. He's going to open it using 
The key he picked up, but he's also going to equip the gun. He likes to use the gun for this. Interesting. That's what he does. But also, the room just before this boss, this is the one with the item that I pick up that changes, like, the entire item round to be more favorable. Really? That baton on that chair, right there. That's the one Just picking up the baton, up. really? Just the baton. Emma also picked it up. They both picked it up. Just that one. I picked it up by accident, because you can see it's actually quite easy to do it, it by is, accident. Yeah, it, it's very close. Yeah, Techie using gun. Emma goes for two strong hits, and then three weak. <gasps> no. Oh, That's the scary. No. That's the scary. That's the that's the scary part of doing katana strats. If it trades weird like that, that can happen. Mm -hmm. That happened have to me a on a hotfix once. Yeah, if there's a safety safe, I'd say load into it. If you do have the safety safe, feel free to load into it. Uh, and we'll pick up from there. That is unfortunate. That happens a lot. Uh, let, uh, we will be double checking very quick. Uh, let me see. Well, anyway, Techie is moving out of the sanitarium and onto the streets. <laughs> We're working on something backstage here. Moving on out of the sanitarium, and it sucks to see that the um, that the energy drink uh, was sadly a health drink. Now, <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Techie's item route has gotten away somewhere, and I'm not really sure where. Honestly, that's origins for you. <laughs> no, you're banned from energy drinks. Now, there is an energy drink usually to the right over here. Like, you go down an alleyway. Ooh, good dodge. I like that. I know sometimes I would pick up that energy drink in the old route, but... I guess it's time to see what's going to happen. <laughs> he picks up the med kit on the way back through. <laughs> I, Techie's my hero, dude. Because <laughs> we were like, uh, he, he didn't pick up the first aid kit. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, unfortunately, we did eat a death on one of our sides. Uh, Exter Emma has uh, died during that boss fight. Uh, Techie is still trucking along on his end. Uh, so we're probably going to drop uh, jump on over to one screen, as we can see here. Uh, assuming Techie finishes the run, I'm assuming he also has safety saves. I guess this is a win for Team Robbie. Which, Woo, I'm on Team Robbie. Woo. <laughs> no. It's good for equalizing the gap. And um, uh, joining us right now, uh, Exter Emma is now mic'd back up with us over on commentary. Um, I guess just tell us about the run. How do you feel about it? I'm a little disappointed by that. Um, Travis that... dropped an input for a strong attack, and mm -hmm. I. I just died. <laughs> yeah. It, it happens. Like, I talked the about that strat. as a possibility, yeah. but like, it's rare for what it's worth that you instantly die. Mm -hmm. You're not... Okay, for what it's worth, I'm, I was speaking in defense of Emma, that's not supposed to happen. You're not supposed yeah, to be able right. to instantly die like that. No, it's not like supposed that. to. No. It right. is a mean death, and I also say it's not the first time that death has happened on the hot No, hops. it happened to me as well. Oh, did it <laughs> yes, really? It, is. it happened it to me is on the is hot a wow. curse. I don't know why. So definitely do not feel bad there. Uh, I'd actually like to uh, encourage Twitch chat here to show some love to Xtura Emma. 
It is not always easy to do these runs, <sighs> and not finishing a run is not a merit of failure. It is just something that happens with speedrunning sometimes. Yeah, these yeah. runs get reset. <laughs> That's just how it goes. So yeah. this this game is supposed to have like zero health prevention, where you mm -hmm. can't die until a hit knocks you to zero health and then the next hit kills you, but on that boss, for some reason, sometimes hits overlap in a way where it just bypasses that and you die mm -hmm. instantly. Just I don't know. By the it's, vapor, the gas, or whatever. Just It's boom. borderline a bug. Yeah. yeah. It's something yeah, and you don't see very often, to be honest with you. So it's really unfortunate to see that happen during, during this. Full health to zero. zero. Oh, and Punchy, earlier you said you couldn't tell if it was four or five hits. It's four and then one week. Okay, okay so so four, so you were right, Punchy. I was four. incorrect. Four and one. I was. I I don't have it written down. It's on my notes somewhere, but like I don't have them open right now. Well, now we're gonna be in the the theater. This will be fun. We're gonna be fighting uh, the boss. Here is another boss. It just turns into a regular enemy, which is a theme for this game. Yeah, this game likes to reuse its bosses as regular enemies later on. But this is the one area in the game that actually has one minor glitch, or I would say it's like bug. <laughs> yeah, that it's allows a really us funny glitch. I, I love this glitch it. because nobody knows who found it. It's like been known from since time immemorial. Like, I know we were questioning it when we were like, oh, we need to start running the, the Vita TV version. Is it going to work on the Japanese version? And it's like, yes, it does work. Yep. It's like, oh, totally. yes, we can we can run this version. This will be the optimal version we can do. <laughs> Wasn't and fixed so, at all. It's so stupid. <laughs> it's it's such very a... silly that it won't. <gasps> we'll get there when we get there, but it's entertaining Ooh. that there's a skip of such a simplistic nature, like in the video game. You like skipping key items? Well, that's what we get to do. It's pretty great. It skips about half of this level. Techie has picked up a television. Techie is awesome and picks up the funny. And he very I, specifically I, I, went back to do that. No, he walked <laughs> past the TV. It was like, I need that. <laughs> what is he planning? What are you up to? Uh, I, I, <laughs> hey, one shot, one use items do a lot of damage, but yeah, you okay, also, so have, the, to, the, you the also have to equip things. <laughs> the TV and the toaster are part of like a brand of attack items called like the throwables where you throw them once and they're gone. The throwables never get used in like most speed route contexts because no. they're kind of bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you throw Expe them once and then you don't have a weapon anymore and it's like, well, this is awkward. I mean, especially when we get to actually uh, get a uh, another sword here. But of course, Techie didn't pick up the sword earlier, so Techie only has one at the moment, but I appreciate, the, I, I appreciate this weapon routing. It's fun. Well, since they punched the first boss to death and gunned the that was second cool. one, they're good on, they're good on durability. <laughs> Okay, but the energy drink did spawn in the stairwell. It did spawn. I was like, huh? why are they stopping? Okay. Uh, we're co we're coming up to the trick, by the way, or the bug. Yes. Okay, the funny the funny bug slash skip is, uh, this is a puzzle that normally takes two items. You put the sun totem on one side, and you're supposed to put a moon totem you get on the other side of the building into the second slot. But if you simply leave... Techie's going to go get it, right? That's what he's doing, right? I oh, know, he re-enters the room. He's double-checking. He's going to make sure. What is he doing? He's making sure he used that item. <laughs> Doors open. It goes through the door. <laughs> if you, it's for some so reason, if you leave fun. and re-enter the room, the door just lets you through the second time. <laughs> and, and what's hilarious is like, okay. in, in, in a little bit, we're, we're going to be walking past said key item. We're just going to look at it. <laughs> like, eh, we don't need that. Oh, he's defending the door. A Karen wants no part of this. Karens are OP. They're very scary enemies. Especially in narrow rooms like this. It's not like mm -hmm. you can put space. Yes, Travis, you are wearing a dog suit. I enjoy yes. how that mirror transition actually cuts to like a fade out rather mm -hmm. than like the thing effect because it spawns items in the room and if Travis is overlapping the items, it fades out to move him somewhere else. Oh, wow, I never thought of that. That's crazy. Huh. Minor, minor details. Interesting. No, I'm, man, I've never thought about that and that's, that's cool. <laughs> okay. So, so you're not <laughs> stuck in a wall. Oh, I mean, it makes sense.
Now we're going to be picking up a lot of uh, light bulbs. The order in which these are picked up is important. It is actually important. And optimal positioning in your menu will make the uh, you doing the solution of the puzzle a lot easier. Yep, because they go into your inventory in the order you picked them up. So you want to pick them up in the same order every time. And a little bit of backtracking. Going to be going back uh, to the other side. And we're going to be putting in said light bulbs into their sockets. I'm going to assume he's got this memorized, because honestly, I don't. I can't remember what he's doing. I, I, always, I, do, I always forget. This is you, like, like people. You don't remember the solutions to these puzzles in terms of what the numbers are. You remember them in terms mm -hmm. of what buttons you have to press. Yes, a hundred percent. And I, I do. There's been so many times where I did do. I would do runs, and I would pick one of the bulbs out of order. I'd be like, I just want to reset. Like, which one is point. it now? It's like, a, it's like the, the puzzle is like a math problem. Uh. Also, I haven't commented on it, but I'm going to do so now. Techie's flashlight is also a spooky pumpkin because that is I one of the new game plus options. I wanted to say that earlier. I wanted to say it earlier, but it's yeah, it's adorable. And please add more things like this in the games. It's awesome. Yeah, one of the fun new game plus options in this game is that you can make your flashlight a bunch of goofy. Someone should have picked the football for the World Cup, you know? Oh, that would have been smart. Yeah, that would have been cool. This oh, game does have so a lot of that. like additional Messi. things. <laughs> Messi! <laughs> Messi! <laughs> Ma Matt Gale had on the jersey and everything. <laughs> yep, there's the moon totem. That's the key item you normally need to finish that Travis puzzle. Travis straight up gonna... looks, Travis looks, looks, at, looks at, it. at it too. He's With like, contempt. <laughs> gazes into the puzzle and goes, nah. You can go back and put the put thing in there. It's fine if you want to do that. But, Ooh, you dumbbell. Know. Exciting. Collecting all throwables. <laughs> Again, another awkward camera angle where Very you can pick, awkward. Up, pick up an item. It's so weird. You have to feel it for yourself. It looks weird. It feels weirder. It's that so lever, weird. That lever raises the curtain, but thrillingly, but the, the, there's a gap of time between pulling the lever and the text box appearing that says, you mm -hmm. pulled the lever. If you manage to actually successfully get out the door before that text box happens, it doesn't raise the curtain. Yeah, it doesn't raise it. It's like, <laughs> yes, I did something which, which should have been optimal. No, nope. loser, go back. You've got to wait for the text box to appear. The text box controls it, not the lever. Are we going to get the long distance grab? Be not a fear. No, it's you can grab that key without having the camera change happen, but it's just like, it's a weird position you have to be in. I don't know if you have to like just mash. I think you it's can't just pick mash. up that. Okay. You... Sometimes it happens. Sometimes not. not we got another key. key. It's like, oh, well, what do we have to get the. What, what, what do we have to do now? Well, we need to find the other lever so we can go to the boss. Thankfully, it's not too office. far away. Yeah, because this is a whole puzzle where you're pulling different like stage props down, and mm -hmm. the stage props you pull down affect the state of the other world when you go into it. It's like I don't know. I like this puzzle actually. It's kind of neat. It's it's really cool. And sadly, there's just one segment that we don't get to see. I don't even know what it does. Uh, like oops. the other. I'm gonna drink on the chair though. We are getting see, cool things. See, this is the the route change. The extra stamina drinks spawn in those locations. He's got the extra stamina drinks in the theater, but not the ones that normally spawn in the sanitarium. A thing I didn't know was possible. I thought well, it was, I guess I thought it was either like you needed both, not one or the other. So I guess missing the uh, energy drink on the way to the sanitarium, outside of it, definitely messes with the items. I think so. Yes. All 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 the. All the energy drinks that should have been in the sanitarium were health drinks, which was unfortunate. Very odd. I'm like, I'm like trying to learn things via this run, just from like, just from data, like watching other people get different item rounds. I'm just like, how does this work? What is going on here? Because we still don't really know. So, in what spots do you really get to use these energy drinks? So that makes it a lot more optimal. Mostly just in the outdoor area, run to the motel. To the like okay, the well, area. okay. Okay. Just more more energy drinks to play with means you can use them more frequently. Okay, cool. All right, so now, Techie's now going into the boss, the Caliban boss. That Caliban, it's a big carrion. Going it for the usual katana strats. This is more like regular. And do we have a? Is it is it five and one? I can't remember. I can't remember. I think it's five and one week. 
Seems like he's doing a bunch of weak hits, though. Like he has a different it, approach well, to this. Well, he's a bit. That is a bit a big boy. It's really hard to tell what you're gonna do. Oh, here Oop. comes the dash. Bob, gotta look out for that. Canceling the the knockback though by using the pause menu because that's a thing. You can do that. Yes. If you get knocked with a big strike, you can actually cancel the recoil of being hit by pausing the game and going to the menu. Killed it with a bunch of weak strikes. That works too. Yeah, we're gonna spin this for victory. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And usually right here, at least BM. I remember in the old routing, you would you would actually switch to the shotgun right here. I'm not sure yes. if that's... Okay, so that's still a thing. Because you're going to be using the shotgun in the hotel. Yeah. Or motel. It's a motel. It's not a hotel. Just while you've got a moment, you'd swap to the shotgun there. Although you can do it later via the menu anyway. It's like... Right. Again, but since there's no a, penalty for menu use in this mm -hmm. game, you can do it whenever you feel like, really. And yeah, this is the one of the longer running segments in the streets, and we're going to have a lot of yes. carry-ins, we're going to have a lot of carry the hey. car, yep. So is this one that you would actually pick up still? And I've, I've honestly, I'm honestly sort of debating that one whether or not that's worth going out of the way for. It's definitely out but of the way, there. for sure. It's a little, it's a little, it's a slight detour, but it might be worth it. In this, in Techie's case, it's definitely worth it. Mm-hmm. Mmm, delicious health drink. Techie picked that up to heal with. Heal off some of the damage you got from getting bonked by Caliban. That camera angle is extremely awkward. Yes, Good it's cross. annoying and I hate it. Actually, a very very smooth crossing on that one. It's very easy to like turn your analog stick like one degree too far in the wrong can't, direction, and end up spinning off forever. Can't a patient spawn there as well? Isn't yeah, that like definitely? Okay, so we didn't that was see just, it. Just wasn't good there. luck. They, we didn't see it, but good luck, Angamu. Ah, the assault rifle. I love Techie. <laughs> I'm gonna pick these up. <laughs> Likes to use gun. This is something I'm still trying to experiment with, like while refining the new route as well. I think the assault rifle might actually be worth it. What, are you? Uh, I'm assuming for Sad Daddy is what I'm thinking of. A Camilla. Ammos. Yeah, picking, picking up ammo and health. Yeah. Now, I was thinking assault rifle for final boss actually, but that's like theory crafting. I haven't okay. actually gone around to test okay. any of it yet. Okay. Katana's. I think that that's ten and one. I think. I don't remember. Don't quote me on this. I've been wrong yeah. every time. <laughs> oh, is it 10 exactly? Okay. I don't think I've ever actually counted it for the final boss. <laughs> I just swing until just, it just dies. Kind of it's swing, like, okay, runs just over. Die. Yeah, die, runs please. over. I win the video game. More awkward camera angles. I hate the store. You can kind of tell uh, uh, when Techie, like Techie will look like he's going in another direction when the camera angle happens. You, you just don't expect it. It kind of it kind of makes you wish like it, like in Silent Hill 2, you have like the wiggle technique when you go through certain doors. But you could do that like in this game, just wiggle through camera. Yeah, angles. it doesn't it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't quite work the same way in this game. Such a pain. You actually have to like be very firm with where you're pressing. You can't just like wiggle the stick if you're unsure because what what you'll end up doing if you wiggle the stick is you'll end up spinning in a circle and going back across both. Ooh, he was Maybe a good boy. Turning the wrong direction. Good work. That is a scary part if that thing is facing you. You could take a lot of hits. And now we're going to be at the motel. As you can also see that there's just uh, Caliban's in the street now for yep. no reason. They're just, just hanging around. Re and then really big carry-ins. <laughs> like, really big ones. <laughs> ridiculously huge. Size modifier activate. Big head mode activate. Big bodies. All right, motel. This dungeon's fun. That's all I have to say about it. No, no more commentary from me. No. <laughs> yeah, yo, yeah. <laughs> the motel is. Try and run past these guys, and whether or not he gets QTE grabbed is mostly a matter of luck. Passes by the uh, first guy. Good, good, good. You really just go for it here and mm -hmm. hope you don't get grabbed. There's nothing complicated going on. Like, I feel more... Hey, I, 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 good work. I, 
I feel Lucky. more often than not, though, you don't get grabbed. That, that maybe that's just my experience, but I've uh, heard hearsay from up okay. to and including the game's guide that being oh. low on stamina uh, makes it more likely that you get grabbed. But as far as I can discern, that's completely untrue. <laughs> I mean, I can, uh, that makes sense. Don't get me wrong, but uh, it makes sense. It's just wrong. Was, I about to say was Prima? Who made that guy? Was it Prima? <laughs> like, I've, I've, just, I've actually I've just sourced, got grabbed I've, a million. I've sourced both a Japanese strategy guide and like a Brady Games guide. I think Brady okay. and they both they, bo they both say things about this game that I'm pretty sure are not true. <laughs> It has to be just because of that the, they experience they played the game so many times that the same things kept happening, but it's just not true. Like like also, the Japanese strategy guide also claims that if you're low on health, your stamina runs out easier. And I also, as far as I can tell, don't think that's true. That's not true. I don't think no. that's true at all. Also, <laughs> it's Carrion that, that Carrion played he got past that Carrion with no hits, which is he, awesome. He ran it super easy. Yeah, like that also that Carrion is annoying. Very frustrating. I usually turn my flashlight on to try and bait it into a lunge. Like he just ran past it, didn't even care. I see. I, I never. The, it's the dog outfit, man. He's cheating. We don't know. There's something about the dog <laughs> outfit we don't know. It's it a might, secret. Where's the strategy guy? Get, get it. Get both. <laughs> oh, here comes an awkward. Okay, exiting this Good room turn. is annoying. Because that guy, that guy specifically, will grab you a lot. He's annoying, and grabs the photo. But what are you gonna do? You I can't just it. grab the key, but it's... it's I don't get it. <laughs> you can I don't be know facing what, all I don't the way. I don't know where you have to position yourself to not pick up the... Ooh, ooh run straight well, in front say, of that it, was, doesn't get grabbed. That was spooky. Oh, my goodness. That was brave. Brave, Techie. Ugh, yeah, brave. you can be facing the complete opposite direction of the picture and still pick it up. It's really dumb. <laughs> I don't know how you do it consistently. All right, time Ramble. for the alleyway of doom. Yep. In the alleyway again. Whether or not he gets like rushed down and put into a QTE is new enemies. We out of luck. This, this, see, this is not quite as like mindless as the other. No, he got through it pretty smoothly. You have to he, react he... to where they are and where they could be, but sometimes you do just get positions that are completely mm -hmm. untenable to deal with. Does he get the engine on top of the AC unit? No, Dude, he does not. he's getting the wackiest like luck with some of these <laughs> this AI. Just, like all this by. is the, this is the spot where you're like you you might have to pause and use like a health item because you're getting hit so much. <laughs> not this guy. He just goes. No, not not this guy. <laughs> oh man. Just playing games. I was going to say, watching the actual PS TV version has been so much better because I've only ever played this on PS2 lately, and I forget how actually not dark it is. Yeah, oh, you it's can beautiful. see what you're doing. Yeah, you, ah, oh, see, this guy, yeah. The guy by the door. That is just luck. Like, he's Th right that there. That one is, yeah, that's a 50-50, like, good luck. Flip the coin. And we actually are coming up to, there's actually two bosses in this area. The first boss. This what is his actual? I call him Pyramid Butch, Ben, but that's the, not the, his actual name. The butcher is it? The butcher. butcher? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what what do you call him? Pyramid Ben. Pyramid Ben. I'm. Uh, <laughs> I came um, up with something dorky sounding. Oh my god! He's using the one hitters. Let's go. Is he using the one hitters? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, he's changed the pole. Okay. I'm about to say. Usually, you use the staff right here. Infused his AI. He's using the meat hook. This camera angle is hard to work with. Tries to dodge the blow, doesn't quite get out of the way in time because it's huge and goes like half the room. Mm -hmm. Dodges that blow. Counters. Mm, red health. Oh, red flashy screen, use a health item. Red flashy screen, very scary. And, and again, grabs, uh, at least. The pose. Arr. There are spots. Anytime uh, Techie's been getting hit too, he could be pausing. <laughs> but, uh,. Ooh, it broke! No! No! What? <laughs> Are you it kidding broke? me? Why Are did you it kidding break? me? <laughs> <laughs> what is with oh. this? What is with this game? Oh. Uh. <laughs> okay, Techie had a has a backup save. Why? Uh. Why is Origins like this? Because it's a zero. Making a point to change back into the dog outfit. I mean, at this point, <laughs> Robbie do it. still gets the point. It equalizes <laughs> it for one and two. It got further. Yeah, I I agree with that. Curse video game. That's cursed. 
<laughs> He's just using like Ta- new game taking plus. the anger out on the things this, that have killed okay. him. This this is completely devolved at this point. We are we are no longer. You know what? The, this is why I always do Origins first whenever I do all the games in a row. I don't want to do Origins. This game is cursed. <laughs> apparently, Eck, I didn't realize. You know, we had pun- a punchy apparently having a death. Yeah, no, I, I, got, and, and I died in the same way as Emma on my die hotfix. on GDQ for Origins. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we've had three, three deaths yes. in Origins on your shows. In a row, technically, uh, too, because last time Punchy did this was when he died. Yeah. Uh, uh, I swear this run's not that hard. Uh, uh, Techie showing off the OP moon gauntlets, though. <laughs> yeah, he's just, he's just using the new Game Plus weaponry now. <laughs> he's just using the moon gauntlets. That's Once fine. Again, I want to give shout-outs not only to Yopo Techie, but Xtura Emma, who's joined us on commentary. This run is this run is devolved. This run is devolved. That's, that's all I want to say. I had a whole event plan. I was going to go great. I see the death. I'm like, I know that death. No hard feelings. Techie dies. It's like, oh, God, what is this? What is this game? Uh, so, so the, 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 the real question is, uh, do you start replacing Zero with uh, Downpour? <laughs> no, I don't have infinite time. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> I do. I, th- I do. Thank you very much though, for having a backup save that deep in the run. I honestly yes, thought we, we, we were just going to have to like make something up on the fly. <laughs> also, I hate this puzzle. Doing it, it use, optimally use is annoying. Use the washing machine in the correct way to get a key out of it. You got to like do also, the right steps on the washing machine. If anybody's washing machine works like that, the, uh, whoever made it is a psychopath. We have to understand it prevents uh, I don't know the uses of coins, but also not getting crowded. You know, you raise a strong point. Not even like a coin, it's like a pinball token. It's like a pinball like yeah, token. It's a slug. You're saying the same tokens that I can use for a room? I'm just saying the same tokens I can use for a pinball machine. Hmm. I mean, it's all coins in the end of the day. <laughs> it's all circles. Just circles yeah. going into going into a machine. Who cares? No, I thought that was wondering why didn't Travis difference. do the, uh, the, the, the trick where you tie a coin to some string and get the coin back? You know, I've always tried. I've tried that once in my life, and it doesn't work. It has to work on very specific old machines. Because there's, no, like, there's a, a lot. Really long there is a mechanism inside coin slots that, like, once it gets to a certain point, you can't pull it back. You, well, you need stronger string and stronger fingers. <laughs> oh, okay. It's, so it's my fault. Yes. Oh, hey, there's a thing in the pool. We're going to pick that up. Note to self, Eck doesn't know the difference between Chuck E. Cheese tokens and, like, actual money. I have like a bunch of patch slot tokens in my room. I have the Sonal slot machine. I had to buy like a hundred coins because I couldn't figure out how to get the free play working. I just bought a bunch of coins and they're in the slot machine. Go into the operator menu. What? We're not doing this right now. As, as a person that also owns a patchy slot machine, I also have 500 coins. I'm just what saying. Why are there two no, people it who own patchy slot machines? I tried. I, hey, I, have 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 I, have fi- I have a Fist of the North Star patchy slot. I have a Fist of the North Pachinko, and what I have a Earth? Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Pachinko. Why am I in the room with multiple people who own pachinko machines? What is Where's go- what Enigma? happened in my life? Where's Enigma? Enigma? He has one too. He does. They're nice decorations. <laughs> Silent Hill Runners. Always complain about Konami releasing pachinko machines. What do we do? We buy them. They buy them. You guys, <laughs> all like three of you guys own the machine. Oh, my favorite part, by the way, is at one point, uh, some like person emailed me on Twitch saying, "Hey, we'd like to sponsor your casino." I was like, "I'm just a dummy with a ga- with a your with a casino." Slot machine. Yeah, because I, I tried streaming it once, and I guess they thought I owned a casino because I was like showing off the machine. <laughs> owns owns one machine is a casino. We, we, exactly, we, I mean, we have we have entered just like full yeah. talking about whatever hours right now. Hey, so uh, Techie's really close to getting to uh, the boss of this stage, which is actually a, I, I like the boss design a lot in this uh, this area. Cool big old worm dude. He goes raw and he uh, vomits blue. Is this still valid, us chat? Going, Not going back at to all. the format, yes, it's valid. Uh, the way we're doing the point is that Team Robbie gets the dub because they made it further in. They made, we made, yeah, the, which makes total sense. That makes sense yep. to me. Fair enough. And for the sake of everything, we're honestly towards the end of the run anyway. And if Techie's yep. also definitely going to be using the moon gauntlets, I mean, <laughs> we're going to be done. Honestly, as well, this ends up working out because uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know how uh, the teams got seated. I was kind of expecting every other. I'm not going to lie. I was expecting almost every single round to be inversed. Really? I didn't yeah. think I would win. Yeah, that was. Uh, I thought the same way since I was like helping organize it. I also thought every other. 
All right. <laughs> I, I, I schedule the tournament. I'm like, all right, you know what? I think this round wins. I think this one is like a, a massive win. I think this one's a close round, but I think it goes here. And like, I balance them in a certain way, and then I won. And it threw everything out of whack. Way to go. <laughs> this is played too well and like unraked his own How event. dare you play well? I didn't think I'd be. How dare you have like first yeah. try out of bounds? How we did, dare we you? Did, we did try to balance these in a way to sort of like ensure that it was like closely matched. Oh yeah, naturally. But honestly, the the the, the, the we kind of thought <laughs> the outcomes have been flipped from what we predicted. So oh, far, the funniest honestly. part, a uh, uh, personal four. I accidentally put Zarks on the wrong team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it evened out, evened out anyway. Well. Fabulous. Oof. The fun Working of planning out. an event. Anyway, Techie's on a puzzle. You have to type numbers in. Put the ring in. There you go. It's an anniversary, I think. It's the wedding anniversary? Yes. The puzzle is the... I think he did it earlier, actually. He did it ahead of time. Yeah, yeah I think... Yeah, he Because usually... At least that's what I would do. I would do it right <laughs> there, but I think he did it before while we were talking about slot machines. <laughs> oh! oh okay. That's why. Look at that guy. I'm not sure if the stream heard that, but Techie said it was a different save file. Yeah, That's if you guys didn't done. hear that, Actually, I got hyped for no reason. Need to have and Techie <laughs> muted now I think about it. <laughs> I just realized, see, it's not really even really a, a tournament run anymore. Techie's just kind of doing the game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we, if you want to unmute Techie, Techie, you're really welcome to join us now. We just kind of, we, since this has devolved so it's, thoroughly, we're just yep, kind of yep. like, we're just kind of talking. Out Can of you do, do you <laughs> have the ability to do UFO ending right now? <laughs> uh, uh, I think I have the key on this we'll one. Do normal, yeah, normal, do, do, yeah. Do, do, do the normal ending. We do have a schedule. Yeah, That's yeah. fair. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of evolved into random assortments of noises. It has. Hey, Speaking uh, of uh, uh, Play uh, Song Hill Zero. It's muted. great. Learn Silent Hill Zero. Speak. I swear it's not this volatile. It's, <laughs> it's just actually, very it's unlucky. It's really not. This is actually, I think, one of the tamer ones that you could pick up. It's, it's. I would put like Shattered Memories as like the easiest, and then pr and like Downpour, and then maybe this. But in terms of gotta ask, difficulty, as 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 a question for the race, how is the moment of whipping out the new game plus like lightning gun after dying? <laughs> uh. It feels right. It feels like justice. <laughs> it feels right. I like that. Feels right. Yeah, so this boss you'd normally defeat by using the shotgun and kind of like strafing back and forth to dodge tentacles, but if you use the laser gun, you can kill it very quickly. He gets witness ultimate power at the hands of a man in a dog costume. Using an alien piece of technology. <laughs> I mean, uh, okay. Travis has work, technology. Man. Uh, final area of, I guess it's the final streets area. But first we got to solve a puzzle. Yeah, match the segments of the flowers by spinning them in, sir? I honestly, I forget. This is another one of those puzzles where I don't remember what the solution is supposed to be, so much as I just remember what the inputs are. I 100%, like... When de-rusting this game, I hate de-rusting this because I forget <laughs> how to work the controls. Yeah, and it's I so the, annoying I to do. The symbols like kind of count in a particular way. Mm -hmm. so you have to like sort of align them along the symbols on the corner by twisting them into place. But I forget what the logic connecting them is. I think it's the symbols. Yeah, they they just all kind of look yeah, similar. Some look like ladybugs. Some look like centipedes. Aw, images, imagery. All right. Cool cutscene right here. It's a metaphor. I actually enjoy this cutscene, but we skip it because speedrun. This, this is a cutscene that crashes the PS2 version. <laughs> it does crash the PS2 version. <laughs> what? Yeah. What? What? PS2 oh, version yeah. sounds so dumb. You're like, oh, it's my oh. favorite, but Act has never seen it. <laughs> yeah, I have to skip it every time. I need to get it. On. I have a PS TV. I just never set this game up. Hey, you gotta still. Uh, chat, uh, d just take a wild guess how much this oh, game still costs. There. <laughs> oh yeah, this will be a fun game to play with chat. How much do you think that Konami is still charging for this game on the PlayStation Network? A and as a bonus, uh, how much do you think they charge Homecoming on Steam? Have fun. Well, Homecoming's 40 bucks. <laughs> In... <laughs> $40 USD for Homecoming. I'm guessing Origins is probably 30 That's a fair, that's a fair number. In dollars, prices right rules. Let's go. 
I'm hey, there's an energy sure drink. It's like thirty dollars converted. USD, right? Two hundred forty, sixty, thirty, two hundred forty-six. I like that guess. Oh, it can't be two hundred because it's on the PS TV. They're gonna charge two hundred dollars for a digital copy of a game. Mm, oh, they you will. never know. You never know. That's not Tekken Two. That was like five thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> God, that's a real thing that happened. That is a real thing that happened. The deluxe Tekken Two. Oh, that was oh, awesome. Oh boy. Hey, we're oh, we're done with the street segment. We're about to be at the final boss, which is a big demon man. Hey, give Chad their answer, Stalin. What, how much does it cost to be a Zen? Oh, d I don't even know. Was I supposed to look? <laughs> you you asked the question. <laughs> oh, it's like twenty bucks. Yeah, oh, that's close. It's, it's it's about twenty bucks, which is kind of a lot for a PSP game. <laughs> yeah, it's, like it's two. It's a lot. Though you may have to spend more money though, because you need to use um, a Japanese PlayStation Store. Card. Yeah, they you have to. It yeah. has to go through yen. I'm pretty sure the way I did it was I had to go to like through like Play Asia or something, get a Japanese card, yeah. buy the game, yep. and then of course how your Vita TVs are, you really can't. Once you put that thing in Japanese, if you want to put it back to English, you have to like reset the whole thing. It's kind of like the whole reason why I had two Vita TVs at one point. It made it sound expensive. I mean, mostly, okay, previous games on the PlayStation TV usually cost like five bucks, right? If you want to buy a PS1 mm -hmm. game. On PS TV, it costs yep. like five bucks. But Origins, for I some reason, is both more expensive than most PSP games, mm -hmm. and is significantly more expensive than most PS One games on there. I don't know why. There's like it's the Origins Premium, but the memories are priceless. <laughs> you mean... know, since uh, since we've been doing uh, devolving to color commentary, I just want to say uh, Origins has been a great run for me because like I think like during most of this run, I was like eating a sandwich. <laughs> Big Dice has got his food break. All right, Techie's defeating Satan with the power of anime. Just gonna zap him a little bit. Uh oh, and point. usually it would take ten big old swings with the katana, but we're gonna use a lightning gun. Yeah, with the, the man meteor in a dog strike suit. here. This this meteor move is like Pretty totally ampules. random, and it can combo you really easily. It's, it's that's time. It's very it's, it's, infinite. That's time. Yeah, Techie it's also has very tricky. It's triggering. Ooh. That move is so triggering. I don't even know where your IGT is going to be. I hope it's like eight hours or something. Hilarious. You I mean, reloaded a save. This is even. Well, yeah, I don't know it's... where the IGT is going to be. I don't Arr. know what it was. Look at that high quality cutscene. Where's his dog costume? Also, I know I know it was quiet after the the butcher thing, but like he survived six of those meat hook hits. Usually yeah. he'll die after like four, yeah. maybe five. That's why I'm surprised that yep. happened. And like, I feel like yeah, and I popped luck. a first aid kit. And so I don't know what the heck that was. It was like two hits after the first aid mm -hmm. kit. That was nuts. Or I had chose violence today. Yeah, I I had no thought that I would die there. Like I didn't think that there was any chance at all. <laughs> and well, usually that fight uh, goes scary. pretty quick. <laughs> This is a good time to uh, talk to with our runners here. Uh, I guess Techie, starting with you. I guess what did you think when you died? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, so I, as I mentioned, it was one. just it was just so like completely unexpected. I was like, yeah, I got yeah, the fight's over. It's taking a little longer. That's fine. And then like out of nowhere, <laughs> it's like, wait, that killed. <laughs> it just definitely makes but, sense. And then you have the uh, the backup save and the lightning gun, so it all. It all worked out there. I'm very, well, I'm very is... glad you had the backup save. Thank you very yes. much. I, I told you this game scares me. <laughs> it's terrifying. There, there was a lot of weird stuff at the beginning. So like everything went out of whack immediately from that nurse QTE, and I think the the grab from that for oh we got the bet. This is a bad ending save file. <laughs> Oh, you know what? Maybe he's he deserves a bad ending. He doesn't find his truck. Fitting. Yeah, we're a fitting I mean, end for this. He's not getting his truck. He's getting strapped <laughs> with a chair. Hey, at least he has his tins. We find out he was the butcher all along. I oh can't no! Woo! All right. Wait. So uh, continuing onward, uh, exterior Emma. How about your end? How did uh, I guess what was going through the mind when uh, you got unluckily uh, one hit KO'd? Pretty much. My draw dropped to the floor. If I'm honest. I didn't expect that to happen. I was like in literal shell shock for a second there, like, because I've never had that happen before. I have seen it once before. It's rad. Last it's time it was on the Hot Mix. <laughs> yeah, sorry. the last I've time. Seen it. I've seen it before. <laughs> that I've last time. In exactly the same scenario, and I was filled with the same amount of immediate dread. The only I downside just never uh, thought. This time we didn't have the higher estimate, and. Uh, 
Like last time we just had punchy resets. I was like, oh yeah, you're all good. Yeah, I just, I just, I just started again. It's what I did when that happened to me. I was like, oh, works out then. Cool. I don't mind. But you started from the beginning. Yeah, 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 I yeah, just sure. reset the whole run. Respect. <laughs> oh we, we my took it, god. We took it from the top and just did it again. That's awesome. Well, yeah, well the speeders of the crew had a bit more time today. We do have a pretty big event here. It's gonna be fun stuff. Mm. It was a good race. Uh, ultimately, we're giving the points to Team Robbie for making it further into the game. Uh, as you may know, speedrunning is hard sometimes. Not every run makes it. So uh, true. big props to both of our runners, uh, both UFO Techie and Exterior Emma. Uh, as well, Techie, on your end, what do you do and where can people find you? I I play games on Twitch like everyone else here. <laughs> uh, it's it's twitch.tv slash UFO Techie, or you can type otter.gg into your address bar. You still have that URL? I sure do. Awesome. And then, Mr. Emma, on your end, what do you do and where can people find you? You can find me at twitch.tv slash exterior Emma. I'm not as active right now, but I plan on sooner, sooner rather than later. I do mainly Silent Hill stuff. Maybe doing Origins again, because practice was turning out pretty good on that. So, Woo. And hopefully yeah. it'll continue to be good. Yeah, and I would like to add also, this may seem like a little personal thing, but uh, thank you, Connor, for watching. It's my boyfriend. Hey! Yay. She's very supportive. Support. He was sending me... Support. As soon as I died, he sent me a message. Like, well, he and, like, others that I'm friends with in a server were, like, really sorry that that happened. We're I, your biggest supporters. There's no worries here. It's a day of fun races, and honestly, I think the way Origins turned out ended up being pretty good <laughs> all the way around. Again, I do want to remind that this literally every time this has been on the show, bad runners have died. Every time. <laughs> it's it's so like volatile. Times. Cursed yeah. for life, apparently. Is. So definitely no hard feelings there. And I know Twitch chat has been giving a lot of love uh, throughout the whole run. So uh, hopefully they'll continue to do so. And I do want to say thank you both once again for doing the race. Thank yeah, it was for... fun. Yeah, it was fun. Hey, well, cheers to that. Uh, as well, before we go to our next race, we still have two more waiting for you. Uh, for our commentators, would you like to just, I guess, you know, talk about yourselves for a moment? here? No. Uh, no, uh, uh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> hey, you're going to be hearing my voice a lot because I'm actually going to be commentating the next run as well. At least I think I am. <laughs> yep. yep. So we'll be doing Silent Hill Homecoming, the glitchy boy of the Western Silent Hill games being run by two incredible runners. Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. Good. All right. Uh, that being said, we are going to be going over to a quick break. Uh, we still have a couple more runs for you, so don't you go anywhere. Up next is going to be Silent Hill Homecoming. All right. All right, everyone, we are back with King of the Silent Hill. Hope Woo. you all have been enjoying the day of the races so far. It's been quite exciting and quite hectic, especially with that last run. Uh, I've been your host, Ekdysis, uh, and I'm also here with my co-host, Punchy. Hello, hello. What a game! What a game! <laughs> what a game! <laughs> what a game! Oh, oh Origins. Yeah, uh, that's really the only way I can put it. Uh, I have that on the speedruns in the crypt. It is the uh, hotfix I run every two weeks. Uh, when you did it, and you died in that exact yep. spot, I saw. I was like, I know that exact death. That is unbelievable. It happens, and then Tacky died after. That. I was like, What is it? This game? It's like <laughs> rare too. Like that doesn't happen every time at all. It's not even close to like a frequent occurrence. Not all runs will finish, that's okay. Uh, in terms of the way the scoring for today's event has gone, uh, that is going to be a point to over to Team Robbie. It's actually two to three now. Robbie's actually been uh, taking the past two games, uh, believe it or not. Uh, Pyramid Head started strong, and they might uh, continue going. I don't know, maybe Robbie does a reverse sweep right now. Uh, we are going to our next game coming up uh, in a moment here. It is going to be Sonal Homecoming, which I want to say is probably the most... Uh, a skill-based game out of all of them. It's probably going to be the hardest one if you've never seen a run of Homecoming. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very I'd, intense. I'd say if, if like, the Silent Hill speedrun community had to pick, like, a favorite Western Silent Hill game 
as a run, it would definitely be this one. This is like sort of the pet favorite of pretty much the entire community. We all love Homecoming's run. Oh, absolutely. And speaking of people who love Homecoming, let's jump over to that game now uh, with <laughs> our commentators, uh, Nub, Starwin, and Techie. Hello, I'm Nub Zombie, and uh, I'm here to witness some amazing Homecoming speedruns. Hi, I'm Starwin, former world record holder in multiple categories in this game. I'm also excited to see people go through walls and have a good time. Hi, I'm Techie. I like Hi, Homecoming. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Techie of recent Silent Hill Origins fame. <laughs> I've played, uh, I've, you. I've, I've played <laughs> a lot of Homecoming in my day. I'm so excited for this. Like, as you mentioned, it's, it's like this is one of the most technical, I think you could say, runs. I just want to say right now, before we get into anything, Homecoming was one of the games I absolutely thought of with this. Uh, we have a couple of new runners we'll be introduced in a moment. We have a lot of the old runners uh, who definitely paved the way for this game. It's just going to be a very exciting uh, just measure of everything right now. So, uh, no, would you like to introduce our runners and uh, let's hear from them as well? Uh, of course. Uh, we've got Schmumbler on Team Robbie. And Tiggleton on Team Pyramid Head. Both uh, super experienced runners. All right. Uh, that being said, uh, whenever we're ready, we can select our costume. Uh, Schmumbler, can you be telling us about uh, a little about yourself and what costume you're selecting today? Sure. So, hey, I'm Schmumbler. Um, first off, it's Ignisus' fault that I ever even started running this game. But Yay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also run Downpour and Shattered Memories Do few other games that literally I think I'm the only runner for. It's fine. But I will be playing as totally normal classic Alex today. Perfect. <laughs> uh, I think we also start the game on your own Schmumbler. Uh, right now, over on Tickleton's side, uh, the game has already started, but the run has not started yet. Uh, we're going to have our runners count down when they actually get to the first action. But Tickleton, feel free to tell us a little bit about your costume and what you do here. Hello, I'm Tiggleton. I'm a professional homecoming run thrower, <laughs> and I will be playing as Pyramid Head this evening, or the Boogeyman, if, depending on your preference. <laughs> that should have Is anyone like Jacob's Ladder? Because that's what this like, this game is. Mm. And that always has to be mentioned. That Definitely. always has to be mentioned. Like, if you've never seen Jacob's yeah. Ladder, you're about to. <laughs> It's it's like one half Jacob's Ladder, one half the first Silent Hill movie. <laughs> that's yeah, that's fair. Hey, what is this place? Hey, where are you taking All right, I think we're just waiting for Schmumbler's cutscene to catch up. Once it Oops. catches the up, big triangle. Uh, how about we have Techie count us down once we're all caught up? We're not caught up yet. Uh, and then we can uh, get on into the show. For anyone wondering, it has been an extended intro. You may see that QTE. The run official begins when we tap that. We're not starting it yet. Uh, I'm going to let the commentators handle it in a moment here. Just, uh, we're all ready to go. Uh, I see your smirk, Schmumbler. I, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> hey, where is that? Where is that, Alex? <laughs> Are you being invisible here? <laughs> He's cheating already. <laughs> oh. I received it. So they both all chose right. costumes after all. <laughs> uh, if everyone, yeah, if everyone's good and you're all set, let's do it. Ready for countdown? Three, two, one, go! Woo, let's homecoming. All right. Let's go. Ash said eight button. Let's homecoming. Let's go home. So the invisible Alex glitch is funny. Uh, to this day, I still I don't know how you set it up. Schwumbler, if you're... Oh, uh, if, uh, if, if someone knows, if they want to focus yeah, on the run, if someone else knows, please tell. The, I, don't, I don't even know. The way that I know of how to do it is uh, mashing the, the zoom in like camera function in certain. I think it's like after a loading area, uh, it'll it'll just get stuck that way. Josh, where are you going? I know the one that I learned from is uh, after you finish the house and you're heading towards the cemetery. You can learn. You can just mash the the camera zoom button, and then you'll just end up like that. So maybe there's a more um, consistent way, but it's it's with that function. Okay. So right now it's not going to come into play. Uh, Schmumbler, both both of these runners very experienced. 
uh, Tickleton is actually using what people would consider the harder costume to play with because of how big the pyramid head <laughs> helmet it's a huge is. Freaking helmet! It, 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 it is huge. And then we have a Schmubbler being invisible. Uh, but we're not going to be seeing any of that fun stuff for a little bit. We're actually going to be doing a nice Silent Hill movie transition into the dark world right here. Uh, Homecoming, definitely not one of the more popular games when it comes to uh, casual play, but in comes when it comes to speedruns, Punchy kind of said it earlier, Nick Dice has said it earlier. This, in terms of Western Silent Hill speedruns, this is one of the best, because it has so many cool tricks, uh, which uh, we're going to do some tricks here, but not things that you would, uh, you know, not the cool stuff we're going to see later on. Yeah, it'll start out pretty simple for the first six minutes or I, so. I don't know what you're talking about. Bug bug skip is. is oh, it's tight. I, I love bug, that. Bug skip is real. That is a real thing. Because used to it was like, I need to get bugs off me. You're not get bugs at all. Now you want bugs. Now it's like, please give me exactly one bug. Uh, so you're going to be seeing a lot of QTEs and... in this game. And one of the really lame parts about QTEs, if you do mash too hard, you will drop inputs and uh, it'll be slower. It's kind of dumb. It'll be slower and potentially, depending on how fast you're mashing and how certain QTEs work, some of them you can even fail if you're mashing mm -hmm. too quickly. Like there's going to be a QTE here uh, in a little bit where mashing too hard can actually result in your death. Yeah, the, the one hit KO QTE. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it's not really... It's, it's, it's a button mash prompt type thing. But so, that's I think that's one of the only ones that changes every time too, right? Yes, the ones that would involve, like, death. <laughs> so, I think Tickleton got a bug. I think. I can't tell. There's a big helmet on him. We'll know. Oh, he, me oh. he missed it. Which ha can happen if you are not if you don't push the buttons both at the same time. You can't drop it. Uh, Schwumbler got it and is already going to be moving they on to the later part of the area. It can be a little bit hard to tell when, uh, you know, you can't see Alex, but the camera did drop and show that the uh, the bug skip was successful. You, you essentially are skipping the uh, animation of Alex going from the second floor to the first floor. It just, he rolls on the ground. It's it's yeah, a really cool. Trumper found sec. that out and it's it, it saves like six seconds. It's nice. It's a good save. I mean, when you speedrun this game, you've got to sit through this intro a lot. So mm -hmm. saving time on it in any way is uh, especially nice. Gives you something to do. <laughs> it, no, 100%. Because this used to be very straightforward before that was discovered. And now we're at the one of the, I guess, unique things about Homecoming. We have cutscene dialogue choices. Uh, both runners are going to be picking the ones that will have less dialogue. That's all there really is to it. Yeah, otherwise there's no difference at all. <laughs> yeah, like, if we were doing, like, all bosses or something, there's a lot more dialogue choices, but we're doing... What? We're doing 80% New Game Plus? Are we doing 80%? Yes. Okay. New Game Plus. Cool. All right, here comes that dreaded QTE where you could possibly die. Everyone guess your letter for your controller. B. Yeah, we got B. Got B. Are we going to have two Bs on the stream? Uh, no. X. X. Okay. Oh, X for that one. <laughs> so we are actually coming to the end of this segment right here. Uh, Schmumbler had a bug on his face. Yeah. On his invisible yeah. face, but... The floating bug. Uh, thankfully, uh... Just triggering the cute uh, or the cutscene with uh, uh, Josh will make the bug just explode, <laughs> so you don't have to worry about taking it off. And that's it for the intro. Mm -hmm. uh, other than the bug skip, not a whole lot of other things. There is some little bits of uh, you know optimization here and there, rolling into mm -hmm. some of the little uh, cutscenes with Josh moves Alex a few steps forward. So there were some things like that, but right now it's still uh, really close. Really, really close, and there's still so much to this oh, game man. coming up. This can go either way at any point yeah, during like this one. So, like they're gonna beat the Pretty game in like twenty the minutes. Very first <laughs> clip. So sadly, uh, this is one of the few unskippable cutscenes. We are forced to watch this. This is just like the ending of this dream uh, episode with Alex yeah, here. <laughs> 
first. He's got to hit yeah, that it's L. it's one of what, like, I want to say, like, three total mm-hmm. unskippable scenes. You have this, you have after the shepherd house. Uh, yes, when, when Alex is opening the door. Yes. And I think there's another one. My brain don't think. Good. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. You could, you could be right. Pickle Tim with the awesome facial expression doing his best Alex. <laughs> hey, there's Travis. Do you know who that is, right, Techie? That that person driving that truck? You were playing as him earlier. I, I don't that recognize him without the costume. <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> Alex has a Travis costume, though, in this game. It's, oh, yeah. you it's, it's, The outfit that uh, Travis Grady is wearing right there is what Alex can have. He even gets the yeah, belly. Yeah, can wear it, too. <laughs> it's Sunday at the Furcon, and everyone's going home. <laughs> All the costumes are packed up. So on Trumber's screen, we have a knife running around. Yeah, just running around <laughs> town. Just a floating knife having a good time. And we are coming up to the Shepherd House. So uh, this game, we do not start in Silent Hill. We start in a town close to Silent Hill across Toluca Lake, which is called Shepherd's Glen. Uh, because reasons, but thankfully, uh, usually the first half of this game is taking place in Shepherd's Glen. Well, we're just going to pretty much do like the last bit of Shepherd's Glen and then go immediately to Silent Hill. Hello. Because here comes what makes this game so glorious. Yeah, the main speed tech requires a gun. In New Game Plus, you get a gun very quickly. Yeah, we've already got a Chmumbler just picked it up there. That is the... uh, New Game Plus laser pistol weapon, the classic, for uh, which you get for completing the game and getting the UFO ending. So now that we have pistols, we can start clipping through walls. Uh, both going for the knife version of the clip, uh, Schmumbler doing his own method that I have never seen before. I go over the yeah, right side. Right? Go over the right side confuses me, but Schmumbler is the world record holder, so I'm not going to question anything. Um, yeah, this- some, some. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say that this clip specifically, it, whatever method that you get consistent and it works for you, please do it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of the thing is that the the route's the same for everyone, but everyone has these own little like small differences oh. in how they do the clips. Nice. Oh, that, oh my God. That looked Tigleton. right. No, that looked good. Tiggleton. This is honestly probably the hardest clip. This one sucks. <laughs> this is honestly the first make it or break it point. I would say this and the church are probably the big. Well, no prison too. Like there's a lot of points in the run where this can go either way. But this this clip notoriously, this is the one where when you do want to learn this game, oh. it is definitely the hardest to get consistent. Yep, I, I know lots of uh, runners, very, very good experienced runners who play a lot of other Silent Hill games. Uh, get completely turned off from from running homecoming because of this particular clip. Traveler Cyber, in the, he's already in the Nightmare Shepherd house. Uh, and we're going to see some really cool clips coming up here. Mm-hmm. Uh, just clipping through everything. Uh, going to be collecting very specific items to solve four puzzles. Mm-hmm. Once four, all the four puzzles are solved, we can escape the house and move on to the Silent Hill area. But this, that first clip that we right did. Right through that wall. And that's a risky clip. Mm-hmm. It doesn't, like, they make it look so easy. But if you're, like, a hey, half Tiggles step to the hey, left, good. You, can, you can get completely stuck. All right. Okay, uh, we, like, yep. Top coming is also a cruel mistress. <laughs> Ex- yeah. Execution. Doing executing tricks is the pri- usually the primary focus for homecoming. A lot of the other Silent Hill games is like your movement. Not yeah, so much. Yeah, it's, it's such a different run from the rest of the series, and yeah. that uh, yeah, it's a whole different so- skill set. Like, don't be wrong. Like, Silent Hill two and three have their out of bounds and their glitches and stuff, but it's just a, this is just a completely different monster. We still have some puzzles here needing to be solved and Schmumbler just uh, grabbed two out of the three. He's going to grab the third metal here and this puzzle is fixed. Always the same solution. He's going to place those really quickly and then be doing another clip to get back downstairs much faster than walking. Yeah, Yeah, the the exit from here is a locked door so we can't leave without completing all the puzzles like no matter what. Very nice. 
Skeleton going for the first clip in the Nightmare Shepherd house. Looking clean. Gonna fall to the bottom next floor. It's stuck on the vines and he's good. <laughs> he's definitely made that first clip look easy. Yeah, it seems to be a running like like a trend with the the Western Sound Hill games. It just doesn't seem like the puzzle solutions don't like to change like the older games. It's like, you know, Silent Hill 3, the very beginning, there's the, that first code that always something different. And he, I wonder if it's maybe to just like simplify programming aspects. Right. Uh, I don't know. how. It's probably a lot more complicated making something that can randomize, mm -hmm. especially when you understand like how Silent Hill 2 handles that with all of the seeds on individual frames mm -hmm. starting the game. I'm, I'm sure that's not... It's it's a lot more simple to just kind of make something with a set solution. All right, on Schmubbler's screen, we're actually going to be going to the basement, but instead of taking the stairs, we're going to clip through a wall because it's easier and funnier. There's the bright orange screen. Always love looking at that. And we're right at the solution right here. We need to apply the three knives that we've, we've collected throughout this area. Hilton is also at the metal area collecting his second metal. About to be doing that really cool... Uh, clip to get back to the stairs and Schmumber is actually going to be up at a the last clip of this area which could be kind of finicky this is a wall that you can get stuck in oh Schmumbler's going to go for this one of course yes of course. You, this is the world record holder he's the, he's the record holder you gotta do it this this clip this is clip. so finicky I hate this clip so much and you have to like get it first try and save what like four seconds instead of just going around and instead of walking around you got you got to walk around and do one duck under animation mm -hmm. so would that but there it is so he did get it would he, he he may have like lost maybe one or two seconds instead of just walking around but uh style points that's what matters style points for sure and then of course we're at that clip is not easy no it is not 100 percent. and we now we're at the uh second unskippable cutscene that we were talking about earlier uh tickleton is actually getting done with the third puzzle which is make the clock be a certain number and then put a robbie doll on a really bright spot <laughs> high quality puzzles yep again not randomized you always turn the clock to the same mm -hmm. number it's always 206 206 is a cool number it also works out nicely that you can solve all the puzzles without having to pull that crank in extra time. Oh, 100%, yeah. You do you do get to save, like, not having to pull the crank, like, yeah, cause that's a, Yeah, it's loading a different part of the map every time you do that, so it takes forever. Mm -hmm. There are fun... Can't you technically skip uh, doing it for the last floor, like, if you do the bottom floor blind? You could, yeah, you do the... Uh, what do they call it? Maskless, I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Schwumbler's, Schwumbler's probably like, I know what it is, but I'm focusing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Tickleton's actually at the last area where Schmuller was at uh, recently. Uh, again, it'd be putting those knives to get the last puzzle done. Schmuller, uh on his screen is actually in Silent Hill now. Uh, this this area right here, you'd have to actually like. Uh, turn off the electricity to get uh, of, on this gate to get to the prison, uh, which takes a lot of time. You got to fight a lot of order soldiers, and then we're not going to do that. We're going to clip through walls because that's this game is clipping. Yeah, the, this is where the real shenanigans begin. Yeah, there's there's a lot of really that that's the thing is like once once you kind of see homecoming as a speed run, it's like not just a single trick being executed over and over like. Every single wall clip is Very got nice. its own sort of weirdness to it. But yeah. Uh, Tickleton getting the clip probably about the same speed as Schmumbler right there. But very good execution mm -hmm. on both parts. Uh, sadly, has to sit at this unskippable cutscene while Schmumbler gets to keep moving. But don't worry, they're both running this on Xbox Series X's, oh. which cuts down on the loading times <laughs> equally. So at the very least, uh, all of these uh, loading screens aren't taking up as much time as if you were running on like PS3 or 360. Yeah, the optimal way to play this game is on an Xbox console. Do not do this on PC. Do not do this on PS3. Shout outs to Aaron. <laughs> Aaron currently <laughs> rushed. Shout outs to Aaron. <laughs> currently doing this on PS3, which I respect. 
Uh, now we're at the prison on Schmumbler's side. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of clips He's here. A lot of blind clipping, too. Skipping majority yeah, of the prison. already clipped into this prison. Uh, there's already two difficult clips that have gone by. There's another one right here. Oh. If you fail this, you fall through the floor and die. Of course, it doesn't get failed. That's the world record holder for you. Yep, two more clips, and then we have to... Probably, uh, I think Schwimbler goes for the loading of the area uh, once he gets to where he needs to go. Gets through the, the invisible gate that you don't see right there, and he's going to be clipping through an invisible wall. Yeah, I, I guess just to kind of explain, <laughs> because oh, you're just... So much is happening so fast. <laughs> it's like, very abstract. Clipping, clipping through this area, just the rest of the prison doesn't really load. And if you get into a specific spot right there while aiming the gun, it will load in so you can see... On the ground, there's a visual marker where a cutscene trigger is, and that basically skips you directly to uh, this cutscene of Alex's mother being tortured, and you're done with prison. Like, what's funny is insane when you do that uh, clip. Uh, Alex's mom is invisible, much like how Alex is now in the game, and Schmumbler nodding his head, knowing like, yeah, I know <laughs> this was intentional. Uh, Tiggleton's getting close to the entrance to the prison. Let's go through one more load door and has to go through the dreaded brick wall, which honestly, this clip is annoying too. Like um, for the longest time, it was so hard to get consistent, but new methods of clipping were found out and made it a lot more easier. Uh, the clipping that you're seeing the runners do uh, most of the time is with the shotgun. They're actually uh, aiming the shotgun and switching to the pistol at the same time. Uh, for some reason, it just allows clipping to be a lot easier. Back in the day, we used to strafe with the pistol until we actually got a pull and start clipping. Um, but ever since this method was oh, found out, go. oh, he's, do oh! Asphyxia skip. I, yeah, this is the asphyxia skip. So this is completely unnecessary on New Game Plus. Mm -hmm. This is 100% style points right here. This clip uh, is hard. So already clipping, aiming the shotgun up and rolling to get through this next area. This is a raised platform, uh, but by weapon swapping and aiming down, Alex pops up vertically, continues running along the top of the tunnels that normally you would be running through into the Asphyxia boss fight room, uh, which is the big like human centipede boss. But instead, there's the boss arena under Schmumbler. Here comes the hard part, he, though. Yeah aiming the pistol over and over again to slightly walk forward and get past that gap, going to intentionally fall out of bounds and try to hit the prompt to go through this door while falling. Missing this will be a quick reset. And oh, gets God. it. <laughs> wow. Good. Wow. It was Excellent. so It was yeah. so far back. Yeah, that was scary. Tiggleton gets the load in with the prison and is going to be done with the normal prison area. Wait. I just want to note really quickly that literally like half of Schmumbler's decisions were style point based and any single mistake would have like cost him uh, an immense amount of time. No, 100%. If that, oh, like that would have failed. Them. If that would have failed. Like, yeah, that that one uh, <laughs> way It's actually slower to that's, do with that one. Yeah, yeah that is the sure. Not even a time save. <laughs> At best, it breaks even. But Executed perfectly, it breaks even like compared to uh, a normal asphyxia fight. <laughs> The, the tricks in this game are so versatile and it's that makes it so fun. That's that this is by far like one of the more interesting uh, Silent Hill races because of that. There's so many variations to the route, things that are really risky that save just a few seconds. Speaking uh, of but, optimal and risky, this clip is annoying. <laughs> this this was yes, this was the holy grail. It's like, can we clip through this? And it was always like, no, it's too annoying. And then Schmumbler figured it out. And there you go. He did it. <laughs> he skipped the whole church. How the hell did he do that while invisible? Because this is what he does. He, he, sw he, he swags. <laughs> He's dressed he like does. Alex Shepard right now. <laughs> that's, that's true. I, I'm just saying, like, Tiggleton literally helped me learn this trick the other day. He told me, oh, yeah, watch it's the hard. ear. He, he doesn't even have ears. So Tickleton opting for the proper asphyxia fight. Actually fighting asphyxia. Because <laughs> again, what Schmumbler did earlier was just complete style. Like this is will probably save time in the long run if the fight goes well. 
Is asphyxia is a little annoying though. Let's see what she does here. Uh, asphyxia can be pretty annoying, but actually got a good pattern. Is a pro. Yep. Yeah, got that's it. actually really good. That's one of the and better. Be it. You did not get the scream. Getting the scream bad. Also, there's an invisible man fighting a woman over a drill right now on Schmumbler's screen. Yeah, and winning. I mean, that's just and homecoming winning. things. <laughs> it's finished. So Tickleton is now at the outside of the church while Schmumbler is moving on to the underground, the final area of the game. This is where some of the more annoying clips we're going to be doing a knife clip because we did lose all of our weapons here. Yeah, you got hit by with a lot of damage, Schmumbler. Yes, I saw that. <laughs> uh, conveniently, you get a pistol. So guess what we get to do? We get to start clipping again. It's very convenient. Like, we lose everything. Oh, oh yeah, those order soldiers like took like one shot because like they were hitting each other with their own pipe. That's pretty good. And he still has one bullet left because there's one more order uh, soldier in this room up ahead. And it'll take one bullet and a knife combo to completely finish him. Just like that. Tickleton starting the organ clip. While Schmumbler is going for and the hard, one of the harder knife clips in the game. This one's particularly scary because if it fails, it can kind of lock you out from yeah. trying it again. There is a backup the classic, pillar climb the classic. right next to this. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's crazy how... Even with how optimized the route's gone, and even with just like some simple tricks, like it's changed so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember when there was like three runners for this game, and I wasn't even one of them yet. And Tickleton getting oh, the organ clip, very nice. There it is. Both runners getting their clips at the same time. Both yeah, very two difficult really clips. Difficult, oh. Yeah, two of the hardest clips in the game being executed simultaneously. So there's a part right here where you're supposed to talk to Wheeler, but uh, since we can shotgun clip now, we're just going to skip a cutscene and walk through the void. And there will be the final area, which will be the final puzzle. And this also was the holy grail of getting through the puzzle door. The old method was really, really hard. The new method, it's so easy. It's like one of the easiest clips in the game. <laughs> yeah, it's actually not that bad. It can be a little bit finicky. And it's another one of those where if you can you can mess it up and fall to your death, which is yep. Wow, and just like that, we are Schmumbler is about to confront the final boss, invisible, completely invisible. And since the laser pistol is uh, OP, uh, it only takes a couple of shots. Uh, for both phases, so time is coming up on Trumbler's side. There is no in-game timer, so it will be the stopping of the RTA timer. And time. Very, time. Very nice, Trumbler. Very good executed run. Tiggleton is very nice. Oh, now Tiggleton is about to get their pistol and move on through the underground. Uh, okay, one of them, one of the order soldiers hit his friend, so that's going to be one less uh, bullet he's going to have to use. Or not. It just didn't do enough damage, unfortunate. Nope. Yeah, the, the damage, I think, is random. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it does enough, so... Good headshots. That's... Those, yeah, those, those, the shots. Those are, har those are hard headshots. Like... And, and the AI is so weird on those guards. Sometimes they just start, like, twirling in circles... Yeah, and the, aim the aiming's not stellar either, just the controls. Mm -hmm. And Tilton, get a good pull on the door with the knife clip. Just trying to wiggle around, trying to get that, that last push. Oh, it's so close. It's so, it's, it's right there. Very oh, there nice. Go. There it Excellent. is. Very good. Very really nice. quick. Gets his items back. Oh, he's going to pull a me. This is what I do. Oh, <laughs> I just immediately yeah. go for this one through the wall right next to the table. <laughs> And coming to the second to last clip, really easy, just a shotgun turn. Very nice. And just one more, one more clip into the final door, and then just four shots of that laser pistol, and then we will we will be done with homecoming. I hope everyone enjoyed this the this race. I mean, 
Uh, like I said, this race could have gone it, either. It's so fast. Yeah, it, it's really quick. It can go either way. I mean, like right there, Tickleton got the final door clip way that faster, really nice. way faster than Schmumbler. At any point, those clips could have been anything like that at any point. It's the quick shot. Only thing you have to do is hit. Yeah, hit. That. you just have to hit aim and fire, and like you'll get you'll get a free shot immediately on uh, Amnion. Schmumbler's stream yeah, is just really like an nice empty bathtub. <laughs> <It just, laughs> oh, he got another quick shot. That was clean, and that'll be very time nice. for Tickleton. Very nice showing from both of you. Very, very, very good runs. Good stuff. EGs. GG's to both runners. This game is so insane as a speed run. Um, I'm, I'm so happy to have it like in an, a race format like mm -hmm. this uh, for another GDQ event. Uh, Techie, you ran this last time, I believe, at GDQX at, at TwitchCon 2019, right? Yeah, the, the, the last one before lockdown. And then Schmumbler yeah. ran it uh, online, uh, I believe. Yes. I was there for that. I talked on that one. I hosted that one really enough. Hey, and I'm hosting this one. <laughs> oh, but what I'm trying to say is homecoming it definitely uh, deserves uh, some love and, and some respect when it comes yep. to the, uh, the, the speed runs because yep. it is an extremely technical game and both runners pulled off some insanely difficult stuff here today. Yep. That was an amazing race. 100%. Oh, hate, on, hate on this game casually all you want. I, that's cool. Speedrun wise, learn it. If you want to learn a, a speedrun, your first speedrun, do this. Because it's so much fun it's, to learn. It's such a good game. Yeah, it's, it's baller. <laughs> All right, and with the race as well, let's uh, let's hear from our runners. Uh, we can turn back on their microphones. Uh, definitely a fun race. Uh, honestly, I think this race would have been a bit closer if the intro did not get away from us. Uh, the first Attic clip was definitely the one where I think yeah, the tone of the race was set. 100%. Uh, honestly, I, I think if it didn't go that way, I think it would have been much, much closer to the whole ordeal. Yeah, the door was definitely giving me the business. As it does with a lot of runners, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'll start actually with uh, Tickleton this time, uh, just because uh, with the door, I guess, what was the thought process behind it? I'm glad you kept it up. Uh, it's I know it's definitely um, during a race environment as well. It can be a bit hard to try and pick up like, hey, um, this trick is taking a while. It's live. It's a bit more rush. So what are just some of the thoughts while you're trying to get that trick down? Um. I, in practice, leading up to this, I was having trouble with the door. Sometimes it just wouldn't let me have it. And as you can see there, the first clip I got was good, and then the door said no, not anymore. Can, can we talk about double pyramid head on your screen? <laughs> well, he is on triple. He's on two pyramid head. <laughs> two, two pyramid heads. I've become double pyramid head. <laughs> exactly. Really or double boogie team man. Whoever, There's a the squad right there. You want to call it. <laughs> exactly. That's the team pyramid head right there. There's Punchy. I see him. Uh... And then uh, as well, it just I'm, I'm glad you're able to keep that up. And it does seem like uh, also either, I think this race was pretty fun for this round. Yeah, it was an honor to, to be here, honestly. I'm so glad you guys picked me. Thank you guys so much. I really Absolutely. appreciate it. And then uh, Schmumbler over on your end. Uh, what the what were half the strats you were planning? <laughs> if any one of them went wrong, I, I hope you understand that that would have probably lost the race. Like I saw. <laughs> oh, abso absolutely. Absolutely. It absolutely sure. would have. Yeah, no. Like the, the if you mess up asphyxia skip, that's like a minute and a half gone. Okay, I, I'm going to wrap for questions. One, why were you invisible? So the setup <laughs> that I do is using the family portrait upstairs in the shepherd house. Pretty much what they were saying earlier, uh, you trick the camera into... Because whenever you go into first person, it actually deloads your character model. So you trick it into just forgetting to load you back. And that stays for new games, loads, anything, as long as you keep picking that default costume. Uh, and the more important question, why? Does that make it so much harder to do half the clips? Oh, God. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so first off, just moving in general is a huge pain, not being able to see yourself. But my biggest fear for all of this was doing the asphyxia skip being able mm -hmm. to tell when I actually uh, gun walked far enough out past the door where I dropped without falling to my death. 
That's why I had to kind of like angle it to the side so I could see when the flashlight dropped. Yes, yes. Okay, so that's my second question. Why did you do Asphyxia Skip on New Game Plus? To my knowledge, I don't even. I think that loses time by doing that. <laughs> you got a swag. That is fair. You're definitely a braver man than I in terms of this race. Uh, give immense respect for the uh, the premium uh, shenanigans afoot here. Uh, as well, I, I, and uh, me and Schmumbler had been talking about a pyramid head versus invisible Alex race, anyways. Oh, yeah. So I'm glad we finally got to do that. That's fun. <laughs> it's fun. Uh, that being said, as well, Schmumbler, uh, since uh, you uh, won the uh, got another point for Team Robbie, it is now tied three to three. Uh, before I end up going, uh, how about you tell us uh, uh, what do you generally do and where can people find you? So you can always find me at twitch.tv slash um, Also part of a really great stream team called The Clock Tower, funny enough. And actually several of those people have been here today. Like Mac that's been doing a lot of commentary. It's a great team. Y'all should check us out. All right, and how about you, Tiddleton? Uh, where can people find you, and what do you do? Twitch.tv slash Tiggleton. Uh, like I said, I threw I throw homecoming runs almost daily, uh, as you can see here. Uh, <laughs> I also play a lot of Dark Souls and just, you know, general random stuff. So if you like that, come on down. All righty. Uh, as well, uh, for our wonderful commentary, uh, we had Nub Zombie, Starwin, and UFO Techie. Uh, if you all like to say a brief thing about yourself before we go to our next race, uh, please do. Uh, I'm Nub Zombie. Um, you can find me on twitch.tv slash Nub Zombie playing entirely too much Silent Hill. I speedrun all the games and do story playthroughs and all sorts of stuff. Starwin? Yeah, we're going in the same order. Start with. Techie. Techie, feel free to go for it. You okay, can start I'm UFO that. Techie. I stream on twitch.tv slash UFO Techie. I, I play a lot of Silent Hill and then a lot of other random stuff. I don't know. Star One's still here with us. Oh, I, sorry. No, I was setting up for because I'm coming up next, everybody, with Shattered Memories. Um, oh, yeah, you're busy. <laughs> uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm still going to be here. I'll, I'll plug myself after that run. I, I was going to let you have two. Oh, twitch.tv slash Starwin. I speedrun games sometimes. <laughs> I have been on hiatus for eight months, but ever since I've been part of this event, the fire <laughs> has been lit. So expect more perfect. coming soon. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All righty. Uh, that being said, we do have one more race for you. Uh, we are now tied up. Three to three. Uh, the last run of the night will settle whether it goes to Team Robbie or to Team Pyramid Head. Don't you go anywhere. We have our grand finale and our final race of the night coming up next. We will be right back. All right, everyone. We are back with King of the Silent Hill. It has been a fun day of Silent Hill races. I am McDysis. I'm joined by my co-host, Punchy. Hello, hello. And yeah, we are getting right about to the end. I didn't think it would turn out this way in all honesty, especially with how the intro of this event has been. But Team Robbie and Team Pyramid had managed to tie it up. Uh, it's three to three. That run of homecoming uh, definitely equalized things, I would say. Uh, a very glitch heavy run, as you all may know, and a fun one at that. Very entertaining. I, en I enjoyed all of the fun, stylish strats that were deployed. Honestly, I'm I'm shocked half of them worked, but I have to respect the grind. Uh, that being said, since it is currently three to three, we have one more run tonight. We're going to be seeing the tiebreaker essentially, uh, the final run. We are going to be diving on into Silent Hill Shattered Memories. Uh, let's go hop on over to that. Um, the runners are actually going to be uh, come some of the commentators from the previous ones. Uh, we have a uh, Starwin and Punchy, uh, and for our runners, and then for our commentators, we are once again joined by Nub and UFO Techie. Hello, I'm back for more Silent Hill Shattered Memories this time. Yeah. Um, this time, though, I believe before we begin, we do have some special rules since this one's a little bit different. Uh, our runners are actually on different platforms, believe it or not. So um, I would actually like um, Punchy to describe to us what is going on exactly. What is the equalizer here? 
Okay, so I'm playing Shattered Memories on the Japanese PlayStation 2 version. The PS2 version of this game is kind of uncommon, a bit expensive. Darwin's playing it on the Wii version, and that means he has to do, like, Wii controls to do things. But the primary difference is that there is one cutscene that cannot be skipped on the Wii version, but can be skipped on the PS2 version. So, as by way of a gentleman's agreement, I am going to just not skip it. So it is equal between us, roughly. <laughs> roughly. It's as equal as you're going to get. Doesn't that give him an advantage because the cursor moves faster on Wii? Yeah, probably. Wii yes, woo. The Wii motions. Wii woo. <laughs> I'm just going to live right. with that. <laughs> as well, before we uh, do begin, uh, Nub and Techie, uh, welcome back once again. Would you like to, uh, I guess, just introduce yourselves? Uh, yeah, I am once again and still Nub Zombie. I speedrun all of the Silent Hill games. I also do story playthroughs. And uh, I am super, super happy to have been invited to be a part of this event today. It's great seeing so much Silent Hill being run by so many amazing runners all day. And I am UFO Techie. Um, I also have been speedrunning all the Silent Hill games for, gosh, like a decade now. I'm very excited for this because this was actually my first speed game ever. So uh, it's, it's nice to see it here on on the big screen absolutely uh as well uh, i'm going to be uh joining for commentary for this one as an addition uh, i'm mcdysis i've been hosting the events and uh we'll be uh joining in for shattered memories here uh with us we are two runners uh we have our first and uh on the left on the nintendo wii we have starwin I'd like to introduce yourself hi friends starwin here once again uh a former world record holder in this game as well, but since the PS2 strats were found out, I just can't afford to buy the game. <laughs> so we're going to be running the Wii. You're going to see some fun Wii motion controls. Uh, for the most part, it's, it, this is going to be even now that we have that nice gentleman's agreement, which shout outs to Punchy for that. But uh, hope you guys are ready for a alternate, like different look of how Silent Hill could have been. And in the other corner, we have... Punchy representing Team Pyramid Head. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself, Punchy? Hi, I'm Punchy. I've been here like the whole event pretty much. It's like <laughs> it's, 4 a.m. my time now. <laughs> yeah, no, I've been here the whole time. You're not used to seeing me by now. I've been here the whole time. Yes, I'm playing on the PS2 version. Uh, I'm the current world record holder. Uh, there is no particular reason I'm playing the Japanese version. It's just the one I happen to have. I don't actually have the English version. It's cheaper. Oh, well. It's cheaper, and I can read the language, so I can get away with it. Yes. All right. With that being said, our runners will begin to focus. Uh, Nub, would you like to do the honors of counting down our runners so they may begin? Absolutely. I will count it down from three. So, Starwin, you ready? Ready. Punchy, you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one. Play video games. And the video games are <laughs> off to a an amazing start. Yeah, this one's gonna be, going to be a lot different. I'm glad. Yeah, came. after Homecoming, uh, Shattered Memories is quite the follow up. We're gonna be rapidly making our way through therapy <laughs> sessions. <laughs> yep, we're <laughs> for very specific reasons. The other therapist didn't work out for. Uh, there are bits and pieces of dialogue and different. segments of this game that uh, are altered pace. based on. No, no. The responses that no you drugs. give during these therapy no sessions games. with our Dr. Michael we'll Kaufman. Um, Understand what happened. And there are basically uh, certain choices and form. things that have already been routed out to I keep all of the, the uh, spoken dialogue and cutscenes uh, to be cut down as right short as possible truthfully. for, uh, for the duration of the run. So they are not doing any of these things randomly. These are very specific choices that they're making. Um, for this first segment. Never cheated on a partner, really? Okay. So what we're getting into is a reimagining of Silent Hill 1. We start off with, with the same scenario that Silent Hill 1 starts with and borrow some of the characters, but everything started, then. diverges pretty quickly. So we are, yeah, we're going to see some, some similar characters uh, characters uh we've got dad of the year harry mason running around yelling cheryl 
I have no doubt Darwin is uh, mashing A to Cheryl. <laughs> Uh, as well, we actually open up with some pretty early tech. You may notice, hey, it's really dark. Yeah, our runners have to run in the dark because uh, the, having on the flashlight actually generates more lag, therefore making them run physically slower. Cheryl. This is this was yeah, already. Uh, I was gonna say this was primary initially developed for the Wii, so it's all Wii controls. You see, for the puzzles, uh, you have to grab things and move things around. Um, and then it was po later ported to PS2 and PSP, so they have to port those motion controls over. So it's, it's uh, you're either using motion controls or the ported version of motion controls, which could be awkward in its own way. Cheryl? Yeah, definitely. And immediately there's uh, potential like choices and things that they could be making here. Um, but, uh, of course, just to route everything out, like this game is very much built around uh, kind of exploring and looking at things and, and altering itself depending on what you look at, plus those answers you give to Kaufman. So they had an option to go through like a thrift store there, but nope, electronic store, it's faster. Uh, this puzzle right here is, I believe, RNG. You're supposed to find the can with the coin, uh, the key in it. It looks like Bunchy is... He had first try, but he didn't empty it properly. Uh, yeah, the key. Uh, looks like they're actually all in sync now because uh, Star Wars did get it first try on the coin grab. Or the key, key, not coin, key. Yeah, I think that's part of the, the meta of this game is that you can learn the run really quickly and then it becomes like all these little micro RNGs that can... I don't know, change your time slightly. It's it's easy to be very consistent in this. Um, it's but yeah, you getting like the the really great RNGs is this just the final the final grind. So Oh I'm excited so I, this, for some yeah. gumball RNG later. <laughs> this this could oh, be a very God. close race. Especially with that gentleman's agreement. Yes. I definitely appreciate uh, Punchy for doing that, uh, especially considering uh, while preparing for this race, I think Punchy beat world, his own world record like three times in preparation. That sounds about right. Yeah, uh, that is uh, downright terrifying. So uh, the gentleman's agreement will at the very least equalize the run. Uh, as well, I believe we're going to be entering uh, the first of the, so to speak, other world sections of the game. Yeah, this is going to be our first running segment coming up uh, for both of our runners here. And essentially, this is where RNG can really start to uh, cost you a bit of time if you're unlucky. Uh, enemy positions and how uh, intensely they chase you uh, are, are pretty much randomized. Uh, from from run to run with this game, so we're going to be seeing uh, them both knowing exactly where to go, and and they know exactly how to handle enemies. But uh, there are times where they can just be directly in your way, right on the other side of a door, and uh, cost you some time. So we'll see how this goes. All right, now that we are running in the cold, uh, there's going to be a mechanic here. Uh, simply stated, it's called Dude Speed. Um, the idea here is that while they are running at a set pace right now, uh, this can actually change based on enemy spawns. Uh, whenever they aggro an enemy, uh, they start running faster because, oh no, I'm being chased. Uh, so getting dudes gets you speed. A uh, pretty apt name. I love that that's become what that's called. <laughs> I can like, appreciate it. When there's when there's enemies around, when there's dudes around chasing you, you run faster. Yeah, so I, th you I go think at dude speed. Uh, yeah, I think Punchy got like the faster run speed. He did. Uh, really not. Uh, I, I guess the best example they could really have. I uh, literally being able to see the dude speed in action as Punchy is zooming. Uh, Starwind does lose a little bit of the uh, the mat, uh, the sink that we had there. Uh, but it's still pretty close as we're speaking. Yeah, but you can definitely see the difference there with, with it uh, side by side. There, finally, finally starting at the speed. The dude has speed. <laughs> and 
And Punchy is out of the first level, and so is Starwin. Still pretty close. Still very close. It's good that we touched on the car crash. And again, there are, you know, this this run, there there's a lot of RNG elements. All of these running segments are always a big risk uh, with how many times an enemy can get in your way or grab you. Um, and uh, they're, they're both very experienced runners. They're going to know how to mitigate that very well, but it can still be pretty costly to either side. Uh, not to mention some other random elements that we'll be coming across. But now we've got another therapy visit. We're speedrunning therapy now. Let's play true or false. Is it true to say you're a private person? This is a comfy run. It's the perfect finale. Oh, absolutely. It's also kind of nice because we started with Silent Hill 1. In a way, we're ending on Silent Hill 1. Sort of. Yeah, that's yeah. the reimagining. Prefer to spend time with friends over family. Just wait until, like, we do this again next year or the year after, where we start with Silent Hill 2 and end with Silent Hill 2 Remake. That might have to be the plan. Oh, man. I will say, uh, while we are in the therapy section, it has been a very fun event so far, and I'm kind of surprised how well it's been going. I'm not going to lie to you. Whenever I plan anything, it's kind of the, uh, I'm kind of expecting failure. What a lovely family. <laughs> nah, we got it locked down. It's a, it's a nice, small, little comfy community. We, we exercised the evil, thanks to uh, Techie and uh, Emma. <laughs> uh, we exercised the evil that is Silent Hill Origins, so it should be smooth sailing now. Exactly. Uh, also, there's not too many differences time-wise on the Wii and PS2 right now, because we did agree not to skip a certain cutscene. Uh, most of it is just less awkward controls on the PS2. Uh, right now, you may notice as well, now they're out of therapy, uh, the runners are just like going wild in the backseat of this car. Uh, why is this? I guess tonight everything is out of whack. The uh, this yeah, I believe it has an effect on a <laughs> later cutscene. Sorry. Your your agitation or something. It's it's right. this game's a very like un, I won't say unknown, but like it's the science isn't exactly dialed in. This game runs so many weird counters and uh, so many of the most minuscule things you do can have effects on how the rest of the game plays out. It's only exactly. Like right here, this is one of the few that, that can actually sort of be manipulated, but by by shifting around back and forth, you're going to get a cutscene immediately after with Sybil, and she'll either have a line of dialogue where she talks about you being restless. She's like, you're awful restless back very there. Restless back there Mr. Um, Mason, you you know, versus uh, saying restless. you're awful quiet back course, there if you just sort of sit still. And the being restless in the back seat gives us this trail of dialogue, essentially. And it is shorter than if you're just sitting there still. So that's what a lot of this game comes down to. There are some very particular actions and choices being made, even if it doesn't seem like it's an obvious choice, uh, that both the runners are aware of that are uh, affecting these cutscenes and elements of the game to uh, cut them down, make it as short as possible, just to get through the run as quickly as, as uh, they can. Time to see how much Starwin can struggle to open a car door. Pretty good, actually. Pretty quick. Sometimes the Wii controls, this is where some of those differences between PS2 and Wii can make like a slight difference, where... Um, you have faster cursor movement with the Wii uh, because you just point your Wii remote at the TV and your cursor immediately snaps to wherever you're pointing it. It's it's very intuitive. It's what the game was designed around. But then it can also make some of the finer actions uh, a little bit difficult to do. Whereas PS2, usually it kind of locks in, like snaps in place. Even though the cursor speed is slightly slower, it's more consistent. Yeah, I think the, the the key in the soda can is kind of like an example of that because there's a button that rotates the can on like PSP and PS2, but on the Wii you can just go crazy and just shake it around, which can be faster if you're used to the controls. Yeah, if you're that's the thing. If you're used to doing it, it, it can actually be pretty quick. Yeah, it's like a unique learning curve depending on how you pick it up. It's wild here is it kind of looks like just running through the wilderness, but it's very particular on the line that they're taking. Yeah, it's very easy to um, 
like mess up some of the movement in some parts of this game. Uh, this part especially because the woods are just kind of vast and everything is very dark and snowy and it can be kind of hard to tell where exactly you are um, without like really familiar, you know, landmarks. But they've they've run this game enough. I'm sure they know exactly what the trees look like when they're on the perfect line to get to the uh, little little sewer area, which uh, they're crossing through now. And climbing back back up out. Yeah, a lot of these situations, you know, Harry Harry has just evaded a cop. Is now running through the woods. Uh, we we gotta find our daughter. Yeah, there's there's even again some some sort of specific movement uh, things here and there, like right there. Um, being aware that this call is about to come in from the cop we just ran away, way, ran away from, Sybil. And uh, being aware that that call is about to happen and then canceling it very quickly the way Punchy just did. Uh, and yeah, that little things like that uh, kind of make up this this run for the most part. Yeah, there's you. You get calls. I mean, the the the, tel the phone is the gimmick in this game. Um, usually, you're dialing, you know, numbers to solve puzzles or just for, you know, I guess uh, it's if you're doing the UFO ending, or, you're going around taking pictures with it. Yeah, there's of yeah, there's UFOs. A yeah, there's picture puzzles. Uh, but yeah, there's I think there's three calls that you get that you can skip. Two, you just hang like hang up on them. Don't answer them. You can you can skip the final phone call. <laughs> we'll get to, we'll we'll get we'll get there. But yeah, it's a little more work. And Punchy's going Punchy's going through this uh, next running segment now. And let's see how long it takes to achieve dude speed. Sometimes you can be really unfortunate and not get it for an entire segment. Enemies just get stuck in walls and lost. Yeah, the AI is but. really strange. Sometimes it, it becomes like super aggressive. Sometimes you'll just get jumped so many times going through segments. It doesn't even seem to rubber band necessarily. Like sometimes areas are just full of dudes. Yeah, and that's what a lot of this race we're going to see uh, coming down to most likely is these running segments. And uh, Punchy making use of a flare one of the only defenses you you don't really have combat in this game there's no way to fight these enemies off um you can basically hide in lockers which is useless and slow and not advisable yeah it's never a good runs. idea even, even um, casually it's never a good idea <laughs> even casually yeah it rarely works but um the flares is, is going to be your best deterrent for them you pick it up in you basically have like a radius around you that if the enemies get too close to you, they'll stop and go, ah, fire, and get, get all scared and stop chasing you for a bit. And you can actually drop them and leave them in place, but I think for the most part, it's more useful to keep it with you as you're running, just in case a uh, an, an unexpected enemy is directly in front of you at some point. Because a lot of times, like these doors, while Punchy is uh, busting through them, occasionally you can come across enemies that'll just be right in your way. Very quick puzzle there, too. Yeah, hitting the, the quack hoot, squawk, squawk, cluck. There are these little puzzles where you have to, like, uh, I think you get a voicemail, and then um, it'll give you, like, a little hint. Mm. And we can see Starwind getting to that same puzzle, and, uh, again, those Wii controls, sometimes that's one of those puzzles where it's very easy to kind of move your wrist just the tiniest little bit too much, and uh, you wind up hitting the wrong key, even just once. Not not like a massive time loss or anything, but uh, it it does kind of showcase the difference in the Wii motion control versus kind of the the PS2 more direct inputs. Yeah, 
and these extra statues that you can tear down the to force the enemies to jump over them. The enemies all run faster than you, but anytime that you or they have to perform an action, you perform it faster. So it always works out like you can you could climb up and down walls all day and like they'll never catch you because they're very slow at it. I think that's kind of how they, they balance it out. Oh, that was that was so unlucky. The Ooh, that grab right outside the door, right at the end. Oh, and punch oh, you. <laughs> another one. That and that's exactly what we're talking about with how random these running segments can be. Everything can be perfect. Everything can be super clean right up until the last moment. And then suddenly there is a, a monster clinging to your throat. Yeah, especially if they're just right between you and where you're going, then you're you kind of really don't have any recourse for that. Not unless you happen to still be holding on to a flare, but for the most part, there's not like too much uh, efficiency when it comes to those. You kind of just want to pick them up and most of the time pop them immediately. But it does kind of vary from from segment to segment. Harry, I've been calling you. Did All you right, and off? Punchy no, makes just, uh, it to I was, kind of the the phone call, catching up with Sybil, Harry, the police okay? officer. Yeah, I'm okay. And uh, we'll be going into the I'm next therapy field. segment with Kaufman, where some school. more Listen, very Harry, precise choices will be made. They often use it as an emergency shelter in severe weather. Go to the gym and wait there for me. Emergency. Was Midwich the name of the original school in the Silent Hill one? Yes, Cheryl could be there. Will you do this for me? Yeah, oh, no, it was, um... Yeah, but if Cheryl's not there, I can't wait. I'm, I'm sorry, I just can't. Harry, it was it Midwich? Now, oh, now I'm second-guessing myself. <laughs> what, I, yeah, wait, was, I was it Midwich Elementary? Mid yeah, I think it's so. It's Midwich Elementary okay. in Silent Hill 1. And then it's uh, Midwich High School in this. When I was starting out, the popular theory... Yeah, yeah they could be it, attached to each other. Maybe, maybe there are some really, uh... Maybe it's still an elementary really school, but for really, like, up, old say. children. Send them to high school. Yeah, the the Midwich Cuckoos is a science fiction novel. Nice folders. And Back to therapy. Okay, let's move on. I'm going. So one thing we haven't really mentioned much in the world of the I I, I was say the world of therapy is that our runners are choosing specific answers to go for a particular ending because that ending I want to say just ends up being faster for one reason or another. Uh, well, with with the actual endings, the the ending itself, I don't think really has any impact. The the timer stops right as you hit the final door. Right, right, then... right. But it's more, I think, decisions that lead to one of the like. I think you do a lot of the decisions that bring you to like the alcoholism ending for some reason are just faster, and I don't know why. Yeah, like you're, um, yeah, the decisions you make throughout the game uh, steer you towards that ending. Right, right. So yeah, that's the that if you follow the route accordingly. That's going to be typically the ending that you get, but uh, the ending itself is not like where the time save occurs. Right, right. It's just the the choices being made, altering the the cutscenes and dialogue and things like that uh, throughout the course of the run being shorter. Done. Also, one of the more minor differences that we haven't talked about yet, but I guess it's kind of major. Uh, if you've been watching Star Winds, uh, you'll definitely know that. Uh, his text is all English, Punchy's is Japanese. I know we talked about the version differences earlier, but really getting into it, all of Punchy's text is in Japanese. I know I just said that, but think about that for a moment. Uh, there's gonna be a puzzle later where you have to type this in, and I, oh, yeah. Punchy has to analyze immediately what some of the questions are going to be, reading it in Japanese. Uh, talking with him on this, um, you know, when he was building up to it, uh, I think... Just, oh yeah, uh, here's the question. You still have to type the answers in English for them. It's just, you have to read it immediately in Japanese and internalize that quickly. Which, uh, luckily, uh, Punchy does have some comprehension of the language. Definitely more than I do. Yeah, that's that's really good that you pointed that out. Because, like, for example, uh, in, in the Silent Hill Origins race, uh, you know, using... Uh, Japanese version of Silent Hill Origins doesn't really have any impact on the run itself. You don't need to read any of the subtitles to, to essentially know what you're doing. Uh, but for this game, you actually do for that one particular puzzle. Yeah, I hadn't even thought uh, of that. 
So that works out for Punchy, uh, that he will be able to read and understand uh, enough Japanese for, for translating what question, uh, what security question on a computer is being asked and then giving the correct response in English, <laughs> typed out in English. Yeah, I, th I think the the case was that they developed this port to just try to squeeze like a little bit more profit back out of it. So it, I don't think any there wasn't a whole ton of work, I guess, put into it in that regard. Like nothing is really super different. You see the graphics are kind of like uh, simplified a little bit. Yeah, it was definitely an afterthought. There's uh, there was actually a pretty recent. Uh, sort of documentary done with oh, uh, some right. of the developers some of the developers of Shattered Memories kind of talking about that and that's one of the things that uh, Sam Barlow the director was uh, was talking about in some of those interviews <laughs> yeah uh, like the PSP and PS2 was like a complete afterthought and um, you know sort of uh, a more like a contractual uh, obligation thing um, because originally there was like a different PSP game that was being developed that got cancelled so they wound up porting this, even though when they were developing it, they didn't have any intentions of porting it. So it wasn't really made for those systems. And they even had to alter some stuff pretty like it, it doesn't impact the run. But if you're playing casually, for example, uh, going to the Balkan um, oh, yeah. uh, nightclub later on. Uh, on the Wii version, there's like an entire upstairs floor, and on the PS2 and PSP version, it's just gone, uh, where they had to make some of these graphic and, and I guess, memory cuts to, to make everything work on PSP and PS2. Yeah, this is great for that. Seeing them side by side, especially well synchronized like this, it's like you can see all these little, like, minute changes that it, they had to yeah. make. If you know what you're looking for, there are definitely some some subtle differences between the two. Yeah, like the running sections are pretty stark. Like the the edges are super contrasted in the Wii. Like the the blue of the edges are, is is like super glowy, and it's like it's really muted on the the PSP version or PS2. Also, um, talking really quick about what they our runners just did. Um, all of the numbers here are you know they're preset. Uh, they're not really RNG. Um, so you just have to memorize it and you can type it in without having to worry. Uh, they also go through the art room because I think it's just faster to type that number in. Yeah, the yeah, other one's the a planetarium. Puzzle, the planetarium having to go through to the other side is just longer. It's the same solution. You're just walking through the planetarium and dialing a number that you already know. Also really quick. Uh, it um, just takes longer to go through that planetarium on, than the art room. On Punchy side right now, he's having in the questions. He got geology. He has racquetball, which is the worst RNG. Um, he, no, uh, 12th night. Oh, 12th, 12th night. night oh, 12th night. That's right. And then he got uh, shiners. shiners. That's good RNG. Oh, sorry. sorry. We got yeah. racquetball. Double racquetball. There are some, what, I think the shortest ones are like four or five letters. There's Otto, there's Nikki. Um, yeah, five letters for Nikki. Uh, Otto is four Did letters. They both get geology and racquetball? I swear to God, if he gets shiners. It just froze on Six me. letters for Hawaii. Hawaii is another short one. Oh, now we got oh, the... Oh, hey, you guys get RNG Otto. This is Otto. Yep. There's Otto. There's Otto. You don't remember. Yeah, so it, like all, all these like tiny little bits of RNG that are just a few seconds in variation. Why would we move there? But yeah, it's absolutely fine. miserable uh, coming up here. One of the questions you can get is uh, asking for the title of a famous Shakespeare comedy, <laughs> which is The Twelfth Night. And it takes so long, it painstakingly makes you type out The Twelfth Night. Good luck. Yes. Cheryl? You can also... Uh, I think if you put in all the answers and then you accidentally hit the forgot your password, it makes you start all over. Who the hell do you think you are? If I remember correctly. Oh, does it? Can can you actually reset it for new questions? I didn't know that. Yeah, I think if you miss and hit that. Yeah, a couple of unskippable scenes here. Some of the few... Uh, Throughout the run, yeah, I think the I think most of them are scenes that immediately come before these nightmare sections. I don't know if that's a 
that could just be a coincidence, but that seems to be most of them. Possibly. It, it might be there. It would be smart to do that to kind of mask like some of the loading. Yeah, and the transitions of, uh, during the cutscene, too. So if you skipped mm -hmm. it, it would just like dump you into a different area completely. Which, I mean, plenty of other Silent Hill games do, but this is a Wii game, damn it. It's got to be simple. <laughs> got to be, right? be accessible. And Well, here we are on running segment number three. Very much like before, uh, just trying to run through the, f the fastest possible route through this area um, but there's... without running into any enemies, ideally. Yeah, but then there's a catch because you get to the ends and you can't just leave. Yeah, this one's a little bit different. You got to go on a photo quest. Oh, I see the dude speed from uh, Star One is picked up. Oh, yeah, and the but dude is picked up. That's, that's, dude speed that's, activated. That's the double edged sword is like, yeah, you go faster, but it means someone's chasing you. Oh, I he's like getting speed. Yeah. OK, like this cool speed. enemy RNG that Starwin is getting is so bad. <laughs> there are so many people just showed up. Yeah, you can see by comparison, there's like nobody like five, bothering <laughs> punchy. Like five people just drop down all at the same time on Starwin's side. You have to understand those people were hired clearly to rig the race. <laughs> the paid actors. And the paid actors, are, I can't uh, believe it. There's summoned <laughs> by channel points. I forgot to bet. <laughs> oh, I've been betting Team Robbie all all day. I forgot to bet on myself earlier. I was going to do it. And I didn't. Now I regret it. But yeah, you're you're the paparazzi and you gotta run around and take pictures for the the school newspaper, I believe. Uh, it's it's much worse than that. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not, I it's won't a, go into the gory a, fellow, details, but yeah, yeah, I don't know how much of that we want to get into, but we'll we'll go with that story. We'll <laughs> we're taking pictures. You're going on a uh, fun school newspaper a fun photography adventure. You know, similar a la Pokemon Snap. We're not, perhaps I'm not gonna pay. Yeah, I'm not gonna pay too much attention to uh, what the subject of any of those photos was. Yeah, got a nice, uh, is this 2008, I believe? He's got the, the nice, like, 2008 smartphone. Yeah, and can I say, just from, like, a graphic standpoint, how much I love seeing, like, the delay in-game when you hold up the camera on the phone, like, how much it emulates kind of the way smartphone screens looked at the time when you're, like, panning around trying to take a camera. It's great. Oh, yeah, I think when it's, like, when it saves and it has to, like, it, they like make it look all chunky. <laughs> it didn't make any sense. <laughs> it's supposed to be doing something intensive. The Simmons Street address? That's the other side of town. You got a car? Yeah, coming coming out of school and now the, everyone's finishing up. Like Starwin got the bad RNG for sure. I'm looking after it while Yeah, that was that was definitely brutal, but that's how these running segments can go. But this this race can still absolutely go either way. There's still several running segments, some of the most annoying ones. Uh, still yet to uh, to to come up. You want my oh yeah, we'll the get there. other um, cutscenes that you can't skip are the ones that immediately precede these little walking events, which there will be two of. You're the car crash guy. We gotta listen to Michelle talk about churros. Yeah, well now it's a race within a race. Harry racing Michelle to the uh, <laughs> to the nightclub. Oh yeah, which by the way the Balkan is. The nightclub in this game, but it's the church in Silent Hill One, <laughs> which I think is a yeah. It's a it's a, it's a reimagining. It, well, it's a it's a fun, uh, maybe subversive kind of. It's a yeah. It's like this holy place, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, a church, and 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 here it's a nightclub. Yeah, same same with what they do to Dahlia, which we'll see later. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that. And interestingly enough here, like the way the AI is uh, during this walking segment, Michelle will actually just like speed up no matter how tightly you cut your corners and uh, try to try to get in front of her. Um, it is possible to get in front of her and there will be another walking segment like this later on where it's possible, but it's like 
very difficult and I think somewhat random if it'll actually happen. It relies a little bit on how the AI will behave once you manage to kind of get a little bit of a lead. Oh, he wants it too. It's, it's just hard. We, you know, we've been together for five years. I had to step out for just a moment. I'm back. Now we're out in the world. How's the, how's the race with Michelle? John's a lucky guy. Yeah, the, that's the what final I was stretch explaining was on, on Punchy's side. Yeah, look, she, yep. she suddenly gets so much faster. Do you see that boost? You see the nitro boosters that she just kicked in? She starts zooming way up. But if you position yourself just right, you can get in front of her. Same thing with the Lisa segment later. I don't know that it actually saves any time. Probably, you know, like a fraction of a second if you're in front of her and that much closer to hitting the uh, cutscene trigger here. Yeah, even even if it's but yeah, even it, like it might not be any benefit other than just like doing it optimally, putting puts you in front of her. Mm hmm. Really interesting puzzle here. Uh, so the key is always going to be in the third place you look, and you don't have to spend too much time looking. So Punchy immediately just looks and then cancels uh, his investigation of the first two items. Uh, so that the third place that he checks is where the keys he's looking for will spawn. So we're actually manipulating that uh, to put the keys in a preferential spot where it is very fast to get them. Yeah, the, the slightly slower swag strat is to spawn them in the cookie jar. <laughs> where you have like a whole separate opening animation that you have to do you gotta like <laughs> yeah, spin your Wii remote not, not optimal at all but it's very it's funny Wii runs can be funny sometimes speaking of Dahlia uh, for anyone who's stuck around since the very beginning since Silent Hill 1 uh, this, you won't recognize her but this is Dahlia she's kind of got this grungy punk thing going on She's in her Alanis Morissette phase. I can remember most things. Just or, or more Avril Lavigne. Oh, for sure. Got the, how are those shoes called? The All Stars, I think. Yeah. I don't know who I am. No. The hoodie vest, or the, the vest hoodie, I don't know. And she's complicated. We're sleeping together? This is a joke, right? A really lame joke. I wish it was. And I believe this dialogue with Dahlia is one of the things that was manipulated with some of the choices earlier. This is one of the scenes that can potentially be longer depending on longer or shorter depending on um, kind of choices made up to this point. And Punchy's about to do the drawbridge puzzle for anyone who was watching Silent Hill 1 when he ran up and used this drawbridge just by using a key. Instead, it's like a fun light and lever puzzle. Certain lights light up and correspond to flipping certain levers or flipping nothing if it's green. And it is randomized. What sequence you get during that. But it doesn't really have too much of an impact on how long it takes to solve. This next cutscene with Dahlia is also, uh, it changes a lot depending on your actions. Um, I think in general, like you want everyone to be kind of like aggressive or like maybe dismissive or confrontational because otherwise they're all like concerned and asking you how you're doing and that takes longer. Mm -hmm. And we're about to see uh, Punchy's gentleman moment. Yeah, this is the cutscene that's only skippable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the hands are up. This is the one. It's only the true, well, true gentleman. He's a good lad. Not skipping this. This is this is one hundred percent free real estate right here. That that Punchy's turning down. It's it's free time saved between the PS2 and Wii version. This entire cutscene is skippable, but uh, yeah, it's it's because it's not uh, skippable on the Wii. Punchy, Punchy, doing a great thing for his friend Starwin in this wonderful race. It's also pre-rendered on the PS2. You'll see on the Wii version, it's just it's just playing out. It's it's all yeah, live. that's true. Another one of those uh, memory time save things. Oh, for sure. For the for the port, 
You can definitely tell when they do the transitions live, like the everything icing over, like it, it can chug a little bit. I don't think it's ever like a problem. It's like it, it can get borderline sometimes. But in general, it's just, uh, just at, a little times. few skips here and there. Mm hmm. And even getting out of this car is like a little bit of a puzzle. Uh, you kind of have to do things in a particular order. You need to move to the back seat, get a flashlight, shine the flashlight at a window. Uh, so it's a it's a little sequence of actions kind of going on to sort of just progress this puzzle. This game has from, some... from section to section. Sorry, what's up? No, that's it. No, I was, I was just gonna say there's uh, some like pre notorious soft locks in this game. If you go through some old game FAQs message boards, they're they're talked about a lot. Um, one of them is here is if you mess with the radio ahead of time, then it can just like force you to you can't end this part. I think it keeps you from yeah. drowning or anything, but also you can't get out of the, the car. Yes, that is that is accurate. Um, you can you can absolutely soft lock by trying to set the radio too early. Um, cause essentially the, the whole puzzle hinges on everything unfreezing enough for you to turn this dial, uh, to finish the puzzle and open up the car door. But if you try and set it too early, uh, yeah, you can, you can cause the game to just sort of soft lock you. I don't know if that's version specific or not. I've definitely had it happen to me on Wii. Yeah. I, I don't know. The, the, Ooh. the Sony ports are so, uh. Everyone is going to die. Underexplored, perhaps. <laughs> Speaking of potential soft locks, how many gift subs are we putting on the line here? If uh, Double Lisa happens. Oh, gosh. Double Lisa. This game, this game has some weird glitches, and they're all awesome and very interesting. <laughs> so there's a relatively rare uh, uh, run ending moment. Uh, that that uh, we've all coined double Lisa. Later on, we're going to have uh, uh, an interaction okay. with everyone's favorite Silent Hill 1 nurse, Lisa Garland. And uh, there is a moment where she walks out of a back room and occasionally there will just suddenly be two of her and the entire game will just stop working. <laughs> yeah, it's a transition to a cutscene and it just like, it, it, it plays a great like crash tone. Just just an exercise. You know, the whole, whole system locks up. I've had the like the same kind of crash happen, like exiting cars. Something, you know, it's trying to load the outside world and it just doesn't work. You know, I'm right. hoping it doesn't happen. <laughs> it's, well, yeah, it's very, Again, it's very entertaining, already... but you know that does <laughs> things off. Kind we're of we're going to keep our fingers crossed. There's definitely no way that it's going to happen just because, like, a commentator mentioned it oh, at this point. I'm not going to. You wood. shush over there. I I know what happened earlier. I saw a few things. Mentioned that commentators mentioned something. <laughs> oh, um, Bowen mentioned earlier that the speedrun usually ends in the drunk ending, and the jacket that you wear after the whole bridge scenario changes depending on how your your uh, your game has been played. So the, he's the the athletic jacket is like the alcoholic drunk. Uh. I guess they call it a personality inventory, I believe, but it means you're you're leaning towards that ending. It can be like a fancy, fashionable jacket. That's your your sexy ending. You can be just oh yeah, you get like the nice brown leather jacket. I think there's like a black leather jacket. There's a few few variants here. Yeah, I forget what the the nice family man one. I mean, it's like he starts in like a sweater vest looking thing. <laughs> I, I forget. That might be but the brown jacket one because it's close to Silent Hill One, Harry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, it's <laughs> and Harry just took a tumble out of the wheelchair down the stairs. There. Funny enough, um, Sam Barlow, again the director for this game, recently retweeted uh, uh, some behind-the-scenes footage where they were doing the mocap one for that. Moment. Oh, I saw I that. I want you all great. to pay attention to Starwin right now because he's on the Wii and has to do the wheelchair motions. Yes. Oh yeah. 
So this is motion controls in action. Let's go, Starwind. <laughs> Not just wiggling the controller, go getting into it. Oh yeah. Full wheelchair mode engage. Uh, we can't play it for you on stream for legal reasons, but play your own Eurobeat in the background. I'm sorry, next GDQ, you stole me a round of initial beat. If they even have it. I don't know if they still have it. <laughs> next one that happens in person Absolutely. has initial beat. Oh, I'm always down. You see that uh, Punchy's, like when you start this out, you're already kind of limping, and I think did he get, oh yeah, he got hit earlier. So he's taking some damage, and now he's kind of stumbling. And I guess that's kind of the... Oof, that enemy <laughs> on the other side of the <laughs> door. That was so lucky. It didn't even do the like little... Uh, there's kind of like a half grab where like they reach through the door, and you still have to press a button to stop them. Yeah, it gives you like a QTE prompt. Yeah, well, if the timing's just right, you just slam the door in their face. Oof. Enemies grabbing on Starwin as well. And even worse, you have to motion control throw them off, which can be one of the like least consistently registered motions in this entire motion controlled game on Wii. See, I, actually, I having played this so much on the Wii, I, I ended up, I grew to not mind because you can buffer it so far in advance. Like, if you just give it one nice shove, like, as soon as they jump on you, then it'll register just fine. I, see, I watch people play it casually so much and start like shaking it like crazy. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. I mean, <laughs> yeah, and I mean that is fair, but compared to like push push the button that is yeah. in the direction of enemy. Oh yeah, for sure. That's <laughs> that's a huge. There's not much comparison. Puzzle's always the same. You just gotta set the radio, to, or you have to set the radio, and then you have to make a phone call to request the song "Daddy's Girl" on the radio. You've got this crazy yep. song request system. Open. Come on. Yeah, where they oh, apparently open. registered a bunch of different cell Are phone numbers okay? to correspond with different songs. Oh yeah, it's, it's wow, I've never heard of that before, but there's a lot of weird puzzles based on things we've never seen before, like the gumball. Even supposed to be here today. We'll talk about that oh. when we get there. <laughs> we'll get there. First we get to meet- How many, how many shakes? <laughs> yeah, oh my god. But first we get to meet Lisa from Silent Hill 1. And guess what? She has a head injury, just like Silent Hill 1. Sorry. She's got blood do running down her face. It's totally fine though, that's what she said, so. Oh, it's nothing. Oh, it's- Head wounds bleed a lot, it's whatever. My apartment is a few blocks yeah, it's fine. She literally just wants to walk it off. I'm heading that way, let me walk you. And again, talking about, like, okay, really? because everything for this, this game is routed out in a specific way regarding your choices to make dialogue shorter, you don't get to see a lot of the other variants of these kind of scenes where sometimes Lisa is acting, like, especially weird. She's, like, joking around, calls you Harry Houdini. Sometimes the car is an ambulance, like she crashed an ambulance. What a nurse was driving an ambulance for, I don't know. My daughter went um, there after our accident. But yeah, there's all sorts of weird little varying cutscenes. Yeah, so <laughs> but now we're back to the foot race between Harry Houdini and Lisa Garland. Well, like just this massive gaping hole in the wall and everything's on fire. We're just like, oh, Ooh. oh we're going home. <laughs> Punchy Need trying to take that inside edge very close. He's intentionally putting his left wheels into the gutter in order to uh, drift oh, gosh. more cleanly these, around Lisa. If, if these parts had some kind of real, like, walking speed tech, that would be incredible. Though some patients mistake me for an angel. Yeah, a lot of it just kind of comes down to, to the lines that you take and kind of how you round these corners, but you can absolutely get in front of Lisa. Uh, yeah, the, I've managed to do it a few times on... I've only ever run this game on Wii, so I don't know how much of this translates over to the PS2. I would assume that it works relatively the same way, but who knows? Yeah, this next stretch is where it gets a lot easier. And then uh, Very nice corner. If you, if you walk fast enough, it cuts off their conversations, even just while you're walking around. Oh, but Lisa's hitting the nitro boosters. You holding up? Coming around the left-hand side. Oh, uh, yeah, so they don't play fair. I just need to get home and put my... And she moves around to pass on the left, prevent Lisa from snaking, keeping him from behind. Your accident. It's funny, they... These are some very high-level movements. They, she, she'll she turn to look at Harry, but only when she's talking. I call my insurance, they always try and twist it. The point of attack will come in the next eight hairpin turns. Driving? Yes. 
Now you're trying to trick Okay, here it is. It's going to pop in from the right. Let's see. Punch this guy. Oh! He's going to come in from the right, hit the boosters. Yeah, no, we're, no in problem. we're in front. We're in front. He's done it. Blacked out before the crash. I just remember coming too. I remember. You're going you're, you're to show her to her own apartment. I don't think Star Wind is, is coming up onto the same on turns. The, uh, the uh the stream but he has been laughing that he has this taken like the lead over lisa <laughs> she's she's like <laughs> twitching a lot too she's trying to catch up i sort of got if he soft blocks his game i'm gonna laugh even harder <laughs> wouldn't that be funny if that like increases the chances of uh, oh i'm not even gosh. gonna say it no <laughs> i've already said it i've already said it too many times and i don't want to be blamed so you can you can look around here you can watch tv or you can Watch Lisa change. It's faster. It's faster to watch her change. There's there's legitimate speed reasons for what is on you, screen. It's absolutely necessary. <laughs> even even casually. The seconds. Think of the seconds being saved right now. <laughs> like as, as a casual game, this game has so many uh, horny moments. Okay, we Punchy has officially passed the uh, the point of potential. Game ending sadness. Starwind not even looking. <laughs> He's keeping his eyes closed. He can't actually hear us. He's very respectfully not looking. Isn't it slower to do this? It might still be fine. I don't know. I think he needed to look deeply. Look in the cabinet. Bottom shelf. Here it comes. We're good. Uh, yep. We're good. <laughs> Let's go. The the fist pump, because yeah, that is legitimately uh, anybody who's ever had a run end at that point at, at that moment because of double Lisa. Uh, you always get like your your heart rate starts going up before that. Legitimately, it's a super rare thing, but it does happen where your whole game, your whole run, can just die right there. So it's a little scary. It's a little scary. Oh the man, this is the the super long therapy session. More often than not. I like the duality of man there. One of them is looking if deeply to save I seconds, the other is being respectful to lose seconds. Only I hadn't said that. If only I'd said something. Yeah, this is an incredibly long, well explained puzzle by Michael Kaufman. And uh, ultimately, the choice of what you do for this one, unlike all of the choices up to this point, um, really doesn't affect anything as far as the speed run is concerned so i think you just don't touch this puzzle you just there is a mash through it as quickly as you can so watching star wars and his his pill like fell out of the bottle behind some other bottles bunchy's reading manga to stay awake passionately in love with celestine but she does not love him one day, Wilhelm comes to the king and asks for Celestine's hand in marriage. All right, yeah, everyone's on break. Everyone refresh your drinks. Yeah, this is uh, one of the best things about a speed run is when you have a moment to uh, sort of kick back and relax and enjoy a few moments to yourself. Yeah, it is like a while, uh, minute and a half. He's got to tell this whole story after he tells you about the guilt. <laughs> Although, because of that, it does make the next input a very important one. You do not oh, want to mess yeah. up this next <laughs> Is input. Is Punchy reading? Yes, I believe he's reading manga. I can't quite tell from the cover what manga it is. How can I? It's a book. What I want you to do is line <laughs> Darwin the left the chair. He, he's just gone. He's gone now. Whose fault was it? At the left, Don't worry, he's a professional. He knows what he's doing. Most innocent. But yes, you really don't points. want to mess up this... <laughs> Where, where he'll ask, but, did you get all that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he legitimately asks, did you get all that? And you want to make sure that you do not give the wrong input there because he will explain that <laughs> entire story again. It's a great story, but man. You only want to hear it once. Yeah. Let's continue. Always give the bull the short end of the stick. Or bull. He doesn't have a name. <laughs> Coffin's so rude the whole game. It's just committing atrocity after another. 
Um, oh yeah, I mean, alternate <laughs> title for this game could easily be Worst Therapist Simulator. It's it's so fun. It's such a great like twist on, I guess, the the characters of the original. Because I mean, Kaufman in Silent Hill One, like actual Silent Hill One, is also kind of an asshole. True. Now he's just a, a therapist instead of like a doctor, doctor, practitioner, or whatever. He tries his best at. He's got. <laughs> He's got like twenty bottles of alcohol back there, and oh, that's right, how that's how right. the very intro cutscene, like when you very first meet him, he's pouring like a glass of whiskey or something. Lisa, so punch you to the strap there by walking close enough to the mall. You get a phone call, which just tells you, "Come back to my house," from Lisa. Yeah, there's a little side route you can take here for some extra items and such, but really you can just once you approach the mall, Lisa calls you back. Lisa. And this is actually, there is a little bit of uh, speed tech there, or at least intentional routing behind that. It's not really tech. You're just picking a particular colored pill that is not the color pill that Lisa requests. Uh, it doesn't matter which pill that you choose, as long as it's the wrong one, and it makes that message or that call that you get from Lisa uh, end much shorter, since while a call is happening, you're forced to be in reduced movement speed. You're just walking and you can't run or sprint. So ending that call and returning to a full sprint as quickly as possible is basically done by making sure that you give Lisa the wrong pill. You also turn around before picking up the phone. That way, because you can't turn around when you're doing the slow walk with the phone. Don't move. Right, it kind of puts you in like tank controls. This isn't what you just do this little said, don't slow move. walk. Stand up and step away from the girl. This isn't what it looks like. Stop talking. What have you done? She also mentioned we got this is like the the hardcore the police officer Sybil. She has a uh, you bastard. Uh, I don't know how you describe it. A, a more like no Halloween costume looking. <laughs> Some people say it's like a like, member of member of SWAT. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was saying, like, she has other outfits depending on how you start the game out with your answers and such. Uh, this is, I think this is the one that kind of looks like the, the Law & Order character. Yeah, I've heard that that comparison made a lot. It's either this one or the, like, the one with the short brown hair, the more, like, normal... <laughs> People call it, like, a stripper outfit. It's outfit. not that bad, but it's... And then there's, like, a full-on, yeah, stripper cop outfit. What's wild is that one she wears glasses. She, I think it's the only one. Um, yeah, I think you're right. Doesn't she wear shades at the start of the game with this one? But she just oh, has maybe. them off for the rest. Of Time for another casual playthrough. Right. Also, we're back in action at the Otherworld uh, Mall for Punchy. Yeah, oh, that that was great timing. That's that's what you love to see is like a monster busting through a door because it's like a predetermined animation. Yeah, that's that's yeah, mm -hmm. he's, he's not, you know, it's like that's I'm that's telling the... you right now, though, this is where the run comes back. Uh, the the gumball RNG is coming up, <laughs> coming up shortly. I think once you get to get this like hallway that Punchy's in, like, I think this is where it's pretty safe. The intro can be kind of rough because you're running through a lot of really narrow hallways. That like platform that you have to jump up to where there's a uh, flare, a lot of times there can just be a gang of enemies standing right there for no reason. But so far, inter enemy RNG being pretty uh, forgiving on this segment. Okay, yeah, so Star Run got a monster busting through a door, but it stumbled him back a little bit. Oh, and the and the catch. See, and now this is that situation where, like, okay, it looks like it's not going to be a problem, but when a monster just, like, busts out of the door that you're running towards, it's just like, ah, oh, you can't do anything about it. You hope for the best. Oh. Stumbled, the, stumbled the enemy there. Yeah. <laughs> But it takes them longer to go through doors. Like I mentioned earlier that pretty much any action that you have to do, it takes them longer. So once you perform something like that, you're fine. Oh, and now it's, well, it's gumball time. So we're looking for very particular color colors of gumballs here. 
Yeah, red, and red, yellow, it's entirely light random. purple, not dark purple, and pink. Yeah, there's even some colors that are very, very close to each other just to sort of throw you off. Very just nice. Ridiculous gumball machine. I don't think it exists in real life. <laughs> I've never, yeah. never heard of anything Where like you this. you shake it and it rotates out the color of gumball. Well, have you tried? But, hey, Silent Hill puzzles. They don't need to make that much sense. Yeah, that's true. We're still in the other world. Things can be weird here. Bunch All right, Starwind's up for the gumball RNG. Starts off with yellow already in place. There's that's pink. The pink. That's yeah, not that's that the, like that's the dark fake purple colored one. Come on, where is it? Shake it, shake it, Starwind. Where is the light purple? It's, it might oh, have there. Lord. Yeah. Oh my god. It's I. It's also difficult because if your flashlight's flashing like that, it's really hard to like tell the colors apart sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Especially like there's so many variables. Uh, I know but depending on if I've run this on Wii or Wii U and the TV and capture setup. Yeah, and everything, capture card and like, colors. Yeah, the contrast. Colors are like <laughs> washed out and the, the purples look really close. The red and the pink look really close. The yellow and the green look really close. And I guess um, sorry if you are trying to run this game and happen to be colorblind because I don't yeah. think there's any other really way to do that puzzle other than visually. There's no other like hints or, or, or anything. Also, Punchy just hung up on the second phone call that you can ignore. I also want to mention that the, the big statue that you just passed is Tuki the bird. It's the, the mascot of the mall. That's the colors you're looking for for the gumballs. It's the color of Tuki's beak. Yep, Tuki the Toucan. Yeah, Tuki's everyone's favorite Silent Hill mascot. He's super cute. That's gonna be the next team name next time we do this. Oh, Team Tuki, let's do it. Team Tuki versus Team. Uh, I, I don't know. Huey Horse. <laughs> oh, we'll figure it out. Huey the Horse. Uh, Mira the Dog. Okay, oh, Mi Mira is the referee. The, uh, That's fair. The movie the theater overseer. title will also indicate what ending you're sort of gearing towards. I didn't catch it on Punchies. We'll see some posters on this hallway here. It's hard to make out. Uh, Eternal Love? Huh. Something like that. I was looking for the, like the header, because as soon as when you're approaching the movie theater, there should be like a big banner over the door. I don't know if that's there. Yeah, once you go through the door. The PlayStation version. Oh, that might actually be one of those changed elements. I honestly wasn't even... Because here it is on... Yeah, Together Star Forever. Side. I don't think that together was there forever. on the PS2 one. This, this is a great stream. I'm going to go like rewatch all of this and just like make dumb comparison shots of everything. <laughs> Yeah, it's like one of those things I, I've done at, po at various points over the years, but it, it's always interesting looking at the comparison uh, between the versions for this game, because considering it wasn't even a game they intended on ever porting, they did a pretty good job with it and they kept the cuts minimal, but it's... Yeah, it's, it's, cool it's, it's fun to explore. It's not like a like a slight in any way. Mm-hmm. Also, sweet. so back in uh, Silent Hill 1 references, we're at, I believe this is the Green Lion, isn't it? Yeah, uh, no longer an antique store. It's now a pawn shop. Which, which is uh, depending <laughs> on close. the... <laughs> yeah, and depending you know on the, the choices that you've made up to this point and kind of the things that you've looked at uh, or not looked at, it'll, it'll alter the look of the pawn shop itself, like the things that they're selling, sure. you know that are stacked up on all the shelves. Oh, yeah, the, the, the display out front. Mm -hmm. There's some horny mannequins if you're being horny. Exactly. It, it adjusts to whatever you've been doing as a player up to this point. But both of these players have been focused on speed. And it does sort of uh, 
make the choices and endings and everything a lot more consistent. <laughs> yeah, we meet Dolly again, and now she's like older and a lot different looking, and she says we're married to her. Quite a stray from Silent Hill 1 there. So now we're in the very, uh, this is where it just becomes like a Silent Hill desk. You know, they're like, OK, it's Silent Hill. We're going to have some some abstract geometry maps. There's a lot of stairways that are super long and there's some off in the distance that go to nowhere. It looks very cool. And speaking of abstract ideas that go off into nowhere, we're coming up to a quote unquote puzzle uh, is the best way I can describe it exactly like that quotation marks and question mark included uh, basically you're just going to be in a big open room and you have to run to a spot and it's not very well indicated it's very easy to miss it and then be lost in a giant dark room um and even the best runners, I, I know Punchy has been practicing this uh, quite a bit all week to prepare for the event, and I've seen Punchy get lost. Uh, so it, it can it can happen can, to everybody, yeah, happen to the best guard. of them. Um, this, I, I guess, this, it might be might have been super obvious because this is a like a cell phone based game, but it definitely does like the Wii Remote gimmick of uh, like phone calls will play through the Wii Remote, that kind of thing. Um, and like the that like ambient noise when you're approaching, I think enemies plays through the Wiimote, which is sort sort of how you're supposed to solve this puzzle. Yeah, it gives you a sound cue, this the static that emits from your uh, phone or your Wii remote if you have it set up as such, will start going off the closer you get to it. And Punchy got right to it immediately, so perfect ideal movement there. Completely forgot about the Wii Remote sound gimmick, which <laughs> this this game indulges in, and it's kind of it's it's very fun. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. I mean, it's it's a really like ambitious concept for the game, but uh, it also all this has, that loading know, on the it's, it's pros <laughs> and cons. <laughs> yeah. See the the Wii version does right. that too, where like sometimes it'll load stuff in, but it doesn't have that little spinning indicator. Starwin making his way over to that spot in the big empty room puzzle. There we go. Again, both runners handling it masterfully. Yeah, this is like the equivalent of nowhere where you're running through doors that don't make sense and everything's, you know, the geometry is just kind of all over the place. Yeah, it's essentially just kind of a sequence of multiple running segments back to back. And these are by far some of the more confusing ones. They're made to just sort of infinitely loop back in on themselves unless you take a particular route through them. Uh, there are some giveaways as to like which doors you're supposed to be looking to run through. Um, the first running segment, there's a light that's above each door that you can keep an eye out for that tells you which one to go through. For the second segment, it's uh, ice. You can see that there's ice framed around the door uh, to kind of guide you through these running segments. But yeah. for a casual player, they can be super easy to miss. Yeah, the I think the, the first half, which both players have already passed, but I think that one's a little more obscure. The second one with the, like, the ice starts growing over the doors that you're supposed to go through. I think it's a little bit more obvious. Like there'll be parts, especially towards the end, where you walk into a room and there's like two normal doors, then one that's just like completely encased in a glacier. <laughs> it's like, huh, something, yeah, something's exactly. up there. <laughs> oh, we get Koga's oh, gym. The same <laughs> invisible wall ceiling things that you have to navigate around. It's, it's yep, very simple. Another it's one just... of those puzzles <laughs> making. You turn your flashlight on and you can see the, sh the shadows cast by the invisible walls. Oh, and, yeah, you gotta, uh, you gotta you maneuver your way through there. You gotta, gotta flash your wife, otherwise, she won't spawn nowhere. I don't know. <laughs> I 
Yeah, you can see all this ice on uh, Punchy's end, uh, framing these doors, yeah. kind of marking the way through this route. Yeah, as you, as you get closer, it gets really obvious. I can't believe that guy didn't even do anything. <laughs> Punchy's got, got, got the flare, so it's all good. Hanging onto the flare for uh, a little bit of insurance, but don't even need it. Starwind flashlighting an, an enemy behind specifically to get that run speed. Yeah, very nice. Activating the dude speed. You know, I think Didn't that end up being like a thing in Downpour? Nick Mumbler, someone's uh, messing yes. around with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where uh, enemy proximity and stuff can can proc faster run speed uh, during the running segments for for downpour. Oh man, so it might might be just some of that lingering ideas behind uh, what they did for this. We're at, uh, what is this, the second to last therapy session, maybe? Um, yes. Kaufman, we have the... <laughs> like, being more and more of a jerk as the game goes on. Mm -hmm. It's so fun. I don't know. I, it's, this game's full of gimmicks, but it's, it's so fun for that. It's, oh yeah, it absolutely is. There's there's a lot of great, like, especially going through and doing a casual playthrough. There's so many fun little things, coloring the the house. And, yeah, there's so much room. To... Altering the way that it looks for the cutscene, uh, opening up the map and being able to freely draw on it and make notes <laughs> instead of notes being automatically put yeah. there for you. You can goof off a lot in this game. It's great. Which of those couples are still together? And again, I think with the make the match the couples therapy segment, uh, it, it doesn't really matter what you do with this. I think it ultimately uh, won't affect the length of any any other cutscenes or dialogue from this point out. Yeah, I think especially now, like your your deck will be so stacked in a certain way. Like I've I've read, although I have seen. I have seen some interesting glitches happen during this this part that Punchy's on, where the the car for some of these driving segments, where you're just kind of sitting in the back seat, will be flying at high speeds. <laughs> uh, I don't know if anybody ever figured out what caused that, uh, or or if it was consistent at all. I don't think it was. Totally random. Yeah. You think this is about you, Harry? Yeah. Thank you for confirming that, because I I did not know, but it is something that can occur in this strange game that is shattered memories. God, you are so different now. We we are so different. Stop the car. What? And that I believe is version specific. I don't think it can happen on the Wii version, but it does happen for I think both PS2 and PSP. Sorry, Harry. Get this. Uh, this cutscene where Bitch. Michelle breaks up with her boyfriend or vice versa. Uh, it's like really the only variation is like who is mad at who. But of course, if you're picking the aggressive Look, option, then Michelle's the one being broken up with. And I think I think that's the case. But yeah, it's it's like Kind of the same rule where, like, if you're important characters or being apologetic and such, then it takes longer. <laughs> yep. Shattered Memories is the ultimate proof that uh, being an asshole is always better because it's faster. Yeah, there's, like, some meta commentary there, perhaps. <laughs> Maybe. Very deep, deep-rooted symbolism. So I got Harry Mason running around the sewers just like Silent Hill 1. And I think there's a little bit of a strategy here with this call from Cheryl. I don't know if there's like a specific way to to cancel it or if it just comes down to doing this part quickly enough where she'll essentially keep calling multiple times and it will essentially override your other inputs. Yeah, like while you're trying to climb this ladder and open this next door. Yeah, the phone pickup button is the same as like the action like climb ladder button. So you gotta quickly like hang up on her and yeah, then just hit like the that. ladder before she calls again. Yeah, just like that, she uh, 
the call had to be canceled again before opening up that door up, up at the top. Yeah, it's the same. You gotta you gotta open the door before she calls back, or else you'll accidentally pick up the phone. So yeah, it's the most important phone call in the game. It's your daughter calling you, who you've been chasing the whole time, <laughs> and you can just not pick it up. They really try to make you yeah. pick it up, but you don't have to. Hey, that's part of the game. It's uh, it's your choice, and it and it does have an impact on things. It was uh, at least a, at least storyline wise, not really speedrun wise. It was super quick. Uh, Punchy just ran by, and I think Starrun will run by it soon. Uh, there's a big billboard for King's Beer, which is the jacket that you're wearing. It's a beer jacket. Yeah, it's one of those ones that you get when you send in like all the all the points on every 12 pack of beer. <laughs> yeah, he, he he sent in a bunch of UPC codes for this. Exactly. All this talking. Buy 300 12 packs of our beer and we'll send you a free jacket. What you're thinking? Aren't all psychiatrists supposed Oh yeah, here's the infamous Tiger in Space cutscene. Uh It's not us. All these all these fun Rorschach pictures. You're obsessed with sex. Even when we're not talking about it. You're thinking about it. Come on. Let's have some fun. Like the writing or the way the characters are done are just is just like so skillfully done. Like this this man is just so bizarre and he just flies off the wagon right here. Yeah, it's a really good progression too, where he yeah. almost seems kind of like a normal therapist at the start of the game, and then as you progress through, he's just kind of getting more and more uh, crazy and outlandish with the things that he's asking and the tone behind it. Now you're screwing with me. You're in and uh, again, the choice here for for this does affect your dialogue from Kaufman. Um, putting a majority of the pictures on one side will make him think that you think everything is related to sex or if it's related to death. Uh, instead, it's faster to just lump them all on one side and Kaufman kind of uh, berates you for not doing his, uh, his therapy game the way he wanted you to. And he's like, oh, that was a trick question. All right, great. Let's just move on then. And it's the faster dialogue option. So, of course, you want to just not participate. <laughs> yeah, he does reverse. He'll, sh he'll like pick one of the cards, depending on where you put them, and show the other side to you, and they're all symbols of death. Which he just skips entirely if you pick the right uh, action. Hey, we're back in another Silent Hill 1 location. It's the amusement park. The tiger in space. <laughs> People who are getting enough don't need analysis, apparently. <laughs> this man has some strange insight. Stop judging me. Let me play my Wii game. <laughs> He's still sitting there with his freaking glass in hand. He's been drinking the whole time. He's just such a fun character. He's just a total lunatic. There's some little, there's some fun little side content you can do in the amusement park, but really you just, you know, blast straight through it. Yeah, uh, there is a uh, category for all mementos, in which case you have to play a little slot machine there. Yeah, you just imagine these cute little playing a slot machine in a Konami game. <laughs> Meanwhile, Starwin with the uh, Silent Hill 2 Pachi slot sitting in the background. Just casually, by the way. This whole segment here in the uh, Tunnel of Love is just sort of triggering these little Cheryl ghosts that keep appearing. Um, sometimes they can be a little bit finicky. You just have to get close enough to them and then they move to a next to their next spot. Uh, but all the spots are predetermined. So just running quickly from spot to spot here to make the shadow break through the ice and open up that door. And Punchy's moving on, hopping fences. By the way, every time there's a fence that you see being hopped over or a thing that can be crawled under, um, that's one of those little differences <laughs> with motion controls where on the PlayStation 2 version, I believe you're just pushing a button. I think you're just mashing to, to do it quicker. 
Whereas on the Wii version, you have to waggle the nunchuck quickly to uh, make Harry do those actions faster. Oh, another another small difference between the the versions on the Wii version. This boat has a little name on it. It's called the Orpheus. That isn't on the, oh, the, the PSP. The name is missing. Yeah. I love you, Harry. There's just not enough memory left to put on that Wasn't that it? plain black text that says yeah. the Orpheus. Yeah, you see Orpheus the, the right guy there. who like played the music and went to like the underworld or something and then looked back. Yeah, yeah. Orpheus is descent into the underworld, so it's very on on point. <laughs> It's like poetry, it rhymes. Except I know for the speedrun, we have to look backwards because the runners want to get caught by the dudes immediately. Yeah, in this last part, you're running across the lake, everything's frozen, you're back in the underworld. They've switched Harry's shirt to this generic Hawaiian shirt. That way, they only have to render one cutscene at the end. <laughs> Clever. Uh, but yeah, you're, you're going to get chased down, and the faster you get chased down, the better. Uh, you have yeah, to have this is all where four. you want to... Yeah. You, you actually want to be grabbed by enemies for this segment. Dude speed's been activated. I repeat, dude speed activated. Yeah, well, it can be a little tricky because uh... you don't really want to outrun them, but you, you want to move along enough that it spawns enough that can finish the section. This has been a close race. Yes, this has been a really close race. I guess that's how it works. Is like if we if we had combined the RNG of both runs, it would be like we're you know probably super duper world record. But that's not how it works. <laughs> Something's always got to go wrong. Munchie's looking yeah. for number four. There they are. There it is. As soon as you get the fourth, and then they this just section. Stroke Harry's face gently, as you do. And Starwin and Starwin's got two. Looking for you gotta have. One on one more on each side. We're hopefully running on their way now. Yeah, this is a little bit random how quickly they run up and approach you. The AI got lost apparently. Yeah, I think that's kind of the hard part is that if you get jumped by one early, then you want to chuck them off because you got to run forward enough to spawn more. But it's I don't know it's it's a. It's a difficult, like, okay, here, there. Oh, is that it? it? Is it is it distance-based? Like, the further up you run uh, before they spawn? Or I, yeah, I, wasn't I, sure I think so. Time. I like that he's just and, reading uh, Mango you can and see, <laughs> Yes, uh, you can see the, <laughs> the optimal strat here is to ignore the game and allow Harry to drown. So, reading manga, perfectly acceptable way to completely ignore the drowning person on your screen. Yeah, it's even if you do try to swim to shore, as soon as you approach the shore, you will drown anyways. Everyone's got the great little swimming indicator. Yeah, the Wii version showing you exactly the motion that you're supposed to be doing. But uh, that's, you know, if you want to waste precious seconds like a sucker. Aren't you approaching the lighthouse? It's actually, if you read the, the label on the outside, it says it's a clinic. And punchy is time. GG. This is going nowhere. I'm spelling What out. a shattered so, memories so, run. Your troubled school days? That was really well done. Conflicted about marriage? And Starwin. Of death, the unfounded guilt, abnormal sexuality? Waking up in that cold, cold water. Of denial. Yeah, oh, man. Drug out, actually, <laughs> magically didn't Sybil. drown or anything, just found by Sybil, who's there for some reason. Hey, if you're not suspicious of this game, frozen water. if you're not suspicious of the things going on at this point, I mean, How it's much right at the does end. Does that cutscene skip uh, save, by the way, again? Um, I think it's like all a minute and a half. A minute and a half? I'm spelling it is it yeah, it's like it's a pretty long scene. It's like 50 scene. seconds or so, I think. Okay. How you conflicted uh, well, uh, you got a 1204. I think you would have had like a 119 like year old record. <laughs> that was actually a really solid. Record. That's not like wait, would that have been a world record if you had that? Also, Starwin's time is also up. Uh, Starwin is also on time. Uh, honestly, close race. Definitely, uh, maybe 40 seconds apart max. Not too bad. Not bad at all. 
I got a <laughs> you got like a twenty, um, and Punchy also got one twenty. That's simple, isn't it? My uh, admittedly, one. we forgot to call time. Uh, so okay, was like if, if it wasn't like uh, if it wasn't like one twenty single digits, then I'm okay. I don't need to know. <laughs> What's a girl to do? Gotcha. Deny that. Uh, well, cool. Yeah, GG's punchy. Like uh, I don't know about you, but I had some <laughs> weird RNG. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, mine was pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, like, uh, it was my school, like the very first section, I didn't get a speed boost. No speed yeah, and then boost. like and then like thirty monsters showed up for the second part or something. I remember yeah, like suddenly you were crazy. swarmed. Yeah, it was insane. <laughs> and the only other thing I can think of is when I was doing like I was trying to be a good gentleman and not look at Lisa when she was changing. And I didn't realize the Wii remote was moving in a different direction, so I got the other cutscene that makes oh. you lose like maybe like five seconds, but it's not that bad. Oh, yeah, you shouldn't be a gentleman. A little bit of time lost. Being there. I, was being a a, I was being a gentleman. Being a gentleman. <laughs> Cheers to Punchy for not watching our for, for watching the cutscene. <laughs> I stuck. I stuck to the agreement. It was agreed upon. I, oh. I held up my end of the bargain. I actually put my beanie in front of my head. <laughs> I thought I held the Wii remote in a good position, but we. What are you gonna do? Yeah, uh, let's uh, talk really quick. Uh, Punchy, it looks like it mostly went well. I think you would have been on pace if you didn't, if you, if you skipped yeah, the cutscene. Yeah, if I skipped the cutscene, that probably would have been actually very close to my PB. I, that felt pretty good. Which would have been another world record, considering you broke it like three times this week while preparing. Yeah, I've been getting lots yeah. of PBs lately, but I've been getting, I don't know, good luck. <laughs> it just feels like it's just been lucky. That's this game, though. It's a, it's like, uh, it's like ninety nine percent movement, or I would say it's fifty fifty. Let's say fifty percent movement and fifty percent RNG. Yeah, there's, there's still like time to be saved on my PB as well. And then uh, Starwin, honestly, there are just some parts. I think the enemies are just way too brutal towards you. I think. Yeah, one, um, I, I would agree. Yeah. I would agree. I don't think there was anything wrong. I don't think there was any skill issue anything like that. It just we, you know, we we watch it over here. Uh, the whole <laughs> intro, you never got the dude speed. Uh, other parts, um, when they're slamming out doors, I think they actually hit you. We saw some of Punchies. He got like three like perfect dodges in a row on the doors. Yeah, I, I broke nice. so many ankles running I, through I, doors. There was only, was... I think there was only a couple of times where like a enemy walked to the door and I actually was able to go through. Like it was very close. Yeah. But uh, more often than not, I think I got beat up in a few sections for sure. My gumball RNG was a. Uh, Pretty crappy too. Oh yeah, yours is terrible. Like punches oh, is like decent, like, then an yours extra four or five tries. Rough. Like it taunted me with the black one, and like there's, I, 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 bet, <laughs> yeah. I bet some people were like, "Why is he skipping the purple?" No, it's black. It's really annoying. Yeah, it's not purple. <laughs> it looks kind of purpley. It's not. <laughs> it's not purple. All right. Well, uh, that being said, uh, well, before well, we well, do end up going. Oh, go real, real quick, just real quick, one more thing I want to ask Punchy. Punchy, did you get Twelfth Night? I did not. Okay, neither did I. Both okay. of you I did got you both got racquetball, right? You both got racquetball. Geology, racquetball, 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 racquetball shiners is what I got. got ra I got racquetball geology auto, so we were really close on what? that aspect too. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, the auto. Got auto. Yeah, he got auto, which means he's better. The, I got the good I got one bad, one good. <sighs> So, I, I saw you nearly have a heart attack when it came to the, the double Lisa moment, and I was sitting here. I've never stuff, heard of that until praying. now. When you guys were describing that, I was like, what? You've never, I've never oh, seen yeah, that yeah. Lisa. Likewise. Yeah, I've never it, ever it, heard it, of check that. Check it out on YouTube. It's hilarious. So when you were describing it, I was yeah, like, if that happens live right now, I'm not going to know what to do. I'm gonna <laughs> have Punchy's not allowed to run Silent Hill anymore die. if that would have happened to him. <laughs> not, not, not on X shows. Yeah, uh, no, that'd be it. <laughs> For the results of the racing day, it looks like Team Pyramid Head takes it home with a score of four to three. Uh, continuing along with this, we'll have our first runner, Punchy. Uh, feel free to tell us about yourself and as well where people can find you. Hey, I'm Punchy. I run more or less like pretty much all of the Silent Hill games, except for like two now at this point. That's why I was around for like the whole day. <laughs> I'm one of the people who like helped put together this whole day of streaming because uh, i play a lot of silent hill i know a lot about silent hill so if you want to see more from someone who knows like way too much about all these silly games you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash punchy very entertaining to to listen to and as well uh another great runner and our other runner for shattered memories starwin uh feel free to introduce yourself or you know just say goodbyes what do you do and where can they find you <laughs> For sure. Uh, hey guys, twitch.tv slash Starwin. Uh, haven't been streaming lately, but I do focus on the spooky games, much like Ecdysis and Punchy and a lot, pretty much a lot of the people here. Uh, 
I love the speedrunning community. I've been taking a break, but this event has like lit, lit the fire. I needed this. So expect more from me, more Silent Hill. Ugh. And ho let's let's fingers crossed that we get good games in the future. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. soon. There's yeah. more in Silent Hill's future. Uh, uh, Maybe the next time we do this, we'll get to add games. Ooh, man. Wow. Oh, fun, fun, fun. But thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you for everyone for participating. You guys are all awesome. It right. was fun. As well, we have our commentators for this race, uh, Nub and Techie. Would you like to uh, say a bit, about, a bit about yourself before we head on off? Uh, yeah, again, I'm Nub Zombie. Uh, this has been a wonderful, wonderful day of Silent Hill Community Races. Um, I, I've been such a an honored member of this Silent Hill speedrunning community for uh, quite a few years now, uh, like eight years or so at this point, and everybody is just so welcoming and amazing. It's been awesome seeing all of these people come together and uh, do these runs. And uh, yeah, as for me, I do <coughs> speedrun all the games as well and story playthroughs. You can find me at twitch.tv slash nubzombie. Yeah, and uh, I am UFO Techie. I've been speedrunning these for forever. I still like run them randomly just for the hell of it. The OG. Uh, yeah, I'm still still playing through them a lot, streaming fairly often. Inventor um, of the esteemed Great Knife percent category. <laughs> it's not like no two. <laughs> it's a lot of There's so many, so many meme categories. Dude, it, these, these games have been so fun, and I'm so excited for the future with all the new stuff coming out. It should be fun, and we're, we're that... gonna be a lot. We're gonna be busy. <laughs> we're gonna be busy. We're all gonna be busy. Oh boy! All right. And that being <laughs> said, it has been a long day, and I do want to say thank you all for watching. I'm pressure on me and Punchy again. Uh, yeah, seven Silent Hill games, fourteen runners, and I hope you all enjoyed the showcase of King of the Silent Hill. Uh, this has been an idea that's been talked about for quite a while since pretty much I joined the Silent Hill speedrun community back in like 2017 or something. I think everyone's brought this idea up to some degree, and it's nice that we kind of finally got it to come to fruition. Uh, yeah, for real. This was fun. Let's do this again sometime. Oh, 100% we need to do this more. With with 100% more downpour. We'll, we'll see what happens <laughs> in the future. Seven uh, for now, playthroughs though, of downpour. I have been your host, Ekdysis, uh, joined with my co-host. Hey, hey, I've been Punchy. Our uh, team won, so all of them owe us fifty bucks. And that's how that was. That was the thing the whole time. Dang. That's what it was. At. No, but it was all for honor and for fun. So it was the legal time. is telling me to clarify that was a joke. Exactly. <laughs> but yes, if you Definitely did not, enjoy not King of the Silent Hill, uh, me and Punchy put this event together. Uh, you can check us out on our various degrees. Uh, I'm somewhere down here, twitch.tv slash Dices. I talk about a lot of horror games. Uh, I've been putting event, uh, together more events for GDQS one-off side events, and I run speedruns in the crypt uh, every two weeks for horror games. Uh, as well, Punchy uh, helped me put this together. You can find him somewhere over there. Right, you I'm can pointing because I don't know where the camera or the names are. I'm but. I'm on the right. You can find me at Twitch TV slash Punchy, etc., etc. I've already said that, but I'm saying it again. We get to because we're both host and runners. Yeah. Woo. But yes, I do hope that you all enjoy the event once again. Thank you all for watching, and have a great rest of the day and or night. So take it easy. <laughs>